Mission of Surgical Strikes 2022. Last year it was because of the COVID, it was virtual, but again it's back to physical this time. Welcome you all for this seventh edition of Surgical Strikes, which has become a huge success in the past so many years. Along with me, we have none other than Dr. Sendhil, the head of the Oculoplasty Rajanaikar Hospital, and Dr. Aditya Varman, and uh, uh, son of Arul Mari Varman, he is better than the best. You can see his surgery today. And where is, uh, where are the other surgeons? Uh, Naren Shetty. Naren Shetty is here from Naran Netralia, Bangalore. And he is going to demonstrate to us a VVT lens today. And uh, we have Kumar doctor from Mumbai. Where is Kumar? Kumar doctor, uh, yeah. And Saurabh Lutra from Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh. And uh, he's come from the forest area, actually. <laughs> and he's a guy who is really, you know, I don't know whether you remember two years back, he demonstrated a lovely zepto on a mature cataract. Fantastic, uh, Zorab. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for being with us. Where is Kumar, doctor? Yes, Kumar and uh, where is my wonderful uh, madam, Dr. Sujata, madam? Yeah. <coughs> of course, you have Dr. Sujata. She's going to demonstrate to us some very nice surgeries. Kumar do doctor doesn't require any introduction. Come yeah, come this side, ma. Come this side, yes. Yeah. Kumar doctor, <laughs> give him a big hand for Kumar doctor. Guy, guy is really innovative and he's going to demonstrate some wonderful surgeries for us. Thanks a lot and give a big hand for all the surgeons here. Fantastic. And we have the opening batsman. The opening batsman, none other than the Sachin Tendulkar of Indian ophthalmology and none or you can call her Mithali Raj. That'll be better. Mithali Raj of Indian Ophthalmology and uh, none other than Dr. Haripriya Arvind from Aravindai Hospital, Chennai, who's got the largest number of cataract surgeries under her belt. And, uh, you know, and she's going to demonstrate to us a cataract surgery, FACO, MICS, with the active century, century on mission and a pan-optics lens. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohan Rajan, for that welcome address and the introduction. May I have the pleasure in calling the panelists to the dais, please? Uh, Dr. D.P. Prakash, welcome. Very good morning. Kindly come and honor us by being the panelist of the day. Dr. Ramesh Durey Rajan, please come forward and occupy the dais. And Dr. Atik Sheikh, welcome. Very good morning to you all. We are expecting uh, Professor Dr. Venkatesh to join us soon as a panelist. And I request Dr. Meena Lakshmipati, please come forward and join us for the panelists, please. Last order, Mark. Mike, Mike has been set for him. For her. Okay. Good morning, Mohan. Can good you morning, good morning. It's, it's Dr. DP over here, sir. DP, Dr. Ramesh, Dr. Atik, Dr. Radhakshan, sir. Dr. Meena Lakshmi, Meena Lakshmi Pati. Pati, thank you very much for joining us on the panel here. Welcome you all. After a long time, we are having a physical meeting and this is going to be the new normal now. Over to Haripriya. Mohan, great to see the whole team, Mohan. Great, great. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks, Ramesh. All your blessings, Ramesh. You yes, know Mohan. how we have worked. Uh, years, you know, years, you yeah. know us right from the beginning. And you have been a part of our Rajanaika right from the beginning. You know us. Thank you very much for all your blessings and support. And that's so the so much, brief history of uh, today's cataract done by Dr. Hari Priya Aravind. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. And congratulations again for resuming this. So it's an indication. Yeah, that things, uh, one uh, minute. We'll just check whether you are able to hear Hari Priya. Very much. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Fantastic. Sir. Yeah. Able to see you okay. also very clearly. Okay. The transmission is excellent, sir. Excellent. Thank high you very much. The high definition. Thank and you. the first time uh, in a surgical sec is the LED screen. LED screen. Very good. Okay. Over to Haripriya. All yours. Thank you, sir. Again, congratulations on having all conducted yours. this. So, this is an indication that things are getting back to normal. And uh, having all of you come in early in the morning is uh, really nice. I'm just going to be starting. Can we, can, we, can we switch to the microscope? microscope uh, yeah, yeah. Internal mic, internal yeah. camera, please. Yeah, yeah, we got it, we got it. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Mohan. So, I'll be doing a 2.2 millimeter incision. So, when I'm placing the incision, the couple of things I remember. One, where I place it. I like to go slightly on the right side, because so, I'm a right dominant person. 
Second thing, where the wound would be placed on the limbus. So, choose the limbus exactly. Too posterior will cause conjunctival ballooning. Too anterior will also cause an issue with wound sealing. So, you would place it here and then your heel down and tip up. So, you go into the cornea. So, you go so that you have at least 2 millimeters in the cornea. Change the direction. Right now, the heel is up and then enter. So, this is a almost square 2.2 incision side port. And the side port normally is about 2 clock hours from the main incision. So, I am making a 1 millimeter side port. So, this 2 clock hour uh, difference makes sure this. that you have enough, you know, good uh, access Bleak. for your chop technique. The viscoelastic I am using here is a viscoat which has chondroitin sulphate on the endothelium. And below that I am using uh, HPMC. Uh, I use chondroitin sulphate in hard lenses. Uh, that actually helps, especially in hard lenses, older people with poor endothelial cell count. So, the capsulotomy I'm, I will be doing. Ah, okay. Is the image seen in the hall? Yeah, yeah, very clear, Dr. Haripriya. Okay. Ah, that'll be better. So, the capsulorexis is done with the 26 gauge needle. So, I plan to do about a 5 to 5.5 millimeter capsulorexis. That's a but wonderfully that round rexis, perfectly centered. That was better than femtorexis. <laughs> Hydro, I just burp out some visco, insert the cannula a little further, almost beyond the pupils. You can see the fluid wave there. Nera Parme, can I have on retro elimination mode, please? Yeah, 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 we'll change. Yes, thank you. It's okay. So, yeah, so this is perfect, the sir. wave there. Dr. Mohan Rajan, sir, I request you to welcome Professor Dr. Venkatesh to the panel. Please. Yeah, welcome Dr. Venkatesh. Sorry, um, um, yeah, sorry for the interruption. Um, yeah. Hari Priya, carry on. So, this is, uh, you do multiple hydro. So, always better to do a little extra hydro. You'll never go wrong with that. Feko. Do you do hydro delineation, Dr. Hari Priya? Yeah, it is good to do a delineation as well. In this case, it I did not do it, but especially in younger patients, delineation, you'll know the, what the endonucleus and epinucleus borders are. Can we change the illumination back to routine uh, light when the light normal? Uh, thank you. Uh, what is your preferred chopper, Dr. Hari Priya? So, I, this is a soft cataract, so I am going to be doing... Uh, I will be doing a horizontal chop. So, when I am doing a horizontal chop, it will be a straight... When I'm doing a horizontal chop, I normally use a straight with a blunt tip, but this is not a horizontal chopper. This is a regular vertical chopper. Vertical chopper. Yeah, this is this my is chopper. Yes. Doctor, exactly. So this is uh, vertical chopper. Dr. Mohan Rajan's chopper, which we use all, almost always in all our cases. For horizontal, I use a blunt tip. So I'm going to be doing a little, like an oblique thing here. So a little burrow here. I'm using the Centurion machine. Epinucleus Lerka. Okay. And so the IOP here is at 44. The reason the IOP is lower is because I'm using something called the active centric, which helps to uh, kind of have the sensor in the handpiece. So your IOP is lower than what it used to be. So this is a soft lens. So when I any case to chop, it's always nice to make it small pieces. Once you do it with the soft lenses, it will become a practice with the harder cataracts as well. So, I am gently holding, I am not using full vacuum here, just to support it and then doing a separation. So, I have broken one half into three pieces. So, partial occlusion is fine. Only with hard lenses, one has to go with full occlusion. So, breaking it into small pieces and once that separation is done, so I have six pieces, emulsifying it more in the iris plate, not going too close to the cornea. So, with the... Uh, active sentry which is what uh, helps us get you know uh, maintain the IOP at what it is preset so you, you the, the eye is more at a physiological state so we have set it at 44 so I'm always sub chopping it so once you have a smaller piece it's easier for the piece to be eaten up so you, you keep your a, how many pieces do you usually make ma I normally make six pieces. six pieces it could be eight if it's a hard cataract <laughs> Red low mode living. 
hydro uh, hydro cutting. Do you use a utrata for excess or do you use a needle? I use a needle only if it's an intumescent, then I would also when use a utrata as well. So before the irrigation aspiration, I'm just washing the capsular bag, directing the fluid to the equator. Why do you do this, Dr. Haripriya? I mean, normally we, we so don't do this. So once if you put visco after phaco between I and A, you'll feel the cortex sticks to the bag. It sticks a little, it's more difficult, I. But if I do a hydro before uh, the cortex wash, it's like no, IA probe. Now, the problem is when you do a hydro delineation, Haripriya, yes. because you'll have a epinucleus chunk there and it's so difficult sometimes to remove the epinucleus. So I don't do hydro delineation on a regular basis unless it's a posterior polar cataract or something like True, that. Sir. I think there is definitely useful. Uh, irrigation aspiration mode. IA mode, ma'am. Into portative. So, you find that once it is, the, you do a hydro before IA, it becomes loose. So, That's your aspiration becomes that much uh, easier. So, then you go on a circular fashion. Because Excellent. the bag is open in the adjacent area. And I use a straight tip normally, I use coaxial for irrigation aspiration. So, you see how easy that was. Yes. Because, you know, you kind of wash it off saline. And where did you do the hydro? I mean, was it uh, another hydro dissection or was it uh, just so washing you, the you bag? you insert it just below the capsule and you direct the fluid. It's only fluid, so it's safe on the capsule. Okay. And that will kind of, it's a repeat hydro kind of thing and that makes a cortex wash that much easier. So that one okay. thing if you do, you'll find a cortex wash is easier. Wonderful I'm tip. repeating it once more here because of all these fibers we see on the PC. So all this can be washed without having to do cap back more, just wash the bag. Visco, the lens. Do you polish the anterior capsule? Uh, illness, uh, I don't yeah. polish. I think we have studies which people who speak for and against, some yeah. say that the polish can also cause further contraction, so I don't polish. Mm. Uh, only clear the PC and maybe equate just the fluid jet more towards the periphery. Okay. Dr. Mohan, do you polish and do you uh, No, I polish, yeah. So then... Um, the I polish my shoes as well as the capsule as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, the lens here I'm going to be implanting is a panoptics lens. So, panoptics as we know is a trifocal IOL. This is a plunger system, 2.2, wound assisted. It goes in smoothly into the bag. Second instrument is used to direct the lens in the bag. Beautiful, bag. beautiful. Give a big hand. So this uh, trifocal, uh, I think, is a little, uh, you know, more forgiving compared to the earlier multifocal versions. So we, when we place this lens, so. we plan for a target of minus 0.2. We use the Barrett's formula, and uh, of course, we look for pre-op any other dry eye or any macular issues. If nothing else, then we would go ahead and consider this lens. So always lift the IOL as well, and aspirate the viscoelastic from behind the IOL. And I also like to uh, place the lens, that's the haptics are uh, nasal and temporal at 0, 180. So this can also reduce your negative dysphotopsia, which is uh, not uncommon uh, with IOLs. So Fantastic, Dr. Haripriya. Thank you. Lovely, lovely surgery. Excellent. Antibiotic. Brilliant. Dr. Mohan, the microscope is also terrific. What? Superb transmission here. We are able this is a Lumiras. Um, uh, 800. Antibiotic. Sorry, 700. Zeiss. Uh, Dr. Haripriya, this is Meena here. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Meena. <laughs> so, would you give intracameral moxifloxin? Are you. Can't, you're not able to hear. You're not able do to you hear? give no, intracameral antibiotic? <laughs> antibiotic. Yes, I yeah. did give. So, we do give intracameral moxifloxacin. So, Nalla Paniya Chingama. That is actually useful, you know, we found that uh, with a couple of uh, papers which we did, the, the post-operative endophthalmite is reduced by about three and a half times when we gave intracameral uh, moxifloxacin. So we give 0.1 ml, 500 microgram of the drug, end of the surgery, and this helps to reduce the endophthalmitis, more so in eyes which are prone for complications or, or those which have a PC PCR, yeah. So those eyes, especially at higher risk, seven to eight times higher risk, and there, this is yes. more useful. Dr. Mohan, superb. First Wha batsman. I think wonderful surgery. Let's give a big round of applause to Dr. Hari Priya for you, opening this uh, surgical strike, seventh edition. And, uh, and because uh, Meena, uh, welcome Meena. I just want, since you asked that question, I know in Shankar Netralia, they're not giving intracameral antibiotic. 
they are not giving post operative uh, also if i remember right am i right meena uh, not uh, post op uh, some of us do give post operative uh, antibiotics uh, can it be a little louder meena i'm not able to hear if it's uh, clear corneal incisions uh, most of us give uh, topical antibiotics for a week uh, but not intracameral as of now not intracameral mostly post op okay intracameral you are not giving how many of you in the panel are not giving intracameral Atik, you are not giving. Atik is not giving. Doctor. Vengtesh. Good morning, doctor. This is Doctor Vengtesh here. I want to ask Doctor Hari Priya a question. Yes, please. Uh, so you said that you do both the direct uh, vertical chop and the horizontal chop also, right? Uh, so yes. is there any uh, indication, like based on hardness of? Uh, cataract that you would choose either of the technique yeah so horizontal i do for the soft cataracts it works very well and uh, all the hard ones i do a vertical those ones in between the firm ones either of the techniques work well works well but i prefer a, a horizontal for all soft lenses thank you thank you thank you sir thank you very hari priya please wait here yes, if sir, you can wait in the uh, uh, in the theater and give your comments for the next surgery also and uh, the next surgeon is a super surgeon can anybody make a guess who it is susan susan is going to come later kumar kumar is also going to come a little later that is aditreya sir i Absolutely. saw behind his neck ah <laughs> aditreya varman and we got fed up of arul so i told arul okay you send aditreya this time so <laughs> So that is the reason why we are having Aditya here today, and he is going to demonstrate to us a cataract, FACO, MICS on a signature probe with a high ans lens from J and J. So you saw that pan optics lens is one of the best lenses. I've used this pan optics. I'm using it regularly, and you know how it works. It's really fantastic. Hari Priya, can you be? Where is she? This pan optics. Gives a, a excellent uh, what you call the contrast sensitivity, good vision for distance, intermediate, and reading as well. <coughs> Very minimal glare, halosphotic phenomenon. Mon, you are changing the batting order. Yeah, batting order we are changing because it is a pinch hitter we have got now. <laughs> this is a T20 game, you know. Yes, man. Come on. Torch, please. Come here. High ends. High. High ends. Lens, no. Okay. Come. Chipper, no, ma. Doctor Aditreya, good morning. Morning, sir. Mic, mic is on, no? This is Doctor Prakash. Okay. Dilation, sir. Okay. Ma, is she ready? Is Susan ready? Next case. Otherwise, you can have Narain here. Narain should be here. Dr. Aditreya, can you just show us what kind of drape you are using? Yeah. Because there is something new which we have not seen. What you Can you just explain that, Aditreya? Yeah, yeah. So, we just use this elastic drape to keep the eyelids away. And after which, we put in the sterile sheet. What is the advantage of this? Because it, it tapes the lids, is yes, it? Yes, it tapes the lids and keeps the eyelashes yeah. away. Oh, so, the eyelashes okay. are totally out of the surgical field of view. Fantastic. Nice idea. Next is Susan. Okay, glued eye wall. Next, Susan. Then we have, first we have uh, Aditreya. Signature Pro Hyans Lens. 
It's a grade two to three cataract. Topical is okay? Yes, sir. Okay. He's using a Leica microscope here. Table height was right. Ah, you're able to see that on the TV as well. Money, sir, light a par guy. 60 IPD. Sixty, sir. Sixty-four, huh? Sixty, sixty. Sixty, yeah. Yeah. Sixty, also. Ah, you know, can you come? Okay. Ah, that's fine. Sixty. Okay. <laughs> Table lighting on this morning. Okay, ma. Fake. Ah, yes, sir. Fake of four, ma. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay, Monaj, good morning. Sir, okay, sir? Yes. Okay, Aditriya, yes, are you ready? Yes, sir. Is Marker. it okay? Yes. You want some intracameral uh, dilatation drops? Uh, yeah. Phenocane, are you ready? Yes. we have T plus also. Okay, good. So, I'm starting with the clear corneal temporal incision. We use this uh, customized marker. So, we place it here. You can see that it makes two marks. One on the limbus and one about 1.5 mm into the clear cornea. I like using a ring holder to fixate the eye. Hmm? Ah. Yeah, so then. Okay, focus now better? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Is this patient. Are you able to see? Um, yeah, yeah, it is very clear, very sharp. Is it on a block or is it a top? No, no, topical, no, topical. Wow. Make a groove. So he's making a groove there and then entering. Yeah. Enter, enter. Now the second mark, I tip down, enter the clear cornea. Oh, beautiful, very nice. One person could name. Hold my. Is it Purchukuma? So this is one person looking going into the eye now. Pino can kudunga. Yes. Pino can. Yeah. He is using a phenocane, phenocane plus, which is made by Entod, no? Yes, sir. Entod, which is a combination of tropicamide, phenylephrine, and propracane. Yes. Which works very well to dilate because the pupil is not dilated fully. Now, using this HPMC to fill up the anterior chamber. So, that's a reasonable dilation now. You can proceed with the case. Yeah, very good. Side side yeah. You want the retro? No, sir. This is good enough. No. Go excel. Yes, okay. Good, okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Mike I like using the MVR good. blades to make my side port incisions. Just make it at the area where it's most ergonomically comfortable to you. There's no real clock hour um, scheme I go by. Wherever I feel comfortable putting it, wherever my hand goes naturally, I just go ahead and do it. That's it. This right side port you are doing only for the rexis, right? Eh? Yes, sir. Okay. Not for the bimanual yeah. or anything. So I'm using a sister term here. I like to fixate the eye. With the into the in the side port itself. So go ahead and make your flap here. You see that when you make the flap stay Put flat. Put the retro, you'll feel better. Want the retro? No, sir. I'm good. Sir. Okay, fine. Excellent. It gives you the best control when you have the flap as flat as possible during the creation of the rexus. <coughs> what is the size of the rexus? About 5 mm, 4.5 mm is what I would. Because it looks a little big for me. Okay, sir. <laughs> so I like to use the folded over flap to act as a template for the rexus. Yeah. So that really helps you. That's it. Hydro. Very nice, very nice. So, just taking out the flap now. 
Narin, get ready. Get under the rectus no, no, margin. No, no, the glute. Lift up and do your high row. Nice wave there. Is it clear? Is it clear? DP? Ramesh? Yeah, yeah, it's very clear, boss. Okay, boss. Just putting some visco to very, very clear. protect the corneal endothelial cells. We have a split view here. We can see you also on the surgery also. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Okay? Okay, no? Yeah. Eat him, Good. So, what are the settings you are using, uh, Adit? Can you just tell? So, I usually go with a vertical chop technique. So, I use a high flow, high vacuum setting. Yeah. So, my flow rate is uh, usually around uh, 40. Vacuum at 450 to 500. And, and my ultrasound energy is around 50. So, I start by clearing out the cortex. So, I have a clean view of the nuclear bed. So, I remove the uh, superficial the cortex, yes, sir. cortex yeah. yeah. Just shave it off. Okay. Yeah. Then I start by making a small punch here in the sub area. So, it gives me access into the endonuclear space. So, once that's done, I pre-place the chopper here. So, bury vertically downwards. Hold with high vacuum. Bring the chopper towards the phaco probe, burst of phaco, burst of phaco, split. Cornea, cornea, put. Split apart. Very nice, very With nice. A clean chop right down the center. So again, rotate. Rotate, rotate. What is this? This is, this is the harmonic tip you are using? Yes, sir. It's called the EDM tip. Yes. So hold again. Get it down, separate. So, what he's using is a tip which has been uh, developed by Arul, which is called the harmonic tip. Please. Visco. Which has got a yeah. broader base and is a little square shaped as well. So, once I've got a small wedge here, I'd like to take that out first. It holds better, no? Definitely? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sub chop as much as possible. Hold it, take it out. Can you just center it a little? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. And just fake off, fake off. That's fine. Yeah. No, Dr. Mohan. So, you use the same setting throughout? Yes, sir. Okay, okay good. Sometimes I like to eat the piece on the bottom because I feel it goes faster that way. Oh, yeah, it's quite shape. This is not a pulse mode, no? You are no, using sir. a continuous mode? Yes, sir. Why are you not using pulse? I feel I have better control over the foot pedal when I use on continuous. Okay. So, I, I can uh, modulate my fake energy as and, as and when I feel like it. So, chops are done in situ in the bag. Do as many as possible to save take of energy. What is what is selva just called? Anoch. Mohan, good morning. Radhakrishnan here. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, I think this is the first life surgery for him. Uh, yes, sir, it is, sir. First uh, life surgery, yes, congrats, sir. Congrats, congrats, congratulations. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, here the last piece, no? We can chop it again. This or is the first and the best, sir. Aditya, you are fantastic, man. You Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very, very nicely, like a pro. Very, very nice. Super. Thank you, sir. When you take the last piece, Adit, you will yes, reduce sir. the parameters a little? Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, depending upon how the capsular bag will fluctuate. Yeah. I see a little fluctuation here, so I might just do that. So, we'll see how it goes. For the benefit of the audience, can you just tell us what machine Dr. Adit Ray was using? I'm using the Signature using? Pro. Signature here, Pro. Right, sir. Thank you. You and see the advantage here of this machine where the chamber uh, stability is absolutely phenomenal. I'm still using the same uh, high vacuum, high flow setting throughout the case. See, the advantage of Signature Pro is it's got a dual pump. You can switch over from peristaltic to venturi and venturi to peristaltic at whichever stage. Just by the pressing the switch there, 
it's got a dual yeah. pump and advantage another thing you saw the stability aye, aye, aye. yes despite the fact that is, i think you are using about 400 500 mm yes, vacuum sir. no yes sir i did yes and no point of the surgery did i uh, reduce the parameters yeah. including the last piece so this is a hybrid tip that we use during our uh, uh, ina sorry i max ma wait ma i i yes uh, adit can you just take some time and go slow and tell us uh, all the new things that you are doing because you are using a different kind of speculum blue chopper blue chopper your chopper looks different Okay, so so, so the speculum is a flan yeah. speculum. It's developed by Asico. I, I, we like using this because it really does keep your eyelashes out of the way throughout the surgery, even if the draping is suboptimal. And um, the other thing it, uh, I did different was I used a corneal incision marker to mark my uh, uh, entry at the limbus and the entry into the anterior chamber. That is also something it different. Correct. Uh, something center, center slightly that side. Yes, sir. The fake I used the harmonics handpiece, like as I mentioned, is developed by Asico. It's a pentagon shaped uh, hand piece. So there's a, if you notice the hand piece it had two angulations, one at 45 degrees and one at 15 degrees. So that that affords you both the uh, foldability and as well as um the uh, the cutting efficiency as well. something more of the chopper that you used uh, adit yeah chopper is um, it's a custom made chopper sir it's about 1.4 mm um, um, uh, deep inside uh, it has a sharper cutting edge and also a separate edge uh, which is flat for separating the piece so the chops come in very easily it is easy to both cut as well as separate i probably showed you again at the end of the surgery ready uh, uh, yeah next day. thanks adit Yes, Adil, is it impossible to have a PCR with this particular tip? Uh, you could, sir, but it's a little more forgiving when you hold the capsule. That's about all. Silva, 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 not Silva. Our Silva. R C Silva. On two minutes, you have to give me time. Ma, I have to give the memento. What is the advantage of this hybrid uh, tip for IAM? Uh, this is a little more forgiving if you hold the capsule. Ah. Huh. So. I was wondering whether if you have a curved tip there, be easier to yes, remove the subincisional cortex. Definitely will help. Yes. You want to just try the retro elimination will be better. Sure, sir. Be very good on Leica. The, the pupil has come down. It, 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 it's taking. No, no. Pupil was uh, right in the beginning. It was a uh, little small only. Yeah. Even, even now it is small, Mohan. And, huh? and uh, even now, even now the pupil is quite small. Yeah. yeah. That's why you use the phenocaine. Yes. You saw that yeah. in the beginning. Always safer to go very slow at at, at this particular point. Yes. Oh, beautiful! Very nice. Fantastic. Give a big hand for well Aditya. Done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well Thank done. you, sir. Super. Thank you. He's going to put a high hands lens, and he's going to talk about the high hands lens as well. So I think the high, high hands really doesn't need any more introduction. Most of us already very familiar with it. It's uh, it takes a unique uh, classification known as the enhanced monofocals. It's well, called the unifocal plus lens. Yes. It gives you it gives the patient an intermediate vision gain as well and we in our practice we've noticed why do you why do you why are you enlarging the incision? I we I should usually do that sir. Do why? It. Get a smoother entry of the eyeball so okay. it doesn't really strip the DM as it enters the Right, okay. And it strips the Yes. Centering a little, that side. Yes. Sir. Yeah, better now. Uh, almost uh, 100% we have switched over to the high-ans lens, Noramesh. 
Fine Mohan, super uh, Mohan. Yeah, the unifocal uh, platform is completely converted now into Hyans. So the unifocal lenses, what I'm, we are using is Hyans or uh, the Clarion lenses of uh, Alcon or the Hoya Nanex lens. And, and but the Hyans uh, is definitely the there's an the advantage. So we actually noticed that uh, when we use the Hyans lens and do a bit of micro monovision, some patients actually gain 6.6 six and 6. So it really Are you aiming for a 0.5 or, yes, or, or, or slightly more than that for the second eye? Uh, I, I didn't get you, sir. What is what question for you asked me? Uh, for the second day, you are aiming for a 0.5 or 0.75? 0.5, 0.75. Okay. Do you po titrate it based on the first side post-op refraction? Yes, sir. We do. Yes. So, uh, how many days post-op do you make a decision for the second day? We usually do it about uh, two days uh, post-op, sir. R Dr. Mohan, uh, Mina yes. here. I have a question for all the surgeons. I'm, I'm not sure I should be asking now. If you were to be operating on a surgeon, yeah. a plastic surgeon or somebody who's going to be using microscopes, what would you advise and uh, what is your current choice of uh, lenses? Uh, my, my choice will be high ans lens for these people. I've operated many surgeons. They're very happy with the high ans lens. And uh, even uh, the uh, VVT is also very good. Uh, we need a long-term follow-up for VVT, but th that is also very nice. But high ans uh, will be my choice <coughs> for these patients. I would say any EDOF lens would be a EDOF, good choice. EDOF also is good. Uh, uh, the, the only problem is the halos, if they are not going to be driving at nights and all that, the ring lenses chopper are the coming. problem. Chopper, chopper Otherwise, coming. it's good. But uh, I've operated many gynecologists and they are all happy with Synergy or even Pan Optics for that chopper, matter. Chopper. And uh, they are all very happy. Uh, Doctor, uh, and they are able to differentiate between ureter and uterus now. <laughs> Doctor, uh, Ramesh, it's very important. I think Dr. Ramesh asked me a question about the chopper, so I'm just showing this to him now. So it's about uh, 1.5 mm long and you see the tip of it is quite sharp so you can penetrate through even hard cataracts. And the, se and the separating edge is flat. So if you look at this edge, this really helps you to separate the pieces after the chopper is done. Kumar, what's your choice? Please come here, Kumar. For surgeons, you have been operating on a lot of surgeons. So as rightly mentioned by you, I think Mohan Ihans is the first choice because of no glare and no halos. Uh, I use Synergy too. Uh, it gives excellent near vision. Ihans will need an add of 1.25, 1.5. But the beauty is there is no loss of contrast. Uh, there is no loss of glare. There is no glare. There is no halos. Uh, these are the big advantages of that. Yeah. So you are right. I mean, uh, operating surgeons. Another question was watch repairers and diamond merchants. Uh -huh. The lens preferred would be this because sometimes when they have to examine the diamond under a microscope, yeah. it is very tricky if you put a multifocal because they complain of a different glare. I don't know what's your experience in the panel here, yeah. but I prefer to use such lenses. Absolutely. I uh, uh, definitely. Uh, in fact, uh, <coughs> um, uh, Sujata has got a lot of um, this thing with the diamond merchants because she like, buys a lot of <laughs> diamonds. I've got a diamond knife as well as diamond wife also. <laughs> and uh, over to Aditya, give him a very big hand for, for that. Congrats, uh, Adit, on thank your you. first uh, right you. surgery. Yes. Thank you, thank uh, you. Well, uh, your surgical hand, voice, everything was just like uh, Big Boss. <laughs> big Hope Boss. to see many more live surgeries. Big Boss too. <laughs> big Boss too, yes. Big Boss too. Yes, yesterday, give a big hand. that soon he's going to start farming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All we got the best, Adit. Thank that you, was you. wonderful. Wonderful. Thank we thank go on to the glue dye oil. But the patching you can do later, pa. I'm shooting. Yeah, one minute, ma. Please come, Haripriya and uh, Adit. Please come here. Yes. Ma, Sujata, please come. One minute. Bang, bang. Shut I think the, uh, these were the. Uh, come here, ma, Adit. Bang, Adit. Please come. I think we should give a big round of applause to Dr. Haripriya and Dr. Adit. Haripriya demonstrated a beautiful um, um, FACO Centurion active sentry with a panoptics lens. I request Sujata to do the honors for Haripriya. Please come over, Haripriya. This is a this is a color atlas of uh, retina and optic nerve.
from Raja Naikar and it will be a great treasure for you. My pleasure and honor to do the honors for Aditya. Fantastic surgery, Aditya. My first life surgery long time back in 1995. My hands were trembling. Yeah. Super. All the best. All the best. You go on to the blue railway. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Hello? Yeah, is ready? Yes, Dr. Sujata. Okay, okay, right. So, welcome to the world of secondary eye oils. And we have none other than Dr. Susan Jacob, who is going to demonstrate a glued eye oil in SFT. So, this patient had uh, an SICS, had a PCR, and uh, well managed. And what happened was um, uh, we had to left, uh, leave her a fake kick. So, she had a plus 10 with um, a 6 by 6 correction. And now Susan is all ready. She has made the flaps. So, over to Susan. Hello. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thanks a lot to Rajan Aikar, Sujata Mohan, ma'am, and Mohan Rajan, sir, and everybody else here for inviting me here. This patient, as we know, uh, Sujata, ma'am, just gave the uh, introduction. So, it's an, it was converted to an SICS channel. And, uh, and basically, the first primary management was finished that way. Now we are going to demonstrate a glued intraocular lens. So there's also an inferior peripheral iridectomy done there. Uh, so we'll see if we can just suture that closed also at the same time. So you can see this is the lens the, that's already been loaded here. It's a sensor lens, uh, and you can see this is a lucky seven sign where the leading haptic, you know, it's just out outside, and that makes it easy for your left hand to go and grab it. Okay. So I've already created the tunnels. Uh, the first thing you do, of course, is measure the white to white. If that's fine, 11 millimeters or 11.5 millimeters, then you can go horizontal. And if you take small, um, narrow uh, flaps, you can even take 12 as horizontal uh, glue diver. Of course, in this case, since there's a scleral tunnel, you wouldn't want to do a vertical uh, glue diver. So I've made the tunnels. Uh, I've made the, I mean, the scleral flaps, the sclerotomies, the side port, main port. I've put in the infusion, and now we're just going to go ahead and do this. So here's my. Uh, uh, IOL that's been inserted. I'm going to go in here. Now, one important tip is when you go in here and you've got the anterior chamber maintainer going, go vertical. Uh, if you go horizontal with your instruments, you may end up, uh, you know, touching the uh, iris or hitting the iris and that can result in problems. So, uh, just increase the, this thing because we've got a slightly hypotonic eye here. Okay. So, now we've got the first haptic in and if you look carefully, what I'm going to do is go and grab the leading haptic. Inject, please. And I've got, of course, my very trusted and very capable assistant here, Shashi Rekha's sister. I'm sure she's a big star now in ophthalmic circuits because she's the one who's always assisting us in all the surgeries. So here's the first haptic out. And now we turn this haptic so that it lies in the right orientation. Leave the first haptic. And we're going to go in and just internalize the second haptic. So for this, I'll go in here. Grab the second haptic, sorry, this side was a little tight. Yeah. Grab the second haptic there. And Shashi is lifting up my flap for me. Again, remember to go vertical. Turn it once you're inside the eye. If you can show the red reflex, it will be great. If not, yeah. If not, so this is a handshake technique where you're going to go hand on hand and grab this haptic also at the tip. Once I've grabbed this haptic, turn the light again. Once I've grabbed this haptic and I'm happy, I come back, hold this haptic so that it doesn't slide back in again. And that way I've got both the haptics. Oops, both the haptics out. Okay, just give me a non tooth process. Susan, this was the handshake technique, okay, right? So, uh, what you demonstrated? Yeah, unfortunately, that haptic has gone in. Okay. So I'll just go back in and retrieve it from the vitreous. Yes, that was the handshake technique. So I'd like to have a slightly brighter red reflex if possible. Change it, change it, change it and increase the light. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to just go down and focus, focus on this haptic within the vitreous cavity. Uh, put some saline or something on the cornea, little haze. Wash it properly. Yeah, that's making it better. So you can see that I'm kind of just trying to do this. Give the
In fact, what I'll do is I'll try to grab it at the very end, very tip. Illumination. illumination is a little less, that's what. If you can increase the illumination, it will be good. Okay, then. Maximum is later. Okay, doesn't matter. Put saline on the corner. So, no, no, it's not a matter of folding. If this is something that happens, we can generally. Okay, just give me a. That's okay, I'm just doing that, ma'am. It's fine. So, I've got that there. And I'm just going to transfer it from hand to hand. Again, just put saline on the cornea. And here, I'm going to hold hold it at the tip again. So the important thing is to hold at the tip, right? Give me non tooth forceps. And we'll just focus upwards a bit, change the light again. Yeah, and now we've got both of them out. Fantastic, Susan, fantastic. Thank you, thank you so much. I've got both of them out. Wonderful. So the epithelium is a little gone probably, that's why there's a little difficulty in visibility also. But anyway, now that we've done this, I'm going to just go ahead and tuck the haptics inside. Thank you. And before that, we'll just suture the, sclera the main port. So that we don't have any iris prolapse from there and we have a well-formed globe. Is there any way to prevent this haptic from going inside like how it happened? Is there any way you... Uh, you can have your assistant to hold it but sometimes when you leave both of them and there is a little bit more pressure from the anterior chamber maintain the fluid pressure it can go down. It's slightly larger eye also. It's, yeah, a slightly larger eye also. Uh, uh, Susan, Meena here. Tell you, can you tell me what is the AC maintainer uh, height or uh, what is it? Uh, it's at 30 right now. That's the normal standard pressure that's uh, kept for vitrectomy. So that's what we're doing. Wait. Is this process. a vit, uh, fully vitrectomized eye? Yeah, yeah, this has been vitrectomized already. No, actually, so uh, just, just an anterior this. vitrectomy has been done, Meena. <coughs> and uh, because patient had a PCR, uh, so can you hear me? You are not audible, uh, Dr. Sujata. Okay, sir, so just remove some of the epithelium so that I can see a little clearer. Now, we'll just go ahead and these are uh, tunnels which I've already created. If you see, I've got a mark there. And what we'll do is just uh, give me the needle once more <coughs> and two forceps just to show you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Which needle you are using? Uh, uh, this is a 26 gauge needle, sir. <coughs> so we'll just go in there. And you go with the bevel up, right? Bevel up, yes. And limbus Only parallel. Indi indirect elimination. Huh? Saline on the corner. Only indirect. Huh? And indirect that's one and haptic that's been tucked in. You hello, can hello. see that. Kick it up, kick it up. We'll just do the same to the other and haptic. Again, the same thing, okay. we've actually already created the tunnels, but just to show you, I'm going to just <coughs> do that again. And we'll just go ahead and tuck this haptic also in. So, we've got both the haptics tucked in. You can adjust the centration, so you can see it's slightly decentered to this side. So, release this a bit and center <coughs> it to this side, which is one of the big advantages of... Uh, of the glue dial technique that you can actually adjust centration according to your, you know, wish. Now we'll go ahead and close this. Uh, this uh, uh, we have to do the SFT, right? Yes, sir. Actually, <coughs> what so we'll go ahead and uh, close. We always do. I think Amar has told us several times. You have to measure the uh, vertical versus a horizontal diameter. The horizontal diameter greater than 12. Uh, don't do a horizontal fixation. Dr. Sujata, you are not audible. So could you change your mic or something? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Yeah. Fantastic, Dr. Susan. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, should I go ahead and do the SFT also? Uh, she has one more yes, step. Please. She's going to do the uh, SFT. Sure. So, I what Dr. Dr. Amar has told us is that uh, you know, if you have a horizontal oh, diameter rolling. versus yeah. a vertical okay. diameter greater than 12, you do a vertical fixation. So, that is very important. In this patient, Parking we had no other choice because the patient had an SICS uh, section. Tip. So, we had to do a horizontal fixation and that was probably the reason why the haptic slipped inside. If she had more space for the optic outside, optic and the haptic, then she wouldn't, it wouldn't have slipped inside. So, normally, yeah, I but ask uh, the assistant to hold. The only problem is when the assistant holds yeah. the whole haptic uh, crinkles a lot. So, you have to be very gentle while holding. So, the next step she's going to do is an SFT, that is single pass fourth row pupiloplasty. Again, one of Amar's inventions. 
just put some. <coughs> so you can see uh, also I did uh, horizontal in this case also because the SICS tunnel is on top, so I couldn't take the flaps there. Oh, sorry. So here you can see me doing the first pass and then I'm going to take this needle. It's important to make sure that your needle is not snagging on this, uh, on the entry. That's really important. Otherwise, you'll end up uh, having a, 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 you know, a, a knot that's tied to the bone. What so gauge needle you're using, so sir, is it 30 gauge? This is 30 gauge, yes sir. Right. This is 30 gauge and now we've got that out. Uh, the ideal needle of course is the curved needle that makes it even easier. But we don't get that in India, or at least I don't think we have, so we use the straight needle. So we've got this out and Shashi is looking at the other end to make sure I don't pull it too far. And the suture that you're using, what is it? Uh, this is a 9-0 proline, sir. 10-0 proline is thinner, it comes with a straight needle on one end and a curved needle on the other end. The 9-0 has two straight needles on either end. So you can see I've gone ahead and pulled that knot out. And I'm just going to zoom up a little. Zoom, zoom up, up is it? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You can see better. Okay, and <laughs> sorry, that's too much uh, light though. I just change for Zoom, zoom. Yes. Light normal. Is this better now? The zoom is seen. Yeah, yeah. Now it's much better. We can see. Uh, okay, so clearly. I'm cutting this part of the suture, <laughs> handing it back to Shashi, and I'm going to just take this other end and make it go four times around this loop. So one, two, three and four. Now that we have done that, I hope you can see this part again now. We are going to pull this loop in by pulling both the ends and that will close off this uh, iridectomy. Very beautiful, beautiful demonstration. Yeah. Excellent. So I think that's that's uh, basically uh, it. If you want, I can take one more pass, but I think in no, the interest sir. of time, yeah, we'll go on to the next surgery. And basically, this is just now, you know, closing the flaps. Otherwise, the surgery is over. So any questions for Susan? Very well done, surgery. Fantastic, Susan. Doing this in a live surgery is amazing. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot. Using endoilluminator, yeah, this endoilluminator is a trick that we do. We've actually taken it from our PDEX surgeries where we do the endoilluminator assisted yeah. PDEX, but this helps beautifully in seeing these thin sutures within the anterior chamber. <coughs> awesome demonstration, Susan. Yeah. Thank yeah, you yeah, so much. Yeah, so that's uh, basically it. So thank you so much. Uh, I just want a one question. For the opportunity. Do you use only ACM or do you use a pass planner also? No, we use pass planner also, sir. Pass yeah. planner is very much used. Actually, I was uh, we were thinking about I was thinking of showing a pass planner in June today, but Shashi said that since this is an anterior segment demonstration, absolutely. let's use a trocar anterior better, better. Yes, yes, or absolutely. ACM. Pass so planner, many people uh, anti segment surgeons don't want to do. Don't it. want to. So but yeah. the only important thing in pass planner for anti segment surgeons is be accurate about its placement and make sure you see the tip before you turn the infusion on. That's uh, really very crucial. important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One, one last question to you, Susan. Yes, sir. Uh, so, what are lenses can you use for uh, for, the, uh, for for this particular uh, type so of fixation? So, you can use the uh, sir. You can use Down. the uh, sensor, which is the one I just used. Or uh, okay. also, then you can, can use the Acris of uh, there's a three piece, yeah, MA sixty three piece IUL, which can be used, and the Zeiss CT Lucia, uh, which is also three piece one. Yeah. It's, it's is not it available, available here. here. No, I don't think so. But in other uh, in US, they are using. What about the, the Bosch and Lom soft port? The Bosch and Lom, the blue shield, the violet shield, right? No, violet the violet shield, yes. shield that is also another one that you can yes, use. But yes. we have not been uh, using uh, it for long. Foldable? Appa Sami has a foldable. Foldable are you? No, no, not foldable. It's uh, non foldable rigid. are there. So among the ridges you have the upper summit and the overlap. So if you have got a large SICS tunnel and you're not planning to close it, then you could have done that also. Very nice, Susan. Give her a big hand for that. Thank, thank you, Susan. thank you so much. We'll go on to the next surgery. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Close up. Huh? Uh, close, sir. Close eyes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fine. So for the glue application, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in air here first. Then I'll, yeah, she, she's already closed the anterior chamber maintainer. Yes, and we also have to do a little bit of vitrectomy under, over the ports. So, I'm going to do a little Can bit Can we of uh, go to the microscope view, please? Microscope, please. A little bit of vitrectomy here and here. And now we'll apply glue after dry, drying it. Oh, sorry. <coughs> yeah, so basically, I just did some vitrectomy over the ports, over the scleral ports, so that if there's any uh, vitreous or iris tissue, uveal tissue there, that has to be removed. So I just did that already. I'm just showing it again. And now you go ahead and put in some more air because the eye is a little shallow. 
uh, soft I mean and then you go ahead and just put the glue in. Yeah, put glue, dry the yield. So what we have to do is we have to dry it. Yeah, that's dry. And then Shashi is putting the first one, then she'll put the second one. Ram in first and five in. And then we just close it, doesn't matter, sir. Uh, and that's the conjunctiva that's being closed. So it's better to leave in some air, isn't it? Uh, just to prevent hypotony and that's the right. fluid from oozing out of the sclerotomy when you're putting the glue. Small just just for that purpose. Only the stool, no? So even after that, you leave the air. And this goes up and down? Uh, sometimes I'm not necessarily down. if you've got an airtight wound then it's really not required. In uh, of course all vitrectomized eyes it's important that you always make sure that your all your ports are closed well. So anything where you've done a vitrectomy even if it's just for a PCR you have to make sure that all the incisions are closed well and there's no... Yes sir. Thank you. Thank you so much ma'am. Thanks a lot sir. Naren, ready? Yes, sir. Ah, ready. Please start. Uh, Dr. Sue, sir. Okay, yes. we, uh, we shift to theatre uh, one now. Technique. Uh, this is Dr. Venkatesh. Hi, hi, Venkatesh. How are you? Uh, shift to theatre one, please. The Yamani technique. How is it in your hands? Uh, I have really not tried it because I guess over to, from 2007, we have, this has become like uh, second nature to us. So that's that's not a problem. But I think Yamani is a very good technique also because no, parole. you don't have no, to do sure. conjunctival dissection in that. So that's actually quite a big advantage, especially for patients where you might have had maybe RD surgery or something else where the Conjunctive has been extensively dissected Come already on. or you know patients like that. Manoj. So Yamane is definitely a good technique, I don't have anything against it at all. So okay, we shift to theatre 1. Elimination we Again, no, we no, are no. back to theatre 1 indirect. here. Only indirect. And uh, Thanks, we have none other than yeah, I'll go there. the off? superstar of Karnataka. Uh, <laughs> don't indirect. be disheartened that Puneet Rajkumar is not there now. But here there. is Naren Shetty. The superstar of Indian ophthalmology from Karnataka, from Narayan Netralia, and he is going to demonstrate to us Centurion Active Sentry and VVT IOL, which is a new sensation in my opinion. Yes. Over to Narayan, please. Uh, right, sir. Uh, thank you, Mohan, sir, and ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. So, today we will be operating on a patient called uh, Muragan. Uh, he is a 56 year old uh, patient. Uh, who's uh, with the almost NS1 to 2 uh, grade of cataract. So first I'm creating side ports. The main port, when you see, you know, I create a very limbal and very, 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 the length is very, very short. This I do to, uh, so that I induce as less astigmatism as possible. It's a single planar. Once I've done that, then I enter with Visco. Narayan? Yes, sir. When you make the uh, length of the wound short, yeah. don't you think it's uh, uh, because it's not a square incision? Yes, sir. So it's more like a rectangle now. Yes, sir. So, so I would prefer that, sir, because yeah. I don't mind handling. Okay, one issue is uh, if you're not careful, there's a chance of the iris prolapsing yes, and other things. That's, that's the reason why I asked. But uh, you. I usually, you know, I'm used to this because I would prefer uh, handling in such situations. Uh, with the iris than compared to handling with post-operative uh, surgically induced astigmatism. So we have uh, a rexus and then I'm <coughs> using the Centurion system. That was a beautiful rexus, Naren. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think we should yeah. give a ha big hand for Naren's rexus. Hydro, huh? Thank you. Very it's, nice. It's slightly out of focus. Uh, uh, my focus, oh. down, focus down is a little. Is this okay? No, you went the opposite side, I think. Uh, you should go to the uh, up, is it? Yeah, Up opposite of what you did. Yeah, I think. No, no, no. no Come back. Laptop, yeah. yeah, best. Okay? Super, Better super. Now, yes. Yeah, now it's good. So, uh, whenever we do hydro, I, I mean, I believe that we should just do one side. Once you get a wave, you just uh, release it from the other side. Once you have done that, you don't need to rotate. You are rest assured that it has, uh, we have completed the rexus. Okay. Can you talk about this machine a little more? The Centurion, Centurion machine, I mean, it's a, I mean, right now it's the best machine out there. Um, uh, so if you see my parameters, I'm operating at uh, 22 IOP and... Uh, 22 IOP? Yes, sir. With a vacuum? Your vacuum is 700 and uh, 60 uh, aspiration. It's extremely, extremely stable. So now you see it's a softer cataract. So I'm going to do more of mechanical one. So you should you should just do it slow. If you do it slow, then you can chop any grade of cataract. 
So that's that's one. So if you see, I'm not using any vacuum, any uh, FACO to do my thing. What is the flow rate you're using? 60, sir. 60. All maximum, sir. Basically, you're chopping in zero vacuum, actually, everything, sir. Everything, sir. Everything zero. So in soft cataract, just place it here, take the dialer to the periphery. You have to imagine as if you're scooping the lens into the FACO tip. Then you move it slowly sideways. Very good. That's it. So once that is done, the slow motion chop. Yeah. So I usually uh -huh. remove my uh, uh, side. I mean, second instrument, so that the chamber is more stable. And you see, uh, at all time, the chamber is beautifully stable. <coughs> what is the idea of having only 22 uh, IOP, uh, uh, Naren? So that we keep it as uh, uh, the normal uh, IOP as possible, sir. Uh, okay. So that uh, patient is extremely comfortable. Oh, no, no, no. Only irrigation. Aye. Aye. So patient is extremely com comfortable. Very, very useful, especially if you have a high myope. So uh, it doesn't uh, lead to a reverse pupillary block and it becomes deep and the patient uh, screams of pain. Dr. Narin, you never rotated the lens. Is it a specific reason why you don't do it? Uh, it's not necessary, not sir. necessary. Because uh, if we rotate the lens, uh, see, especially in these soft cataracts, you've already like disturbed the lens. Now, uh, you, if you're planning to, IA, please. This is irrigation, huh? Actually, these cataracts, uh, what he did was actually very difficult because uh, uh, Ron, you said, uh, no, about these cataracts, coined them as NHNT, uh -huh. neither here nor there. <laughs> so difficult to crack, suck, yes, sir. and even chop. True, did sir. so well, beautiful. Absolutely, because he used the zero vacuum, he was able to chop, I think. If you see the CD... So, you always use bimanual IA, Naren? Always, sir. Always, sir. Always, okay. Uh, one few things it's useful, uh, especially in topical, <coughs> because you have better control with the eye. If the patient is squeezing, uh, if you're using coaxial, it's extremely, extremely difficult. It's not easy. I saw you putting the left side port a little oblique yes, instead sir. of uh, straight like this, you know? Yes, sir. So what is the reason for that? See, if you see, sir, if, you, if I close here, absolutely no fluid here. Oh, so, okay. it blocks the fluid and when you're doing your chopping also, no, this is the action. So, what will happen is, it will not lead to fluid loss when you're trying to chop off. Yeah, it's like putting the sclerotomy. Yes. The trocar and cannula, no? Yes. Angled. Yeah. I usually use a larger uh, hole uh, aspiration, so the aspiration is a little more quicker. If it's smaller, it's going to be slower. Uh, so, that's one. Uh, bimanual is always a, a much easier option for a sub incisional cortex. Yes, I'm yes, a big definitely. Fan of definitely. <laughs> Lens, please. So, I usually implant the lens under irrigation. Yeah, rotate. Uh, rotation, rotation. Yeah, so uh, and uh, this is a rotating uh, injector. Oh, you do it under irrigation? Yeah, under irrigation, so no oh, visco. Uh, the assistant rotates the yes. lens. The lens, so that it's a very controlled manner the lens enters the lens every time. It's very consistent and you can repeat it every time. So, <laughs> what I do is once I've implanted the lens, I remove the visco on one side. Then, after that, I don't move my aspiration. Aspiration remains the same. The irrigation keeps <laughs> moving. It goes under, then we it goes, we have to wash on the lens. Okay. Now, if you see, observe the visco, uh, let me maybe zoom in. Sorry. Can you see the, yeah. If you observe this. Yes. Now I'm washing what is on the endothelium. Visconconia, please. Can you see visco still being there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Correct. that means you don't need to see the OPD next day. You're still, the cornea will be nice and clear the next day. Because I've not put visco during my uh, implantation of the lens. Ah. So this is the visco which was protecting during my quadrant removal. See how difficult is this uh, removal viscose. So once <coughs> that is done. Is, is it the viscose you are using? No, no viscose, sir. Just viscose. Just uh, <coughs> PMC. Yes, sir. So once that is done, you're good. Yeah, to yeah. Go. Surgery done. So about the VVT lens, you're not talking. So the VVT lens actually is a fantastic lens, actually one of the best lenses. And uh, it's opened up a, <coughs> uh, you know, a completely a new, this one for a lot of patients. See, uh, we have a lot of patients which uh, we have to look at. Iod abrasions, you have to look at uh, uh, what do you call it? 
uh, uh, retina issues, glaucoma issues, nothing for VVT lens, nothing you blindly, just like any other monofocal lens, you just uh, implant the lens and you're good to go. So what are the advantages <coughs> is you get very good uh, distance and intermediate, the near also to some extent, actually if you do a micro mono vision, yeah. it's fantastic. It no, there, really there is well. a central zone there, no? Yes, yeah, so that helps if, if you, if yes. But it's not seen there, but if I, I can, we can see it under the microscope. Yes, sir. The central zone, does it uh, have any ad power or anything similar to yes, in-focus? Yes, sir. So, uh, so basically it helps in the, that's the point where, which helps with the near focus. Yeah. And uh, the, what is beauty about this lens is it doesn't uh, reduce any, uh, it doesn't have any contrast uh, reduction, like any other monofocal, sir. So that is one, uh, Salahin Puri. No, it's really a fantastic lens. I've got a, a fairly good experience now. Yes, sir. Yes, and VVT Tariq is also available. Yes. Sir. And it's really works wonders. Yes, sir. I think you should give a big round of applause to Naren. What a lovely surgery. What a fantastic. And you said everything is best about Alcon. The Centurion, the VVT. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. How much is the so addition, the, Dr. Mohan, in the, in the So lens if you see the... No, the addition, the, these guys will not tell. The problem is the, uh, the Alcon guys or any company guys, they'll say there's no audition, no audition, <laughs> no audition. Straight, huh? They said the X-Link technology and that, that guys will say that some wave uh, enlightened technology. So right. all these technologies, they are all trademark secrets. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> and if you see the CD is just 0 0.2, which we have used the whole surgery. So the patient is extremely comfortable. And uh, uh, I mean, it's. I mean, this is the only machine where you can operate with She's 22 IOP. Her. And this is, uh, when you see the... Uh, the settings of the quadrant. You see this? It's no, no. You know, because ah, the camera is this side. Ah. Okay. No, no, no. Cam it's camera, come. Possible. So, come, come. But you see the one minute, Kumar. Yeah, 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 no problem. So, if you see the settings of the uh, Faco machine, so you see this in the quadrant. I'm using 22 IOP. The vacuum is constant 700. You able to see that screen there, monitor? It it immediately builds yes, up to Mohan. 700, and really also the Mohan. also the flow is 60. Actually, you don't need about 100 FACO power, but I don't want to keep changing my settings. Uh, I keep yeah, one yeah. settings for my soft, hard, everything. So I have all my control in my foot pedal. Foot pedal. If there's more harder cataract, I press more. If less, then I press less. Simple as that. You have IP as well? Huh. Uh, IP, usually chopping, I keep it off, sir. Why? Why? Uh, because IP, uh, it, it breaks the occlusion. And uh, ripples us. Yeah, and pushes it away, no, no. sir. Ah. Yes, so yes. it uh, counteracts Good. when you're trying to chop, sir. Okay. But when you're doing, uh, see if you see the second settings, where I use a little bit of uh, longitudinal yeah. uh, power, about just point, uh, I mean about five, uh, starting with zero. So this, what Lutein? happens is, it just helps to uh, slightly Lutein push the lens and come back. Uh, push CMC. the lens and come CMC. back. It acts like a jackhammer. This one? So that, you know, the this followability one? is very, very quick. Okay. Uh, this is so beautiful. Even in a black cataract, you can use the settings. It eats like butter. Fantastic. I think it's a very good point uh, for people, uh, the information for the audience. The intelligent FACO is IP, wherein there is a, when the 90% occlusion of the tip, the longitudinal pulses start, uh, start uh, uh, coming automatically. So I think it's a fantastic surgery. Naren, very big hand for Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. We go on to the... Okay? Main incision <laughs> and forceps. Thank you. One calibre forceps. We go on Thank to you. the next surgeon. <laughs> The no, next no. surgeon <laughs> is thank you. Thank you. Is the Don of Mumbai. <laughs> the Don of Mumbai is here with us. Yes, sir. I think for the first time the here. Time. Yes. Yes, Kumar doctor was supposed to come two years back, but uh, he had some problem. He couldn't come. But uh, this is the first time Kumar is coming here uh, for the life surgery. Kumar doctor does not re see the amount of accolades he's got. S numerous accolades. Very innovative guy, very good surgeon, very good speaker. Above all, a fantastic human being. Over to Kumar, he's going to demonstrate to us Signature Pro and Lucidus, Lucidus Lens. Lucidus is again an extended depth of uh, lens from uh, uh, which company is that? Savo. Savo, Switzerland. Swiss. Uh, so, okay, you, over to Kumar, please. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mohan, Sujata. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my first time here. So I'm going to do topical anesthesia. I'm operating superiorly because the incision is around 1.30. Uh, so I'm going to make the keratome incision first. And then we are, I'm going to show a little few steps different than what you may have seen. So this is a keratome entry. One, one minute. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Ramesh, are you able to see Ramesh? No, uh, Xylocard. Mohan, extremely clear Mohan. But okay, thank you, thank you. Yes, can you zoom on? We can't see the superior limbus. 
He's um, he's, uh, he's he's sitting superiorly. Ah, superb. Can you just zoom down a little bit, like half a millimeter? Thanks. Can you be a little louder, Ramesh? You're not able to hear you. Hello. It's nice, Mohan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you zoom down a bit, it'll help. Yeah. Thank you. Better? Fantastic. Oh, zoom Fantastic. down, is it? Okay. So, I've just made the main incision. Uh, no, I don't need air. Xylocard. Okay. So, I've just made the main incision. Now, doing an aqueous xylocard exchange. So, we are putting xylocard. Then we put methyl. No, meth no dye. Direct methyl. So, now I'm going to put methyl into the eye. Fill up the eye. The trick here, of course, you all know, is that we start injecting inferiorly at 6 o'clock and then come up, oh then heal on, sister, heal on, heal on, heal on. Once I put methyl, what I'm going to do, I don't have a rexis marker, but there is a specific rexis marker because in private we use Videon or Callisto or whatever you have. So as you can see that I put heal on only in the center, side port. And once that is done, I'm going to make a side port. So I may do a coaxial or a bimanual, but I'll be ready for both. So once that is done, you try to. So if the patient is uncooperative, you can use any forceps to fixate the eye. And this is a utrata forceps, which I use to make my rexis. So there are many ways you have seen everyone do a rexis. But this is a little different method. Do you want the coaxial one? Change, sir? Want to change to coaxial? Uh, no, I'm okay. You can change. Better. One minute. Huh? Heal on. See Heal this? On. Now better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, better, no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, we have started the rexis and now again I'm injecting viscoelastic. So, this is a way of doing rexis directly with the forceps. She is a little young patient, so the rexis will tend to move away. But we will try to control it. And you can see the type of the cataract is a little posterior. So I got my rexis, hydro. Now this is a hydro dissection cannula from Katina. I have no financial interest. But there are lots of advantages of this over the normal Helon cannula that one may use. Sound. Sound less please, sound less please. So we have injecting. Please close the door. I don't want any. Yeah, soundless. So once we inject uh, hydro, you can see the fluid wave go through, and then we decompress the nucleus in the center, so that we break the equatorial cortical adhesions. We try to rotate at this stage, and again do a little bit of hydro on the other side. This was more like a posterior capsular subcapsular cataract. Yeah. Methyl, phaco. So we just form the chamber again. So I'm using a signature pro system, which I'm used to for what so many years. What settings you're going to use? Let me know. So the vacuum here is uh, the beauty of the signature pro is that the vacuum drops. It doesn't drop to zero. It drops to a certain level, and that prevents your surge. Light not right? Inko bolo light man dekhe. Nara nara light paranga ya. Light paranga. Kunchh kila paranga. Ah, right. Fine. So we are going ahead. Ah. One wait, hold this. Hold this. Yeah, hold. It's conjunctiva. It's conjunctiva. I need to cut the conjunctiva. Open the conjunctiva. Yeah. Sometimes. It's got scissors, good man. Sometimes there is a chemosis because of our incision. To prevent that from uh, happening more, it's better that we chop off this area because that will keep coming and then. I think uh, Ramesh has got a technique as well for that. Ramesh, can you just tell that? Yeah. Exactly the same, Mohan. I make a smile cut. I cut towards the limbus. So he cut little parallel. I cut towards the limbus. Okay. So you have a smile with you then? Yeah. So the patient is smiling and <laughs> the is smiling. <laughs> no, sister. Put more saline, otherwise there is methyl. They put saline on the cornea. All over. In the center may kuch hai. Yeah. Ah, yes, thank you. Okay. So yeah. we just go ahead. Just making a small trench there. Yeah. I'm now trying to focus. Yeah, it's fine. Chop up. You able to see that clearly? Extremely clear, Mohan. Yes, Mohan. 
But the fork so I made a little groove because this is a 30 gauge tip. What I like to do is bury and then hold. Once you hold, this chopper is made by me. All my chopper and Mohan's chopper is similar. This is made out of titanium, made by Epsilon. Uh, different lengths are available from 1, 1.25, 1 1.5 and 1.75. So we got little piece out now. I like to apply FACO power only in the center. As you can see that I'm right in the middle. And then only I'm using my FACO energy. I thought I'm going to do a catalyst today. But uh, we're doing a manual. Mohan has got a catalyst and we had a long discussion before he got the catalyst, if you remember. Oh, you, you could have done catalyst actually. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that. So this is uh, removing 1111 piece. One and now this is the sub incisional. I can take it out like this. I can rotate it, whatever you want. As rightly pointed out by Naren, uh, it is wiser when the last piece is there. Saline on cornea, please. That uh, we remove the chopper from the eye. That is quite possible. And this is the last piece. So this stage, you can remove the chopper from the eye. So your fluidics becomes only on one port. So this removes the cataract completely. Bye, Manu. So I will now sh do either coaxial. I have both. I'm used to both. Senior surgeons are used to coaxial. All the young ones are used to bimanual, but I will do bimanual. So this is a fantastic uh, bimanual. Uh, it's made by a company called Magnum. I don't know how many of us buy expensive bimanuals. Just for your information, this cost only 8,000 rupees, and it's brilliant. So just for young people who want to buy a bimanual set, uh, they are quite easily available. Uh, there are lots of bimanuals available in the market. But this one is really good. Doctor, so the tip is dusted. What is the size of the bimanual uh, irrigation and aspiration, Dr. Kumar? Yeah, so it will be, I think, a 21 gauge. Because I'm putting a 1.25 side pot. So the more important than the size, I think, it is the balance between the aspiration and irrigation. And there is no chamber collapse. So you can see that the irrigation port are two. Uh, and they are quite large in size. They appear large. But uh, I think the balance between the two, uh, there is a way to calculate. And I had done this study long time back, where you actually calculate how much fluid comes out of the irrigating cannula per minute. And that actually tells you the balance between the two uh, systems. So, in, in this bimanual, I think both the uh, irrigation and aspiration are of the same size. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, that's the beauty. I think many bimanuals you have an irrigation which is larger and an aspiration yes. which is smaller, which leads to leakage when you put it on the other side. Yes. So and another problem is too much of less aspiration or more aspiration sometimes causes chamber collapse. Is this company from Mumbai, this Magnum? Yes, yes. So I think the same guys uh, which are Epsilon, they also manufacture this and they give you. Kumar, what is the advantage of having the sandblasted surface on the aspirator? Uh, same thing, no polishing. And plus it identifies your port. This was a thick epinucleus. As you know, it was capsular and subcapsular. So at this stage, we are using the irrigating force itself to uh, remove the... Since you are talking of the bimanual, is this a titanium or is this a steel bimanual? Steel. And uh, does it last long? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Even someone was talking about the uh, speculum. So this speculum that I have got is made out of titanium. Again, solid blade, uh, no weight. So those issues are sorted. So that's again made for me by Epsilon, no financial interest. But I'm just informing you that it's available. Sir, one Looks question here yes, yes. For, uh, for premium lenses for 45 and below. If you yeah. have a high myope and the uh, patient is less than 45, what are the lenses that you would like to offer? Not to undergone any refractive surgery? Or so it depends on the need of the patient. If the patient is fussy, wants uh, no halos, no glare, then either IHANS or VVT. If the patient is a lot of night driving, interstate night driving, then again lens. It's loaded. Then uh, we can. No, what happened? 
I pressed the long key. Okay, sorry. Then we can decide which lens. Now this is, give me that iris repository. Hmm. So this lens is the Lucidus IOL, the big advantage, it's loaded for me. The big advantage here is that uh, it's an EDOF lens. So, saline on cornea. I've used a lot of this, about 300 plus may not be equal to some of the volumes that you talk in South India. So here this may need a little bit of a biomanual technique. I fill the bag with uh, viscoelastic and then the whole lens opens beautifully. And then we just need to turn our hand a little bit to make sure that the lens remains horizontal. And then sometimes with my left hand itself, I just uh, put the lens inside the bag. Yes. So this makes the lens inside the bag. So the Lucidus IOL is a EDOF IOL. Brilliant lens, no loss of contrast. We've done studies, we've done a glarometer study. Uh, there is no glare, halos, uh, has reading. And now they're coming out with a new model called Eden. So some of the Lucidus patients who need a little add, saline on cornea, then we can put in the other eye a lens called Eden. This is like a refractive design. The Eden is a diffractive design. So now I've removed the viscoelastic from the top of the lens. And we, sometimes you can see a small, uh, I think a one millimeter Bikram. or one point five millimeter add zone. Bikram. I can see. Amma. Yes, yes, you're right. Here, yeah, this one. So now I'm going behind the lens, and you can see that when we are going behind the lens, the irrigation is down towards the posterior capsule. So really, now we are polishing off those cells from the PC which were sitting there. It's a line on cornea. We can go and aspirate it if necessary. Very good. Super That way it's taken care. Anyway, these cells are not really that much of an issue. Now, because the haptic is there, it won't allow the uh, cells to come anterior, but it doesn't really matter. So that completes the case. Now, as I mentioned a little bit about this cannula, it's a hydrodissection cannula from Patina. So, if some of you can get this access, you should use it. It's brilliant. It's different from the Helon cannula that we use for hydrodissection. It has lots of advantages over the normal hydrodissection cannula. So, this was again topical. Uh, the lens is in the bag. Everything done. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello. Kumar, what's the cost of this lens? Cost of the lens, I think, is around 20 or 25,000. And the toric is around 5,000 more. Thank you. That's it. Thank oh, you. Really central zone. This is the central so this zone. is the yes, speculum. Again, solid blade made of titanium. Okay. So it's very, very light compared to uh, any other speculum that you will get in the market. Fantastic surgery, Dr. Yeah. Kumar. Thank, thank you very much. Fantastic surgery, Dr. Kumar. Thank you. Dr. Kumar, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kumar thank you, what's the PCO rate with these lenses? It looked like a... Hydrophilic lens. It is hydrophilic. 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 It is hydrophilic. Hydrophilic. And what's the PCO oh, rate? It will be there. You will get some PCO. <laughs> Don't get it in all cases, but yes, there is a higher PCO rate than <laughs> the hydrophobic ones. The kind of taranga ma, onna banana thenge, cup kude. Unko bolo acha. Paraju. Fantastic surgery. Sir. Okay, we go on to the femto theater now. Thank you. You able to see me now? Thank you. Yes, yes, we can see you. Ah, uh, DP. Yeah, we can see you. Uh, okay, this is a catalyst machine. Mm. Okay, this is a really a wonder machine you can see here. Instruments this is a liquid optic interface. Are you able to see this? Yeah, yeah, we can. This is a very brown cataract. What I'm going to do now? So I'm going to keep the liquid optic interface. Nera light paranga ma? Kunchu kila paranga? Nera paranga? Kunchu kila paranga ma? Ah, ah, alda. Rumbal. Ah, kunchu kira? The light paranga. Ah, right. Okay, the liquid optic interface is kept on the cornea. And the suction is on. Okay. Then I put saline. The advantage of the catalyst machine when compared to the lensex is that the amount of pressure doesn't intend the cornea. The amount of pressure vacuum build up is only about 10 to 12 millimeters of mercury. So even in glaucoma patients, you can use it without any problem at all. So you can see here this one. Show the screen, ma. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm rotating the joystick clockwise and then locking this into the 
சிஸ்டம் ஸ்பிளிட் ஸ்கிரீனாக வைக்க முடியுமா ஒரு சைடில் வந்து இந்த அவுட் சைட் வியூ ஒரு சைடில் இன் சைட் வியூ ஸ்மால் பபுள் இஸ் தேர் ஸோ ஐம் கோன் டு யா able to see that yeah 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 we can see that Very okay clearly. this is a z height you can see it z height yes and then what i'm doing i'm centering it okay okay now i'm capturing it and then locking the machine inga pange coming okay see there is a Yeah, we can see that, Dr. Mohan. We can see that. What okay. You can see the screen here. So, the, the machine is capturing all the parameters now. You can see the CCT, the central corneal thickness, the aqueous depth, the anterior chamber depth, the lens meridian position, lens thickness, pupillary diameter, the white to white, all these comes. You can see the three-dimensional OCT as well. even in a posterior polar cataract we can see some defects there you can see the thickness of the lens and uh, uh, which is almost 4 mm now yeah the scan capsule center automatically by default everything comes if you are small people you can do pupil maximized so we are going for octants so we are going to do a center sparring which is a new feature of the 6.0 software of this catalyst mission center sparring yes center sparring where it spars the center from the femto energy so it's coming to about 32 30.2 seconds so you can see the rex is is over now 1.6 seconds it's frag frag <coughs> fragmenting the nucleus <laughs> sorry <laughs> just why about did he choose to spare the center mohan which one why did he choose to spare the center ah yeah i will tell you why because it's a very brown cataract and if i took the center it takes about 90 seconds so i don't want too much of feco energy i'm sorry femto energy also so center sparing gives us a very good uh, uh, so from 90 seconds i brought it to 30 seconds if i spare the center that's that's the end of this uh, femto here then we'll take the patient to the main theater and i'm going to put a synergy lens for this patient okay any questions on this awesome awesome so you can see here in this uh, by the coming back you can see how brown the cataract is coming coming uh, extremely hard cataract mohan yes mohan see how brown the cataract yes, is here yes, yes, yeah grade 4 grade 5 probably grade yeah definitely four. definitely yes <coughs> Dr. Mohan, you are there? Yeah, we go on to the, uh, the next case that is by Saurabh Blutra from Bilaspur. Yeah. Dr. Take Mohan, is, what is the problem of having excess femto energy inside the eye? Does it damage the endothelium? No, no, it doesn't damage the endothelium. The problem is if it, uh, if it goes beyond 60 or 70 seconds, normally I, uh, uh, I do the center sparring. So, I don't want uh, the patient to be, be under this thing for about 90 seconds or so. normally we reduce the amount of feco the femto energy also it is better to reduce so we have the center sparring software which is again very very important on the catalyst new catalyst software here and uh, the center sparring uh, gives us you can see while i'm dividing the nucleus there during the feco the the division would have gone all the way down so it works wonderfully well as well okay Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank will you. I will show it to you. Demonstrate that to you. Yeah. No, right now, we are not seeing anything. We are just seeing a blank screen here. Uh, are you deliberately showing a blank? Screen? No, 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 no. Sir, doctor, wait, wait. We are going to the next case, which is by Saurabh Lutra on the Century on Mission. What are you doing? Sir, come here. Yeah. <laughs> மைக் மைக் பண்ணு மைக் பண்ணு 
சீக்கிரம் கீழே 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 ஆரம்பிக்க போறோம் ஆன் ஸ்கிரீன் நவ் எடுத்துறோம் மைக் எடுத்து மைக் எடுத்து சரி <laughs> 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 Dr. Venkatesh here. Sir, 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 good morning. Good luck with the surgery. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <coughs> so, sir, now we are yeah, moving yeah. to Just one Dr. Moment. Saurav Luthra. All right. He will be, div- he will be operating on a Centurion machine. And uh, Saurav doesn't need any introduction. He is from Central India, one of the very dynamic young surgeons. Uh, Saurav, over to you. Forming. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. இங்கிலந்து 26 போடுங்க பை கான்ஃபர்டிங்லயே வரலாம் தே பேட் அந்த பை கான்ஃபர்டிங் இது விஸ்கோ இருக்கால புதுசா போடுங்க ஃப்ரெஷ் நீட் செலைன் மட்டும் ஆடியோ கேக்குறேன் யா சோ சாரி ஃபார் தி லாக் ஜஸ்ட் கிவ் மீ நோ ப்ராப்ளம் டேக் யுவர் டைம் குட் மார்னிங் மனோஜ் குட் மார்னிங் சார் ஹவ் ஆர் யூ ஃபைன் மனோஜ் ஹவ் ஆர் யூ ஆல் குட் சார் Can you give me some zoom here? Ah. Take it, take it, okay. Yeah, Fine. yeah. Okay, so I usually make uh, two incisions. Is it clear, sir, there in the hall? Yeah, it's quite clear. Quite clear. Sir, of all yours. Yes, sir. So a small side port, direct through a 26, wherein I will die. I am a compulsive old style practitioner. Carry it on. Are you sitting superior or temporal? I am sitting superiorly, sir. Right. So, Saurav is su- sitting t- uh, superior. So, you stain all the cataracts, Saurav? I do, sir. Okay, yes. Prefer staining, Makes is it? Makes my life simpler. I will make a partial thickness. We will do a rexis and then complete my... final incision கொஞ்சம் விஸ்கோ போடுங்க கார்னியா மேல தேங்க் யூ ஸோ ஹீ இஸ் அ ஃபிஃப்டி டூ இயர் ஓல்ட் பர்சன் அண்ட் அ ஃபேர்லி என்எஸ் டூ கேட்ராக்ட் மை டார்கெட் இஸ் டு கோ ஃபார் அ ரூட்டீன் ஃபைவ் பாயிண்ட் அரவுண்ட் அ ஃபைவ் இஷ் ரெக்ஸிஸ் கொஞ்சம் பபல்ஸ் ரிமூவ் பண்ணுங்க thank you you seen all fast super fast surgeons i'll be a routine comfortable slow take my time on to it because you know the three key steps for a cataract would be a good incision a good rexis and a good hydro so other thing what saurav has done is he has also uh, taken visco uh, in my tip rexis type of a thing so yeah. if it all any shallowing of enter chamber is there you can inject the visco elastic right from the same that's correct yeah i think that's a very uh, uh, important step for every surgeon i think Old. yes sir yes sir so uh, t- you don't have to come in in and out and there is no loss of rexis as well at any point of time yeah saves time you know and keeps your ac always <coughs> very nice rexis sir very good thank you sir i'm trying to have a little big little more very nice ah adhika pro yeah correct almost finishing here 
सिस्टर कैरेटोम को दूँगा ओके गिव मी दी फूड गुड पता भी या ब्यूटीफुल सिस्टर इधर ब्रो का है चल कैन गिव मी अनदर कैरेटोम जस्ट अ टू पॉइंट है या या नॉर्मल एनीथिंग I drew. Yeah. Amita, my mic is off. My mic is off. Okay. Okay. Mute like that. Ah, sorry. Amita, why didn't you give one more? So you could uh, see the wave going nicely there. Come on, doctor. Although, one more case. What is that? Optiflex is doing. Talit is doing. Then. Yeah. So there's decompression is an important step. No, yes. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that you know you're not over. Filling your AC, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, no. Uh, after this, can we focus a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. Slight centration also is required. Sir. Okay, sir. Optiflexion and Vivian. No, can no, help? Can somebody help me with that? Let Vivian. Okay. So, is there uh, anybody in the audience have any questions to the panel? Huh? Uh, to the not uh, to the panel, to the surgeons. Yes, ma'am. And can you change the illumination? Vishant is here. Any yeah. questions? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, for SM case, yeah. So I'm a compulsive stop and chop guy. For Sujata case, okay. so can you can tell something about the parameters? What you are going to use, sir? So, so, sir, I'll be using the sculpt onto yeah. with a IOP of around ah, 50, yes. and yes, a yes. power of ranging yeah. from 25 to oh, small people. How can 75 depending yes. on the grid? And one second, yeah. No, no, many many things. Yeah, to do. Check it up. Saline, yeah. Kunj, yeah. fine focus, man. Gana. Stop and chop technique, isn't it? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Stop and chop, eh? Stop. Yes, sir. You are you are on focus now, uh, Saurav. It's good now. Saline. Ah, better only. So the importance of a long group. And, and also a deep group. Correct. Very you have to stop and chop. know what where to stop because now? after the. What are the parameters you're using now? All oh, right. You have any clues where to stop? Yeah, I mean, once you are sure enough about the glow at the back. You will start in Chennai and stop in Bilaspur. <laughs> 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 Sir, don't do that to me. <laughs> Otherwise, I correct. Eh? So I have nicely rotated. I'll, you know, make a nice big groove. Some fine focus for me, please. Can please go a little down so that I can see my groove. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is better, better, better. Ah, solid time. So I think I have a good, decent groove. Okay. Little more, maybe. Yeah. So I have the crack there. Very nice, sir. Very nice. Very nicely done. One more. Yeah. So the important step here is yeah. do slowly. Yeah. Make sure that the crack is complete. Yeah. So now I'm going to change the mode to quadrant. Here yeah. in the settings are you know little obviously a higher little vacuum, but here I've reduced my IOP. Because of the active sentry machine, here the handpiece has an irrigation sensor built in inside. If there is a real-time IOP monitoring happening, wherein you can really play around. Which I think Narain showed beautifully, <coughs> because you know he could play around with such high parameters. So it's a torsional one. What you are using? Yes, sir. Your torsional. What exactly the active sentry does, sir? You know Narain, it. Can also tell. Yeah, it. You know it. Okay. Narin is talking. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So, uh, actually, when we look at the active sentry, basically what it does is it's all about. See, you need to sense that there is a change in pressure, so Correct. it's very important. So, how do you sense it? Is if uh, before the parameters was there in the FACO machine, yeah. where the sensing part was in the FACO machine. That's why it is too. There was some amount of delay. So, the more closer you get, you uh, you get the sensor. So, the more quickly the response can be. So that's why they they build the sensor in the FACO handpiece itself without 
you know hardly you can make out any change in uh, you know weight or thickness fantastic and uh, that's amazing so that that's why even with you know very low iop like 20 also you can easily do a surgery and patients so much more comfortable also very well done saurabh true, fantastic true. thank you sir saurabh you used a, a dialer and chop so beautifully oh, yeah. really thank you appreciate it saurabh thank you thank you atik fantastic job saurabh thank Great you vikta sir thank you and one more thing, you know, where usually the venting will happen from <coughs> FACO 2 to FACO 1. In the active century, as soon as the occlusion is happening, it automatically gets on. Uh, change to cortex, please. Dr. Swarup, uh, Dr. Nishant here. Welcome and amazing job. Hi, Nishant. Technique. Thanks. Uh, just one thing, you started chopping, I mean, uh, trenching from the center and then rotated it and trenched the other side. Nishant, can you be a little louder? Yeah, little louder. Started, uh, Nishant, yeah. Trenching from the center and uh, rotated and uh, completed the trench on the other side. Correct. Uh, any particular significance that you don't want to start behind the center so that you can just complete it? You know, somehow, you know, old habits die hard, Nishant. <laughs> Something like that. So, it, you know, kind of gives me a comfort to after rotating, you know, making it a little more bigger and knowing that, you know, it's completely done and that, you know, also says that my nucleus is also completely movable. So, I don't have any surprises happening. So Thank you, thank you. Useful for young ophthalmologists like us. Aha. He, he, he is from Center India, Nishant. Central Yada Pano Illame. Correct. Yeah. So, Sister, now load Pantra lens. La. Ask uh, Nishant how he is. Any no? reason why you do this uh, trench and then the chop? Because I found that you are chopping so well. Why don't you do the chop from the beginning itself? What is the advantage of your trench? So trench, of course, sir, you know, being into, okay, just one moment. He's loaded the lens. I'll just answer that. So there were three steps to load and it's been done nicely. So this is a very uh, smart injector system by, you know, Hoya. They have a... It's probably the best injector system, yeah, in my opinion. Say they have the grooves you can rotate. You can use both the hands and push. And they have a sub two millimeter. Uh, you can easily put the lens through a 1.8. And you know this tip is if you want it to go to PC directly around the as in the bag. Otherwise, it can be guarded. You can see I've moved a little further. If you want to be a little, you know, incision oriented, take it back. And yeah. Is it a single vision lens or is it? Yes, yes. It's a single vision. Go smoothly. Okay. All right. Table up slightly. Huh? So the smallest incision for a hydrophobic acrylic lens. You got an ozone uh, plate. Yes, they have a active ozone protection on the uh, on the posterior part of the lens. You know which kind of makes it stick to the posterior capsule so nicely that there are hardly any PCO rates. So there goes the visco behind the IOL, you can easily see. Okay. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for thank watching. You, thank you. Give a thank big you, hand for Sarah. Thank, thank you. What a lovely. Sir and ma'am for having me. Thank you so much. Little thank more you. about the Nanex lens. Uh, and Ravi then Shankar me. here. Congratulations. Thank you, Ravi. That was uh, Chhattisgarh special. Thank you. <laughs> thank Fantastic you so much. Actually, good. Let's Mohan move Anna. on to the Rajnikanth of Indian ophthalmology. None other than Mohan Rajan, Rajan sir. Thank you, Manoj. <laughs> okay, uh, we saw the femto of this heart cataract. And uh, can have the uh, ma tambi eyepiece konja mel thuku. Maud light a paranga ma. The first incision for me is a side port incision. And uh, it's okay now. A slight centration is required. Then I inject Zala card. What I do is make the uh, chamber tight before I make the incision. 
I used to make the incisions with the catalyst, but uh, it's not very consistent. You always use the guard knife, sir? Initially. I always use the guard knife. Okay. That is 300 microns? Yes. Okay. You see, I went up on the cornea and then dipped down. There is always, a, almost always a free floating rexis. You able to see me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Very clear uh, now. Dr. Mohan Meena here. Yes, sir. Can you, can you get, uh, for, the, uh, for the sake of bigness and for me also, tell a little bit about the keratomes that are uh, used? Yeah. This is a keratome which, uh, which is made by Mani. It's got a double edge. So I'm just doing a, so already some new mode dissection would have been, I, we will talk about it now, uh, Meena. So, some new mode dissection is already there, so you have to be a little careful in doing the hydro dissection in the uh, femto. Mohan, it's amazingly clear from here, Mohan. Fantastic. The camera, the live relay, centration, everything is fantastic. Thank you, sir. Hydro you did a limited hydro dissection, is it, Dr. Yeah. Mohan? Yeah, yeah, because I'll tell you why. Especially in this hard cataract, a lot of gas bubbles get formed. So, the certain amount of pneumo dissection is already there. The reason why um, we are talking about it, no? There is a center sparring, I have done the octants. Okay. Now, I am going to do the... It is already pre-chopped there. Did you rotate, Dr. Mohan, or you, you didn't rotate? It be I rotated, but you didn't rotate properly, so we will see. Okay. Once you put the irrigation there, automatically it will start rotating. You able to see that now? Now, yeah. I am using my sharp chopper and going here. Oh, I heard. <laughs> Already the separation is there. You want to bury the entire FECO tip, sir, before. It's an important tip here. Somebody else specs when you mail it, You can see that separation is there. Are you able to see that? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We are able and to very it's fact a, it's a that the very hard cataract, I think, Dr. Mohan. Very, uh, it's a brown cataract. It's looking like an orange here. It's cut. Cataract or rubra. Can see the separation there? Yeah, we can see it very well, sir. We can see that the nucleus is not cut, only the uh, the epinucleus and the probably the. No, no. The very fact that the IR bubbles are coming from the uh, from the back. Uh huh. It means that the it has gone all the way to the posterior plate. Oh, okay. Microscope light increase, my neighbor. It is fine. <laughs> we can see that the central nucleus is such a thick one. Yes, sir. So, quite a thick nucleus plate actually. Taking the first nucleus uh, bit is a little. Uh, Difficult after that you can there is space in the posterior chamber. Since it's already pre-cut, it becomes a little easy for us. looks like a very leathery cataract also, right? It is.
your heart will be in your mouth most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What happened? No, no, yeah, I'm okay. Oh, uh, Niguru, I need a new blade for that. No, I cut from the bandy instead of the saber. Sister, new blade for the blunt. I cut from the 15 degree blade side port. Amazing patience, Dr. Mohan. Fantastic. Amazing. And an excellent chop as well. Hard brown he's taken, huh? Patience and he's working on a <laughs> no co cortical cushion brown. cover. Is there. I, I think patience is the key here. Patience is the key and there is absolutely no cortical cushion cover. So you have to, and the most important thing is you have to be in the center of the pupil. That's very, very important what you're demonstra demonstrating so beautifully. And for such a hard cataract, you can we never trust the capsular bag also. Absolutely. You so never know what's going to be know. the state. And be always in the center of the pupil. Or at least when he's finishing so nicely activity. demonstrated. And he's so uh, away from the uh, corneal center also. So he's also. protecting the endothelium. Endothelium as well. Wow. You see the, you see the beauty uh, of this machine as well. Yeah. You see the fallibility. I'm using a very high vacuum. Yes, almost 500. And can see the fallibility. It's really fantastic. Amazing, Dr. Mohan. Fantastic stability. Everything. Superb. The retro you can see. Yes, sir. Okay, just anesthetic drop, okay? Absolutely no cortical cushion at all. Yes, yes. Very nicely seen. <laughs> yeah. Can we have a big round of applause, please? Yeah. That was a rock hard cataract. It was like uh, last over 25 runs to win and Dhoni comes and makes it with these. Amazing, sir. Mohan, you really have a lot of guts to choose this cataract for a... Uh, no, I do I do regularly only heart cataracts in all my life surgeries now. Wow. Life surgery, you know... <laughs> because it can demonstrate, even if it's a manual FACO, you can demonstrate the chopping very nicely. So what I do is I always remove the sub incisional cortex first. <laughs> so always in these hard cataracts, always look for these small pieces there. Can you see that? Yes, sir. We can see it very nicely. This, these pieces can go underneath the iris. Yes. And come up the next uh, day. And sometimes you can have persistent corneal edema because of these pieces. Always if you have a persistent corneal edema and recurrent inflammation, do an UBM or do a gonioscopy to find out whether you have small pieces lying in the angle or retro iris as well. Somebody might have touched ma'am. Better not touch anything. Okay, yeah. so now this uh, controls are the same, no? Why did you want to do the sub incisional first, Dr. Mohan? What's because when the bag is open, it's easier to remove the sub incisional okay. cortex. Yeah, fine. Fine. Cortical removal is a little eyes, tricky please. in a femto because Open it cuts eyes. the eyes, this thing also. You don't have this anterior cortical uh, edge, you know. You have to go underneath all the way to the equator and pull it. Otherwise, you can pull it from the posterior aspect, which is a little dangerous. Uh -huh. And also, do you do sideways uh, movements, sir, to loosen up the capsule, uh, to the cortex? Mark yeah. We'll drop saline and dry it. Saline and polish. Yeah. I always polish a little bit. Okay, you look at the light above you, huh? Max. Just look at the light. Very good. Cornea. Light path. <coughs> Brilliant, sir. Cornea is crystal clear. Fine. What lens are you planning, Dr. I'm Mohan? I'm doing a synergy lens. The, light? Well, the synergy lens is the lens I go to for all my multifocals now. Look at the white ring of This is a continuous please. range of vision lens. It's a combination of symphony and the thickness multifocal. Light path, please. Light path, please. The advantage of the synergy lens is even low contrast conditions, 
the patient is able to have a continuous range of vision. See this touching again. again from 35 centimeters up till infinity, they will be able to see well. Patients are very happy. They don't call it a trifocal lens, it's a continuous range of vision lens. Again, it's got the what you call the violet blocker as well. Yeah. And more uh, the chrome align technology which gives better contrast. Oh, okay, okay. Fine, fine. Now is it done or not? <coughs> they don't have the synergy toric. I think it's coming up, no? Uh, Who is the J and J guy here? Huh? Yeah, synergy toric is coming up. But as of now they don't have. But it's a really a fantastic lens. The contrast sensory is very good. No, chin the stability of the lens is also very good. Let's just see. So always make sure you can see the central Purkinje images there, three and four. Yes, sir, we can see it. It's there in the central ring. Come. Better you come. Put saline on the cornea then. Okay, that's the end of the case for me. Fine, fine. Fantastic, Dr. Mohan. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Brilliant surgery. Brilliant surgery. The toughest case today. And uh, you know, another thing is I always, uh, this is a message I want to give. I make it a very tight incision, a tight um, chamber, intracameral vigamox for all the patients. I go underneath and give it, fill up the anterior chamber. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. So what I do is Fine. see. I see. I'm checking here. I'm checking here. I'm checking here. I'm checking here. <laughs> repeatedly. I'll move to that side. And okay. I ask the patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, one part of time they'll not be able to see the light. My light theridama. So it's very tight here. This will prevent an ingress in the post-operative period. And uh, also incidence of endophthalmitis and other things. Excellent so suggestion to ask the patient to see yeah, the because if you, having the light. You want yeah. the pressure to be around 30 millimeter, but you don't want the pressure to go beyond the central retinal artery pressure. Yeah, absolutely. So you always ask the patient to be able to see light. You need to be tight because these, please understand, these clear corneal incisions are not as good as the scleral incisions. So you have to be, make it tight, then only the valve will close very nicely. So thank you very much for the wonderful op Excellent opportunity. Excellent sir. Brilliant. And uh, we go on to the oh, next case, which is, uh, any questions on Synergy? Anybody is using Synergy here in the audience, panelists? Mohan, only oh, yeah. one, one question, Mohan. Which yes. patient will you not put these lenses in, Mohan? Patients who got any posterior segment problems, patients who are regular night drivers, and uh, patients... Uh, 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 all the patients I do OCT is a contraindication for putting synergy lens. Just like any other multifocal, I would say. Thanks, Mohan. Fantastically, yeah. beautifully handled. Regarding Meena's question, she was asking about different types of keratomes. Okay? We use the keratome. In this case, I used uh, uh, what you call the double edge. That's fine. Or the, uh, both sides, the, it is a little yes, missing. Just proceed. Sharp, uh, double edged keratome. And the more importantly, if you see my incision it's more or less a square almost a square is so very full square is so difficult but almost a square you can try to make it okay. which means that uh, Narayan made a very shallow incision if you made it but I always make it a little go up on the cornea and then dip down and three, uh, see three. that wrinkle on the cornea and then only I enter into the anterior chamber three three planar Meena is Meena there? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, regarding near vision with uh, Synergy versus ah, Absolutely others. fantastic. Near vision is very good. 35 centimeters, 50 centimeters, 70 centimeters, 80 centimeters. You can see the next house neighbor. Yeah, you can see from here to Shankar also. Uh, yeah, you bring it up. <laughs> that is Synergy for you. Super, guys. Only thing is, they have to give the money. They have not given the money to me. <laughs> <laughs> really fantastic lens, very good lens, very forgiving lens as well. So, and uh, I would, uh, the only, the problem is, doesn't have the toric version, very soon they are coming with the toric version, it's very good, it's a combination of symphony. The problem with symphony is that, very good contrast, 
but the near vision is a problem the, the problem with the multifocal lens is that it's a bifocal lens distance and reading and the problem is again glare halos with the multifocal lens so the synergy gives a continuous range of vision because intermediate vision is very very important nowadays because people are using a lot of computers ipad tabs and all, all other things okay we welcome dr lalit here and uh, it's always a pleasure to have lalit and uh, nivian the the uh, i would call him the tala <laughs> tala of ophthalmology is here with us and uh, who's going to do the next surgery we are ready here uh, cares. Hello everybody, ah, so you now we are ready, the data, Susan yeah. is going to show a case that is corneal allogenic intrasomal ring segment and uh, the patient is a keratoconus patient with an inferior uh, steepening, has a cylindrical power of about uh, minus 4.5 and uh, yeah, she's yeah, going to show how to correct it. I don't know whether you can show the external camera, this is the uh, picture of the patient, you can close in and you can see the plan also where the tissue is going to be. Okay, good. So the depth of this um, uh, the, uh, cares is usually half the thickness of the cornea plus 50 microns for the epithelium. epithelium. So here we go. So already the channels have been created. It is 4.6 and 7.1. You want to show that? And um, so you can, uh, the externally the camera, uh, internal camera coming, internal camera. Ah, you can see that the um, channels have been created by the femtosecond laser. And she's opening it up now. You want to show that other part, huh? Which one? The okay. Um, so, you have, let her finish this case. I will show you how she prepared the segment. So, after this case, she will sh see how the segments were prepared. That comes in the external camera. So, we can, right now, we are just going to show how uh, the segments are going to be inserted. So, she has um, uh, marked it. She's marked the area where she's going to insert. Yeah. It's between three and a half clock hours to seven and a half clock hours. And uh, she stained the segment so that the visualization will be good. Yes. And actually, uh, you can zoom a little bit. You want yeah. to zoom? Zoom. zoom? zoom so this zoom, is the gas segment. This is basically okay. corneal tissue, uh, which has been punched from a donor corneal uh, donor cornea, and I have just dehydrated it a bit. That's why you can see that it's very stiff. Now the epithelial side is marked, and uh, if we have time, we can show you that the epithelial side is marked out, and that is placed preferentially to the internal side. And now we are just going to push this in, this segment. So, you can see it's as simple as that. Yes, that beautiful, it's beautiful. Already, it's probably sticking a little bit to this, but you can just remove it and push it in again. So, that's inside. <coughs> we'll just adjust the position a bit now. So this, uh, this uh, segment goes into the steepest area of the cornea so that you get the maximum flattening effect. What is the keratometry, Dr. Sujata? Uh, the side, the side, the side. Uh, fo uh, 48.3 and 56.9. The steepest uh, area, the uh, K-max is 70.7 um, K-max. Yeah, normally, uh, so we have uh, normally two... Uh, incisions through which we can adjust but here now we are doing it through one incision also and you can see how easily it's gone so that's basically the end of the surgery and uh, ma'am if you can show the yeah, other yeah. part so now we'll be showing you an external camera how this uh, ring segment was uh, prepared by her and the and the coming la ninga eduthada so how thin the can the cornea be to make these pockets this should be at least for similar to intact so it should at least have 400, um, uh, 400. microns plus 50 for uh, plus 50 for the epithelium, so 450. Oh, so he is okay. showing how uh, the endothelium is being removed. You can see that endothelium is being removed uh, from the corneoscleral rim. And epithelium has already been removed. So that is also very important. You can use it uh, just to scrape it off or you can use alcohol to remove it completely. So now we have a Bowman's no, membrane along with stroma. Huh? And um, uh, Susan has prepared a very special punch and uh, that's made by Madhu Instruments, am I right? Madhu Instruments and uh, the punch uh, uh, has uh, two rings so you get the small segment you can see that she's using it she's centering it on the cornea and the punch is made 
On the right side, you see she's just adjusting the segment to where she wants it. So now she's uh, uh, making sure that the uh, see that complete cut has been done, and you get a nice uh, 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 nice segment of uh, a ring of segment. And the ones she has already measured the area that she wants. So she wanted somewhere around four clock hours of the tissue to be inserted. And the tissue is painted with a trepan blue, just so that it can be, it's easily identifiable. Actually, you, uh, even without that, it is quite easy to identify. The advantage is that you know that the epithelium uh, side is, uh, uh, is seen better. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I don't know whether you could run, can you still see my surgery, is it being seen? No, it's now they're showing this. Oh, okay. The surgery part is not being over. It's over. Fine. So basically, uh, ideally, you can have a second incision, which uh, through which you can pull it with a reverse inski also. Uh, so uh, many of the laser machines give you double incisions. With that, it becomes even more simple. Otherwise, what you can do is you can. Uh, you explain oh, okay. This. I'll talk about yeah. this. So here, what you see is uh, uh, the punch that has been made and the uh, segment that is being flattened now. So if you saw, I had marked the epithelial side. That shows the epithelial side on one side and then you straighten it out. So which side do you want to go inside? I want the epithelial side to be on the inner aspect. Inner aspect. Because the epithelium and you know that the anterior stroma is stronger. So yes. that gives you better uh, you know, uh, uh, strengthening and better uh, uh, topographical changes towards the pupil. So that's why the epithelial side is marked. That's a small uh, degree zone marker which I have made. Uh, which. Uh, uh, basically, is going to be translated into a, a titanium instrument by Epsilon uh, Mateen, basically. And uh, now you put this uh, this tissue which has been cut against that. It's got multiple zones marked. So what I'm using here is a 4.5 millimeter zone, and we just put it against that mark. We we'll use a, just a normal Sinsky to mark it. And once we mark it, you can go ahead and just uh, cut it after marking it. So there you, you can see the tissue has been placed. Now you go ahead and mark it. Just using a mark. So we wanted 345 to 730. 345 it was aligned against and it's being marked by the 730 now. That will give you the exact length that you need on the patient's eye. So there is no need to you know pull it out and then uh, trim it as we were doing uh, initially. Now we have the exact sized uh, segments. And uh, this, this is uniform thickness segments, but uh, I am also doing now tapered and highly customized segments which can be individualized for each patient and we have actually just sent out a paper to JCRS for this. So that's basically it, uh, demonstrating that line and then cutting along that marked line which will give you the exact size of the segment that was going to be implanted. So this was a segment that was implanted and uh, uh, produce, to produce a flattening effect. Mm -hmm. We will be following this up with cross-linking also in this patient. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that's that's basically yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. You can switch over to the other theatre. Fantastic, Susan. I think you deserve a Nobel Prize for discovering this technique. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Fine, we can just. Uh, let's okay. Think uh, antibiotic codunga. Alla, we'll do it. Antibiotic codunga. Bisil kudungya, give a piece. Sir, bisil. Is it quality drink, na sampath? Sir. Up, put it. Ha, yeah, ma'am. Thanks. Doctor Niven, you are online, I think, but uh, we are not getting the camera feed from your uh, microscope. We are getting only from the outside. Uh, voice is audible, yeah, sir. DP. Yeah, uh, Niven's voice is not audible. Okay. Hello? Uh, on mic, mic, mic. Uh, Niven's mic on? Okay, we have uh, none other than the Tala. The Tala. Okay. The Vali Mai. Dr. Niven Madhivanan, who is a fantastic uh, both anterior and posterior segment surgeon. Over to Niven, please. Good morning, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can hear now. Yeah. Please, so uh, video on, please. So I'm going to demonstrate a case of a NS1 with a cortical cataract. She's a diabetic patient, so she's got those sticky fibers. I know if you can appreciate even the capsular excess, you can see those fibrous tags that are coming along. And also the pupils are not dilating fully. So 
So I'm going to operate an Apasami Leo machine. That's yeah. the latest Peiko machine using the in-focus lens, which is also an extended depth of focus lens. So as all FACO cases you know, getting the rexis right is a key step, visco. We have been using this uh, Galaxy Leo machine, really a fantastic machine, it's got a peristatic machine, but it's got uh, active fluidics as well, just similar to the Centurion. No. And the stability of the chamber is Le really incredible. Keratom. So we want to make a 2.8 millimeter keratome entry. So I always prefer a limbal incision, slightly going inside to get a nice square incision. In these cases, a diabetic cataracts, I think a good hydro is very, very important because to loosen out those cortical fibers. As you can see, already the pupil is starting to constrict and become floppy. Yeah. I think being a VR surgeon, sir, prefers to give me these cases in my life surgery. My first life surgery was also a diabetic cataract. A dialer. Sometimes it's better to rotate these cases to... on uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dialer? Dialer, uh, dialer or chopper, you know. <coughs> Short chopper, you know. Dialer is you know, shallow. Yeah. So once it's rotating, that means the cortical additions are broken now. So we're going to do the FACO one. I'm going to do the stop and chop technique only. Yeah, this, uh, I think machine and other uh, what do you call products of Apasami what are only the tip of the iceberg of what Apasami has contributed. Uh, and it's really a great loss for the entire ophthalmic fraternity and ophthalmic industry across the world, I would say. Normal Visco. And, uh, Sada, Sada Visco. Visco. Very humble and uh, it's, a, it's a blessing for all of us. Not only in Tamil Nadu but also in our country to have Apasami associates. And you know, the technology they are bringing is available, accessible, affordable. Prices is really fantastic. So you can see this uh, mission is really super comparable to any of the top class missions. Vivian? Yes. This, this mission, yes, sir. And this handpiece has to be recommended here because this is a patented design actually. So uh, right now this is one of the lightest hand pieces in the market weighing only 35 milligrams. This is the exact uh, weight of your pen that you hold and uh, it's got a six piece electric crystals. More routine hand stop and chop. Yeah, I prefer the stop and chop in these types of cataracts. The harder cataracts I prefer the direct chop or the modified direct chop which has already been demonstrated. I think Sauro already showed this beautiful stop and chop. So the key thing here is to have one and a half width depth here so that it is easier as you go deeper because only when you have a good depth, the cracking becomes easy. So once you have a good depth, go to the bottom of the crack and then just a mild thing, you can see the split and the epinucleus plate split. So the key is to go wider and deeper. So gently rotate it and make sure the crack is there on the other side also. So as I had already told, this is slightly softer cataract, so I am going to go with less power and FACO2. FACO2. What are the parameters you are using now? Oh. Yeah, make power less. Power 40 is enough. 300 vacuum. Power 40. Flow rate is about 35. And 40 is the FACO power on the occlusion micro So slightly lift it and you can see the crack. Yeah. Occlusion micro pulse. I think it's a very unique feature wherein once the tip gets occluded automatically, the micro pulse starts on. Yeah. So you can see here once you get the first fragment out, it is very easy. Like any other machine, the followability is in par and superior. The trick is to again stay in the center. Go to the. You can break it into smaller pieces also to reduce the amount of echo that you actually spend. Since the iris is slightly floppy, I am trying to be slightly even slower because I don't want the pupil to constrict further down my rexis margin. So one quadrant is done now. One more advantage of this machine is it's got both the gravity based fluidics and also the positive pressure infusion. So you can use both the advantages in this machine, either the bottle height or you can set the pump uh, which maintains the chamber thing. Lift it up, initiate the crack. As I can see it is slightly softer. 
So I'm just lifting it up and then initial. I think with the Mohan Raj and Chopper, any cataract, I think chopping is easy, whether it is soft, hard. So that's the beauty of the chopper. See, see, beauty of this machine, Nivya, and I'm, not, I'm sure you will agree with me, is that any cataract, whether it's a brown or a black cataract, whatever it is, it eats up like that. So beautiful, it is really a fantastic. It's become very stable and very you have to use the handpiece to see how light it is. Silly, isn't it? Or bit handpiece. Bali or bit handpiece. Kadma, kind of drops like port 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 injection yes, they have so a for it. And if you see, it has an inbuilt recording also. So they have a see, camera that is there. So you have an inbuilt recording that can be done in the machine. So that's the Epini play sheet. Well, it's on the machine. Anga panna pora, ra? Inga panna pora. Na? So I have the Epini play sheet out. You are customer. Chee, iru kumayde. You are using the by manual or what? Yes, sir. I am also a by manual. By manual. I think Kumar doctors already said all the youngsters are using the by manual, so I'll stick to that. Like Kumar so said, funny. all younger surgeons use her. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I think Sujata ma'am is saying all retina surgeons prefer by manual. Ah, that also is there. I think it's the comfort of every surgeon, so there's no right or no, wrong. No, no. Surgeons sure, younger than 50, they'll uh, use by manual. <laughs> From that you can, uh, you know, what's their age. <laughs> <laughs> and also sometimes in these small pupils, well, we, it I was not there. When we started, it was not it there. It helps you push the, yes, exactly. So it helps you push the thing. Push the iris back, you know. So as you can see, these sticky cortexes, I always prefer to hold it, bring the fiber to the center and then initiate aspiration. I don't aspirate it there because you can hold on to the iris sometimes. So be see, gentle. What, what has happened is because there is a, you had an accidental hydrodelineation. That's the reason why the epinucleus is uh, staying back. So this is a this thing, sometimes you know in the epinucleus... What height are you talking Raju. What height are you talking about? So just catch these leading fibers. Who is comes in? Engineer. Engineer. Even have you activated that uh, active fluidics in this, or you are just using the uh, gravity? You are the, you are the engineer. Come from. Gravity only. 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 You can probably see the difference between the active and the passive one if you put put it on. Yes, sir. Yeah, there is a slide. It's actually, uh, and these diabetic cataracts. Nari, is also uh, your case elastic was fantastic. In such low vacuum, it's very good. So sometimes they have a you can catch the PC. Really nice. I was quite you surprised such low temperature. Usually we keep it at 40, 50. You yes, we were operating at 20. You can strip those cortical fibers. Hmm? Which bimanual are you using, uh, Dr. Nimi? I think more than just one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is Ampasami. Ramya Salaim. Okay, okay. okay. And everything is Ampasami here. Wow. Everything is up for 2.8 always, standard. okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's more nice. Yeah, yeah, correct. But so you know, with 2.8, so using a Z, almost 20 lens. vacuums, is really surprising how <laughs> you really must try so it. So, which lens are you planning? Even the yellow on which is a Goyubis. Yeah, they are very small. You have to face it up and down. Okay, so that it pushes, pushes the. So, what really fantastic. The first, what happens? And they also have the. Uh, uh, if you're to the sideways, it has to go like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. correct, correct you point. Have Supra have it's, a Supra push. it's pushing the. Yeah. So this uh, we are using the in focus yeah, lens, yeah. Sir, so this is also an ID off lens. So I should yeah, recommend yeah. here this lens was yeah. way out amazing, in the market amazing. five years yeah, back. I was very impressed. So they are way ahead of time and before competition. So this has got a central 1.4 millimeter zone where the ad is and which helps the. Uh, the yeah. elongated focus. You have gone finished that Omicron, Omicron is over there also, no? Bangalore? Okay, Still is there. I mean so I also prefer to do the injection of the IO under no. saline. My uncle got admitted in Bangalore. He got admitted in Manipal and he just came out. He needed oxygen and all that. Sometimes everybody the in the family got. picture is also very clear. This, this that you can do it under saline. Yeah, it caught everybody. So yeah. Everybody got the in focus lens. It's better in a way, I think. It's like natural zone in the center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this zone is what is responsible for the elongated ah. focus. 
Yeah. So it's got an ad up to yeah, plus yeah, yeah. three. Better do that, sir. So we have done a lot of studies. I think the studies were collaborated yeah, no, between Mohan Rajan sir and Anurag sir, and after that, my BP was fluctuating a lot. It was very high. Then after that, it became very low. So I uh, the go and check. I did a yoga. Yoga was here, normal. And the intermediate patient. Some thrombosis is there. So as you can see here. After vaccination, so this is a really beautiful. As the only thing I would like to highlight is yeah, that uh, we should all know the difference between the IDOF lenses and the multifocal lenses. So they do give excellent intermediate Thank vision. I need, I need and there is some sort of compromise in the near vision. <laughs> but when bilaterally done, and you can match the power. Only Centurion or eighty percent or eighty-five percent of the patients are able to be glass dependent. I'm going to start okay. using for life surgery. Mohan wanted me to do this. Focus, in fact. Yeah. I present the paper also yes. in AP. Light really coming from. Beautiful lens. There are no halos, yeah. no coating. Yeah. Yeah. The range is uh, very Loose good. Panna. From forty yeah. centimeters onwards, it works brilliantly. Yes. So we have all the studies. Really the really and, uh, uh, the contrast vision is good. In terms of the PCO is also very less. Could switch because I have a. So I always used to do in our. Kuncha front lens. This is the only lens which is called. No, I'm being me. All other lenses are out, out of <laughs> And they were here for <laughs> almost 5 <laughs> years, so it's not something new. And, uh, and the PCO rates are also almost <laughs> new in these lenses. So I think everybody has <laughs> to give a try of these lenses <laughs> to know how beautifully it works. I give a big round of applause to Akka Sami and Rimian also. So I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Mohan Rajan and Sujata Mohan for this wonderful opportunity because I started my career here doing the first rate <laughs> surgery. And the entire staff has been here, so it feels like being away from home, you don't feel the difference between my uh, OT theatre and this theatre. So it's like an entire big family, the people around me as you can see. I don't have to ask for anything, I didn't bring my own set of instruments, so thank you to them. And at last, not the least, I'd like to dedicate this Madhu surgery to the Paak Paak memories of Mr. Hapa Madhu, Sami, Madhu, late Hapa Sami. Madhu, Madhu, so Madhu. it was this visionary thing that we are still Madhu, continuing. Madhu. He was the pioneer who made me to start the Hapa Sami Surgical Training Centre. So thank you once again for the entire thing and this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Nivian Madhivanan. That was a wonderful presentation and uh, you were great enough to talk about uh, Mr. Apasami. Thank you so much. I'm a Susan, Susan Mohan. Yeah. No, no. Dr. Sujata, are you going to operate or is it Lalit's uh, surgery? No, no, no. I am going, going to operate. This patient I am going to do uh, using a signature pro and uh, putting a synergy lens for this patient. Uh, but Mohan has now switched the camera. Okay. I think uh, what a fantastic surgery, Susan. It was really fantastic. The Judah, the SFT and the case. Really so innovative you are and the results are so good and uh, yeah, yeah, just want to work with the kids and the... Okay, uh, so thank you so much uh, Mohan Rajan oh, okay. sir and Sujata ma'am for giving this opportunity, it was wonderful uh, and it was great to have shown the both the cases. Uh, um, both of these cases are being mm -hmm. done from long at our centre of course. So okay, as we've done about almost 300 plus cases now oh. and with great results. So uh, anybody who wants to start adopting this technique, yeah, please feel free to reach out and be happy to help you start. My soft it's not hard. Like that. You died, of course, there is no introduction at all. <laughs> it's been going on for so long. So thank you once again, sir. Thanks a lot, Susan. I think uh, uh, Manoj will do the honours for Susan. And uh, yeah, this uh, shawl is a recycled shawl. You have to give it back. But the book is not recycled. <laughs> <laughs> this is a color atlas of the retina optic nerve from Rajan I can. Fantastic. I hope it will be useful for you. And uh, wait, 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 wait. Saurabh. Uh, come, come. Saurabh Lutra from Bilaspur, Central India. No. How he did this? Uh, come here, man. Stay here, stay here. Saurabh Lutra, you know, he doesn't require any. This is a of fantastic surgery. Uh, he started from Chennai and st stop and chop in Bilaspur. <laughs> <laughs> hey, great guy, great guy. So coming all the way from Bilaspur, it's not so easy. And you know, he, he's always with the phone call away. He, he's here with us. Give a big hand for Saurabh. Come, Susan. And of course, Narendra Shetty. What a lovely surgery with only 22 millimeters vacuum. 
and uh, the silent chop. Here, right, Shetty from They're doing what wonderful work, research, academics, and you know, surgeries. Nama. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Virat Kohli is down. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is Kumar? Thank you, sir. Kumar, you, uh, uh, come. Kumar, you come. Kumar, doctor, of course. What a lovely surgery. Great guy, Kumar. Very innovative, you know, always smiling. That's the uh, one thing I like about him. Great arm. Please give the shawl back. Mela black, Mela black. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. Yeah. Of course, Nivian. Yes, yes, yes. Almost done. Give me a superstar of Oftawaldi. So many innovations he has done. Great guy. So proud of this fellow. Yeah. So Adit, we have done. Yeah. Come, Adit, you also come. Come on, hey, come here. Don't worry, shawl is yours only. <laughs> <laughs> Blue chal. Tell Amar your technique. Blue chal. <laughs> Are you ready? Susan. Saturnal is my class part of the MLC. Akash, yeah, yeah. ask him. Thank you, sir, for honoring everybody. We are Thank running you. short Thank of you. time. We go on to Dr. Sujata Mohan. Yeah, we are running yeah. late by schedule. I request Mr. Uh, bug up. Uh, Thank you. Nice to see Dr. Sujata Mohan on the frame. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ravi Shankar. So, I'm just starting this case. Like I told you before, I'm going to start the dua with the Signature Pro and uh, putting a synergy lens for this patient. Uh, this patient, uh, this cataract, uh, I'm not really able to judge. It looks more, uh, looks more like a, do it somehow cataract. I don't think chopping and all that is going to work in this. Uh, let me see. Near light pangma. Kuncha light pang. Light pang. So I always uh, like to bend my own uh, needles, make my own cystitome. And uh, majority of the times I use this. Utrata I use only when I have uh, mature cataract. I like to make a little bit smaller excess in uh, premium lenses because I don't want the lens to jump out. So, this is about I think around 4.8 to 5 millimeters. And uh, you can see the good hydro dissection. Any particular reason for a little smaller excess, madam? Yeah, particularly in premium lenses, what happens is uh, if the lens moves outside the bag, then um, it's, uh, it becomes very, the centration, de there you can be a mild decentration, centration, yeah. yeah. Better centration, yes. Illumination increase, please. You don't do a hydro delineation, Dr. Sujata? No, no, no. I do hydro dissection. If by chance there is hydro delineation, I don't mind. Like I told you, this is quite a soft cataract because more of an uh, ASCPSC cataract. So I don't think it will be very easy to chop. Illumination max, please. 85. So 
so some fibrosis is here it's a very soft cataract yeah not my uh, it's not ideal for either here nor there do it somehow cataract what is the vacuum that you are using 500, 500 vacuum uh, flow rate is 45 45, 45. Good that you are able to hold the cataract with the soft cataract with so much of vacuum. Vacuum is okay. I think the FACO power should be very much less. Mm. Salen on the corner, please. 30%. So we have only a 30% FACO power. Vacuum is very important in this because we need to. Okay, it's folding. Yeah. Is the four right now? Yeah. Excellent, you have brought it out very nicely, beautifully. This um, uh, this machine is a dual pump machine, both venturi and uh, as well as uh, peristaltic is there. I prefer to use more uh, for venturi uh, parameters. Using venturi. Excellent controls, Jata. Fantastic. Very nice. We can see the chamber is quite stable. Can you switch uh, with your foot pedal itself between the venturi and the peristaltic or how does how does it happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can. It's on the, it's on the uh, machine. Monitor. Mm. Monitor. Monitor. We have to do it manually, sir. From the board. <laughs> so the mon at the monitor. Yeah. The hydro dissection was so brilliant that the entire cortex has come like a one piece. CP? So normally what I do is I try to flush out all these cortical bits. Okay. So like a saline the wash. These fibers are very uh, sticky fibers I think. Yeah. This actually it's more like an alchemic pearl. It's not, there's no cortex there. It just needs a polishing. So now I'm inserting a synergy lens. The advantage of this lens is a combination of diffractic uh, with uh, EDOF. So it gives, supposed to give continuous vision. Very good for near as well as intermediate and uh, distant vision. Of course, uh, any uh, lens which has rings, halos are likely to be there. I think so that has to be counseled to the patient. Um, but other than that, I think the performance of these lenses is uh, really good. The other advantage is that uh, the, uh, they, they can even see very well near vision even in dim light. So this is one of those uh, newer uh, generation lenses, plus, plus one, which are uh, really good for the patient, provided they understand the, uh, that there will be some amount of halos and glare, 
இஃப் தே ஆர் டிரைவிங் இன் த நைட் மா ஃப்ளஷ் பண்ணுமா கொஞ்சம் ப்ரெஸ் பண்ணி விட்டுடுங்க ஃபாக் ஆகலனா சோ நார்மலி ஐ திங்க் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் us would like to remove the viscoelastic from underneath the lens yes ma'am முடிச்சாச்சு பேஷன் you can block it here other ones so it's a, it's a very good lens gives very good it's a, it's a, actually you've got a violet filter that's also very Beautiful. important yes, aspect yes, of yes. Uh, synergy lens so i ah, think but this is one of my go to lenses if the patient can afford it and can understand that might be a little bit of uh, glare and halos because it's an excellent combination of eed off with the diffractive so it gives continuous vision and gives good quality of vision as well Fantastic. wonderful wonderful Fantastic surgery give a big hand for sujatha very versatile uh, surgeon sujatha is not only cataract glaucoma lasik fake eye oil she is also going to demonstrate a uh, right. rail today on the side parenga glue dye oil everything she does i can see this synergy there's a advantage is a chromaline technology as i told you the violet filter which reduces the night scatter i have seen it all uh, devan can you put the next case ma next case please no. uh. yeah next pay, case already the catalyst has been done and uh, over to the guy was guy who is really making a mark in chennai drops. and south india drops drops thank you much <coughs> clean panna lalit thank you thanks lalit good morning sir good lalit morning lalit kumar sohan raj good morning everybody lalit kumar so give a big hand for lalit kumar guy who is really fantastic lovely surgeon Kanadi. i have learned Beautiful everything setup. from sir i have learned Kanadi. everything from sir <laughs> so no, more importantly i think his Kanadi. dad Kanadi. is a Kanadi. very very Kanadi. close Kanadi. friend hmm? well wisher for all of us and we had no the fans. wonderful honor and privilege of training lalit here in feco in rajanaikar long time back but he has exceeded all our expectations and gone beyond ah, next then we have to keep baskar there yeah. can everybody hear me Yes huh? Lalit good morning good Dr Prakash here Good morning sir yeah, good this morning This will be the final fake case and after that we go on to the DMEC So I'd like to thank Rajanaikar for giving me this opportunity and also Biotech, Biotech. for getting me let, let use their lens I'm going to use the Optiflex Trio which is the trifocal lens I think there's a paradigm shift in the way we treat, treat presbyopia here after I think I, I have stopped using multifocal lenses for a long long time now I've totally shifted to trifocals whether it's an imported one or an Indian one there are really good lenses available ma eda do na parvala ma scissors kodunga ma scissors kodunga scissors parvala theek is illa idhuk 11 blade ha ragu so this is a grade 2 cataract which i have already the I'm femto using centurion no using the centurion centurion okay already femto catalyst has been done catalyst has been done ma or light avana kaamikira adukulliye paarenga seriya ma லைட் தெரியுதாம்மா கொஞ்சம் டேபிள் அப்மா டேபிள் அப் டேபிள் அப் டேபிள் ஓ யா ஓகேமா சைடு போர்ட் ஏபிள் டு see that kindly shift to the microscope ah, Ravi. thank you we've got ah, it thank okay. you okay you can see that femto catalyst has been done already ma light ko la pa can see the sextant side port incision ma six quadrants and also the rexis can we reduce the zoom a little bit down yeah, so that yeah we'll we'll reduce it is it fine now ma, what is yeah, yeah, sound ma'am only it's good sound 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 focus. focus tada ye thookenga ma i'll focus it sir just give me a minute is it focused now wait 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 no lalit it's, it's not in focus it's now not. it's in focus yeah. perfect perfect yeah. perfect so i'm just making the first side port incision i generally make two side port incisions uh with the femto cataract i generally avoid making incisions because either it is too corneal or it's scleral so i just stick on to the capsulotomy and the nucleotomy part so you can see that the capsule is beautifully uh, 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 one, cut one minute one minute yeah but uh, what is the sound ma murli entry 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 ah adu alla alla adu rendu irukum orange and blue what is the grade of the cataract la this is grade 2 sir grade 2 okay you can see see whenever you see a denser cataract you will be actually seeing a little bit of more air bubbles and it becomes a little bit more brownish in color 
so my usual incision is a clear corneal tunneled incision with seals well so i use a crescent a 2.6 crescent i just go into the cornea a little and then make the entry with the 2.2 ah, please reduce that sound please 2.2 ah. keratome no. Sorry, sorry, Lil. It's a free-floating capsulotomy. You can see that. You know, I'm just trying to. You want the retro, the retro there? It's fine, sir. I want the retro. Okay. Yeah, 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 so yeah. retro. Ma. Uh, okay. A little Better bit now? of side. Uh, this thing also. Make it uh, 30, 70. I'm just doing a very gentle hydro dissection. That is very, very important. 30, 70. Okay. Autoflex is 70. Yeah. And uh, peripheral light is 30. Okay. 30, 70. The, the key is you have to do a very gentle hydro dissection because there are a lot of air bubbles which are already trapped behind the... Yeah. This is perfect. I have just did a hydro and I am just going to slowly... Uh. <laughs> Little focus, yeah. yeah. Yeah, fine. This rotating is always a challenge in all these cases, is not it? Really. No, 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 it's not a challenge at all. You have to be a little more careful. That's all. Because yeah. of the hydro... It rotated so well. Especially um, uh, the uh, brown cataracts and all. Lot of gas bubbles will be underneath. So, so you can have hydro rupture. You have to be a little careful about that. This is a 2.2 millimeter incision. I'm just going to, you know, clear the. Actually, it is slightly more denser than I thought. It's actually a grade 3. Chopma. Chopper, chopper. Can you talk about the active sentry? Yeah. So this is the active sentry handpiece. The advantage with the active sentry handpiece is it has sensors in its uh, in the handpiece itself, which makes sure that the chamber stability is outstanding. You can see that how beautifully it is cracked, it went through and through. You can see here, see I am just holding this piece. Makunjo, vacuum evler. You can see that it is cracking so well, yeah, yeah. through and through. It looks like a nice pizza. Absolutely. I would call it a cake, sir. Centering, centering. <laughs> is it centered? That side, that side. It's a, yeah. it's a piece of cake for you. <laughs> So it's a slightly dense cataract, so we have to make sure you crack up to the posterior plate. Otherwise, you know, removing these pieces might be a little difficult. Yeah. For the active sentry, as Sir spoke, there is something on the screen which is called ASM, Active Surge Mitigation. You, once you finish the surgery, you can check as to how many times it has actively come up, you know, unknowingly, knowingly, so, so that it saves your life. Get one piece of the… yeah, sure, sir. No, no, that side, that side. Is it okay now? Towards the system. Yeah, it's okay now, Lalit. Yeah, correct. Has the uh, femto gone up to the posterior? The no, actually it's not, sir. The center prayer part is still not cracked. Yeah. yeah, but you can see that, you know, there's a small... I'm just going to lift this up and eat it. Yeah, that's it. Ma quadrant, ma? Change, change. Centering, ma. Is it okay now, sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah perfect, perfect. It has actually gone behind. If you see that, because you can see the gas bubbles are coming up. That means it's gone behind. I think the only thing is center alone because it's a center sparring software, the 6.0 on the catalyst, which uh, the center alone it will be a little uh, attached there. Are you suspecting a small PCR there, Lalit? Yeah, I think huh? there is a small ZE. Ah. No, sir, it is the nothing, nothing, sir. Yeah, it's good, it's good. It's, yeah. good, no, it's, it's not ZE, it's, it's, it's a, actually the fibrose capsule. Yeah, fibrose capsule, it's a quite a dense cataract. So, can I get a little bit of viscoat? And one more thing which I have stopped, uh, started using recently is the uh, combination of chondroitin sulphate and sodium hyaluronate made by Biotech. It's a beautiful, uh, like you know, just like the uh, viscose Bio. by Alcon. It's called ah. Biohylor LVD. Bio beautiful. It coats the endothelium so well and I usually use the so, uh, double soft shell technique. So when I have injected a little bit of uh, Biohylor LVD and I'm also injecting sodium, our usual HPMC, just below that. Okay, that coats the endothelium very well and uh, you know the corneas are crystal clear the next day. That's the beauty about using uh, a, a viscoelastic like this. So, especially when you have a denser cataract, it works very well. Why did you use this uh, visco now, uh, Lalit? What is the. Sir, I usually use, remove one piece, sir. 
and then i inject so that you know it coats the endothelium well and and it's always you know easy once the one piece comes out of the bag it's always easy to finish that cataract okay so basically to protect the endothelium yes more. sir i use it in all my patients sir whether it's a grade 1 grade 2 doesn't matter i want crystal clear corneas immediately because i remove the patch in like 2 hours or i don't even patch most of the times so when the patient goes out of the hospital he should feel that there was a wow effect so that is why i use this in almost all my patients i think it's a good uh, practice to use this uh, viscoat or uh, whatever uh, the dispersive viscoelastic so product, product the endothelium now and then top it up yeah definitely it's a slightly thick epinucleus here which i am just uh, struggling a little bit with but i think i'm yeah that's it yeah, that's the end of the case there. super you can see when you want to do a multifocal lens see most of us get rexes like this most of the times but once in a while you know if your if your patient can afford it then I, when you have the feeling that you should give the best to your patient then from nothing like femto cataract you can see that the rexes is so nice round well centered well centered yes beautifully centered when you're using a trifocal lens centration matters a lot so if you if you're going to use the femto cataract for the same it makes a big difference the quality uh, uh, the quality of vision is going to be very very nice fantastic lalit beautiful so this was a very nice fibrosed capsule and i'm just the uh, one we have to be a little careful when we are doing the cortical aspiration also the reason being the cortex is cut flush to your yeah. I was I'm talking just doing about the, a little uh, bit of my this thing also. What happens is in the femto it cuts straight. Ma polish ma. So you don't get that edge. Yeah. Uh, like the manual one, you will not get the edge of the anterior capsule. You that won't, is the you cortical won't have fibers. those fibers which will you know which you will be able to catch and remove. So I'm just doing a little bit of cortic capsular polishing here. Ma on. Visc uh, the visco which you know cortex la visco la veing. Unjo you know cortex inger ke. Visco, visco. Ah, visco. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, you can put ma. Yes, yes. Uh, the focus is not clear, Lalit. Here. Yeah. Is it okay down. now? Is down, it okay down. now? Yeah, yeah, much better, no, no. much better. Much better now. Yeah. There are little bit of cortex here which I want to remove and. What about the cortex on the right side? I'll just use a. No, that's not uh, this thing, sir. not cortex it is a little bit of stromal hydration has happened so no no at the 6 o'clock 6 o'clock there is no cortex no no sir. cortex is there okay looks like cortex from here uh -huh. off ma continuous off fine can i have very good lens? surgery give a big hand for lalit what a lovely surgery i am usually used to the uh, lensex system by alcon So this was the first time I've used the catalyst machine, but believe me, it's no, a beautiful. No, that day you used no. Ah, uh, one. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. So it's a beautiful machine. It gives you a. It's very easy to use. So this is the Optiflex Trio lens which I'm going to use. It's already loaded by the this thing. This is the medicinal injector, which is a push type of injector, and they have come up with the uh, with an injector which you can you know you can use it as a push type or screw type. The Optiflex Trio is a beautiful trifocal lens. it's hydrophobic it's hydrophobic lens and uh, it has a near add power of 3.5 and intermediate add power of 1.82 okay so that gives you a intermediate vision at around 70 to 75 cm and a near add power of 3.5 gives you a good, excellent near vision at around uh, 40 cm so it's one of the most ideal lenses which gives you a good continuous range of vision that's the advantage <coughs> so that's the end of the surgery the, the optiflex trio toric is also there no? yeah optiflex trio toric has been recently launched and anybody especially when you're going for a trifocal or a multifocal lens anybody who has an astigmatism of more than 0.75 please go to the online calculator and if the online calculator says that you have to use a, a a uh, toric lens please go ahead and use a toric lens don't hesitate to do that absolutely so that the end of the surgery you can very see good. here very good that the wound seals so nicely i don't have to do anything you know that's the advantage of using this kind of an incision excellent you don't Lali. have to hydrate rehydrate do anything i think i think uh, yeah the lens uh, yeah i think it was not 
It's not in the bag. I'll just push the lens inside the bag. Just a minute, huh? I think yeah. one haptic is one out. One haptic it is outside. I'm just... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it went in now. It went in now. I think that because of the little bit of stromal hydration which I've had at the main wound. Yeah, so you can see that the lens is so beautifully centered. Very nice. It has a slightly large central zone. How much is the central zone? It's 1.12 millimeters, so it's a very forgiving lens. lens. Uh, you know, right even if you have a slightly larger angle kappa, okay. you can get away with it. And the other thing is, um, the okay. diffractive okay. zone okay. is also around uh, 4 millimeters. So it works beautifully well in all light conditions. Lens, so that's the advantage. You can see the wound is very nicely sealed. And that's the end of the surgery. And I thank you all for uh, listening to me patiently and I thank, thank you. Mohan Rajan sir thank for giving you. me this opportunity. Very big round of applause to Lalit. What a lovely Thanks. surgery. I just want to mention, acknowledge the uh, the products which are made by the biotech. Not only the Optiflex Trio but even the uh, Icryl lens, the Icryl Toric lenses. They are all very good lenses. Very good, very biocompatible. The, uh, the Toric lenses are very stable as well and uh, uh, really fantastic lenses. Biotech is making beautiful products. Uh, lovely products, products, equivalent to the international class and I think uh, it's very good. And in fact, I was one of the guys, earliest Sir, guys with Biotech when, when they started manufacturing all these lenses. So it's really very good lenses now. The Optiflex Trio, yeah. Beautiful Excellent lens. session, uh, Dr. Mohan. Fantastic surgery, Dr. Lalit. Thank, thank you, thank you. you. So Thanks much. all the panelists. We go on to the cornea session now, the refractive. Now we have the RIL, RIL by well, none other than switching R. on R. the camera to the other theatre. Yes, yes. I, uh, we would be honouring the panelists over here, uh, Dr. Mohan Rajan sir. Yes, please. I request Professor yes. Dr. Radha Krishnan to oh. come forward and honour all the panelists, please. <laughs> Professor Dr. S. Venkatesh, please come forward, sir. It's a privilege to have you here on this wonderful morning. Thank you, thank you, Vengadesh. Thank you, thank you very much. Dr. Ramesh Dure Rajan. Thank you, Ramesh. Sir, shawl, please. Dr. D.P. Prakash. With whole trip, cut to Withhold rape and the Ravi. Sir, yes, sir. A shawl, a book, a lama, a video, a little post on Angla. I won't do what you do, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I sincerely request all the. Uh, and Dr. Atik Sheikh. Ravi. Yes, sir. I want yes. all of them to go the through the book patient. definitely and definitely. give me a feedback, a constructive criticism. They, they will call you. They Please. will read, uh, look at the book oh, and call you, sir. Ready. Let him wait. Thank you, Dr. Atik. Thanks all the panelists. Uh -huh. I think Dr. Meena Lakshmapati would stay would back call? there for the cornea session and, and I invite Professor Dr. Vasantha uh, to head the panel and uh, Dr. Kalpana Suresh to join the panel for the cornea session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Over Wonderful to the cornea session. session. A big round of applause to all the surgeons in the first session. All the big round of applause, please. Okay, okay. We go on to the RIL by Sujata. As you know, the refractive implantable lens is uh, done by the Apaswami again. It's a beautiful lens. It's a hydrophilic, fake eye oil. Can I talk? Okay, and uh, uh, is yeah. it uh, mic is uh, on? Mic is on? Uh -huh. no okay, problem. okay. No this problem. patient no has a minus 14.5 with minus 5.5 yeah. cylinder. Yeah. And uh, it's really wonderful to get a lens which can uh, be implanted in this patient. He's also ga got a very large uh, diameter 12.6. So we are putting a 13.5 uh, dia lens for this okay. patient. This looks straight, Akash. Nearer. Hydrate. Anna, the keela. When the kunjjo or thinna bitter. The cortex. Light coming. Ah, cortex. What about uh, loose? Panna, loose. Panna. What about uh, basket? Nearer. Paranga. Basket is waiting. Ready. Just look straight. Two. Ah. Calisto. 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 Okay. Well. Table height in increase. So we are using the calisto to mark the. The horizontal diameter. Yeah. 
and the chart ruka usually the placement is 0 180 mm. okay center ma callistone yeah. yeah we are using the callistone now okay okay ma okay so the incision as well as the placement will be the same okay four off and flush flush please flush the cornea thank you a pv put on a near path cash don't move so I'm making two uh, side port incisions um, one is almost in the middle the next one I'll be making slightly superior on the inferior side touch upon way don't don't move I'm using um, Intracameral xylocard, also high density viscoelastic, cohesive viscoelastic. Theta 2, he wanted in theta 2. Here. Okay, now so the. No problem. I'm making a 0 180 degree entry, the placement is also. Yeah. Hmm? 2.8 2.8 I'm using 2.8 but I like to in enlarge it a little bit because I don't want any wound distortion so if the wound distortion actually the wound doesn't close so it's uh, okay to have a slightly larger incision but uh, lens please uh, lens is being loaded now talk about the lens a little okay the, the lens so loading you can show madam the uh, lens loading can you show Pantia Anand. Anand will talk. So, uh, it's a hydrophilic based yeah. lens, right, Sujata? Yeah, it's a hydrophilic lens, it's yeah. It's not a colamer lens like uh, um, ICL, oh. but most of the Indian lenses are hydrophilic uh, lenses with a colamer co uh, coating. A preoperative uh, checkup, I think, in terms of. Look straight, please. Neera Parakash. Okay. okay. So I'm going to push in the this. Is, sometimes uh, you know okay. some. So the, uh, anything in terms of insertion of the ICL when you're doing it, do you have to do it in one shot? Do you do it very gently? How do you make sure that it doesn't flip? Yeah. See, this lens is a little bit of a thicker lens, so you it doesn't flip. That's an advantage with this lens. Okay. Whereas you know ICL and uh, IPCL particularly, you know, it's a very thin Nothing. lens. Okay. So very easily it can flip. So you'll have to look at the markings. Most of them have the markings, so you see I've tucked in the uh, inferior central, haptic. Central hole also. Thank you. This does not have... Yes, central hole is there. It's not there. It's not there. Usually. Okay. And most of... You, you, no, none of the uh, surgeons now do a pre-operative PI. Yeah, no, no. So you just rotate it into the axis yeah. that you want. Thank you. It was the... Uh, I see this. They I have a very large hole there. in the side. Ah, sorry. Okay. This, it, uh, usually it comes with the central That's hole. Nice. Okay. But in this, there's a very large in the... I'll just go to the lacy koti. Central hole. Who's who's uh, assisting that? Raju will be there. Yeah, most ICLs do have a uh, central. Oh, yeah. so uh, yes, yes. Salain on the cornea, please. But I feel that uh, insertion, I think, is different, especially if you need to uh, avoid wound distortion. A larger wound, about three millimeters, yeah. is a good idea. Yeah. I d I don't like to distort the wound. See, now it's come out well, yes. but I think Very in nice. this patient we might have to do. We might have to do a PI. Okay. Because uh, the usually it comes with a central hole, but okay. fantastic. Very, very well. Light full very, of very stable is what I find uh, yeah, hydrophilic yeah. uh fakic lenses to be. Uh, anything you would do for the preoperative workup, especially in terms of white to white, because that's an important part yeah, of deciding yeah, white the to size. White, yes, absolutely. Uh, if initially we were doing uh, op scan. Okay. But nowadays, uh, nobody has op scan and it's uh, almost obsolete. Okay. So I'm using the digital caliper. Digital caliper. Yeah. Okay. And I always check 
uh, 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 with other uh, parameters okay but unfortunately most of them give an erroneous reading so i go only by the digital caliper and do you oh. have a correction factor sujata that you oh. put do you put a correction factor for the white to white no no i must align on please align on marli so uh, oh. i i think most uh, uh, most uh, doctors have a doubt about the uh, fakey kayol measurement especially the white to white yeah. uh, 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 you were correct absolutely correct sujata when you said that initially the op scan was probably the best measurement it was the most accurate but now since the access has come down uh, we have only options of pentacam or or the cirrus or the digital caliper between the three what do you feel or do you take an average how do you actually do it no no i for digital i use only the digital caliper i go only by the digital caliper and i like to oversize it by about 1 mm if that is possible okay but sometimes when um, when it is in the cusp area no when they want to give a larger lens i prefer to go for a, a lower size lens because i find you know sometimes the lens is too large saline on the cornea okay. too large very difficult to insert and the uh, anterior chamber becomes very shallow okay. so all these problems are not there if you are uh, undersizing the lenses a little bit but the problem is sometimes uh, the vaulting can be very less vaulting can, uh, can be less. very okay. less that's again a problem because when the vaulting is very less the chance of cataract development is more but uh, i don't know um, i would go for a smaller lens okay and uh, I've, i've never had to exchange uh, a, a small lens never had to i've had never to exchange a small lens because now because of the central hole the incidence of cataract also is very less we don't uh, see cataracts anymore got it uh, and uh, almost all the lenses have come with the central hole this i'm surprised because i've used these lenses before i'm surprised how these people have not uh, got the central hole in this patient All this right. particular lens we will get an input from uh, the RIL Appasami uh, team but uh, in terms of i think placement so you can see near parpa akash idu podu calisto podu so we just checking with the calisto just to see the, the marks yeah the marks i made only for so that the it's a live surgery and you can't see the calisto centration so this is very well centered nice uh what is the best way of avoiding parallax sujatha how do you do that because usually mm. what happens is one uh, one of the yeah. markings is uh, center the other is not so do you do eyeball it with single eye how do you avoid the it's very parallax? very difficult because Wait, what i do is there are three marks so i try to bring the parallax error within those three marks that's only best thing that we can do but sometimes you in spite of yeah. that yeah. some of the lenses so they uh, they have quite a large parallax like error because you see in this lens it's perfectly in center very nice so this is uh, really it's good so very, very, it's a very old tissue with uh, <laughs> with higher count so i'm just going to wait and see you can necessary to do it even uh, for a upper tissue but if you take one uh, really important thing is they are actually fairly tolerant to a bit of concentration to about 5 6 degrees yeah, yeah, yeah. the vision actually exactly. doesn't get really well yeah, yeah, yeah. that much affected unless it's a high vision to do it so akash light vision therida thank you lens exchange okay fantastic dr sujata any of the panelists if you have any Questions. Okay, uh, there are. See, Dr. Sendel has asked me, how do you exchange these lenses? So this lens exchange is probably yeah, the easiest so because the they are extremely flexible lenses. What you need to do is dilate the uh, eyes, lift up uh, one of the haptics, both the haptics, and using a hand, uh, hand over hand technique, just pull them out to the same 2.8 millimeter incision. And then you can go ahead with either replacing the same lens or if there is cataract, you can do a cataract surgery. So the greatest advantage of these lenses are very easily explantable lenses. Yeah, but any problem you let us know. And uh, how is the uh, lens loading technique, madam? Lens is loading technique, no, it is very, very similar to a regular uh, right eye oil uh, loading. It's not like uh, ICL oh, okay. where you have to pull through and all that. Just okay, like a regular hydrophilic acrylic, no, that's how you load it. Drop patch. Patik oh. sulpit. Actually, Thank all you. these measurements and all, no, that only is more important. When no, you're, uh, you have a count generally of around uh, uh, more than 2,500 is uh, is an acceptable count. Uh, with with a young tissue, surgery. you might have more than 3,000, but even with a mic, mic, you will have 3,000 odd counts. Put mic, man. Put touch. Yeah. Yeah. After all your. Okay, sir. I'd like to welcome Dr. Bhaskar from Shankar Netralia. He's a very prolific surgeon, excellent ocular surface spe specialist. OOKP he does has done so many hundreds of them, and uh, now he's going to demonstrate DMEC. DMEC is one of the newer uh, endothelial keratoplasty, 
and it uh, replaces the exact tissue that we need to replace. Uh, technically, a little bit difficult, but let's see um, Pascal in action now. Morning, everyone. This is a patient with uh, fugue dystrophy with uh, pseudofecal corneal decompensation. We are starting the procedure now. You want retro elimination? No, not required. Mark, just epithelium. Yeah, just relax, sir. Ah, yeah, that's it. Okay, sorry. This is fine. Okay. Okay. Just to give an introduction, Dr. Baskar has already prepared the graft, and he's prepared an eight millimeter DMEC graft. Marking that. So we're just marking the area that we need to do the dismetal excess. Mark. That's all right. I will be using intra pilot now. Are able to see? Is the uh, uh, are the panels able to see? The audience yeah. able to see? Yeah, okay. it's uh, it's seen well. So Anand, if you can tell something about the donor age, uh, what Baskar has uh, used to prepare. Actually, uh, Baskar prepared three uh, tissues. Yeah. <laughs> so One was 35, the other was 74, and now he has settled with 64. Okay. So That's great. Because the, the the 35 is scrolled up too much. So we have used the 64 tissue and um, uh, so this uh, first has yes, constricted the pupil as you can see that's very important when you're doing a DSEC or a DMEC, constricting the pupil particularly for DMEC because it does it can slip under the iris. So he has constricted the pupil <coughs> and um, so now he is uh, probably starting with. We have made a side port, side port and yeah. I'm going to be doing a PI after injecting pylo, a little bit more pylo. So I think PI is compulsory, right, Bhaskar, in all all DMEC uh, cases. It's not compulsory. There are people who do do away with the PI, but then uh, uh, the risk of uh, a pupillary block becomes higher. Got it. Bhaskar, you want to remove the epithelium, or you are able to see well with? So far, mm -hmm. uh, it's clear. So I am not removing the epithelium now. Okay. If the view is hazy at, the, at any point of time, we'll be removing the epithelium. Flash. So there are some surgeons who do uh, preoperative uh, PI with the YAG laser, but here I think it's difficult because of the corneal edema. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, DMEC is also an important part of indications is to make sure the visibility of the anterior chamber is good. Uh, because sometimes uh, if it may be in the initial cases, visibility becomes important. So you're taking early decompensations in fukes or early sort of fake bullous keratopathies uh, because then uh, the manipulation of the graft is an important part of the procedure. So this is a case of, uh, I think, uh, sort of fake bullous keratopathy. The other eye must have had uh, gutte. Uh, in order to see that the pupil is round, the lens is in the back okay. before you actually plan an endothelial uh, keratoplasty. Yeah, so uh, your lens status has to be confirmed. You don't want uh, any vitreous, uh, you want the lens to be in the back so that when you are shallowing the chamber, you are not having any surprises. I have done a small PI inferiorly. Scissors. Scissors. Beautifully is. Entry, left, side, left side, left side, left entry and the ACM, uh, uh, track and loop. Mm -hmm. So I will now be staining the uh, endothelium for better visibility when we do the decimator excess uh, as such. So you can uh, do decimator excess under air or you can do it under uh, uh, helon. Uh, under air it kind of gives a contrast. Uh, but if your incisions are a little bit large then the air will keep leaking and you might need to refill. I prefer to do it under uh, helon which keeps my chamber uh, stable. So we may keep the uh, tripen blue for a couple of seconds so that the endothelium gets stained. Yeah, you have we'll wash it off. Yeah. And wash you can see here the sister anything. is keeping the vexel sponge that is to prevent the blood from blood entering, from, the, yeah. entering yeah. the anterior chamber. And more importantly, entering the anterior chamber yeah. and to uh, prevent any uh, so uh, make, uh, unnecessary uh, 
इसको इसको सो नाउ यू वॉश्ड ओके anything in terms of uh, removal of the desmets do you want to make it slightly larger than the donor graft to avoid overlaps smaller what would be your preference size shape the normal elimination is there normal elimination normal panidu people are small so it's not correct so basket size of the desmetorexis anything so i normally prefer the same size uh, so we are going out with that 8 and an 8 okay Uh, the thought process initially was that uh, you need a larger desmetorexis uh, as compared to your uh, graft uh, to allow it to attach because the area where there's an overlap it might not attach as well got it but that's not uh, really uh, required uh, the only thing is when you're looking at a fuchs patient or versus a pseudophicic bullous skeletopathy uh, your dm is going to be stripped a lot easier in a fuchs as compared to a patient who has uh sort of ekic bullous uh, keratopathy because the dm is much more uh, weaker so the attachments are uh, are lesser uh, in fuchs patient you are able to see the dm scroll like a like a excess yeah. flap and you don't want to really uh, scratch the center you fold it just like how you fold a excess and you drag it uh, across the entire extent is it clearly visible for you is it visible clearly is it, it uh, not that clearly maybe because i think the epithelium is not very healthy okay i'll just take off the epithelium otherwise i can see you can see the I can zoom up a little bit zoom zoom it ma retro potirukana illa retro vela seyla the sense like super super small the buckle neck kodutirukku i'll scrape the epithelium so you become better you're using a reverse sense key la right? yes okay really Zoom. focus a little on zoom the conjunctiva a little, little more if you on the conjunctiva maybe that will make it clear. zoom full panna konju one minute he'll just let him because we have the foot switch is slightly different la down panna ni zoom focus panna yeah much better much better zoom uh, zoom is down la left left to down टिक you have a 10 micron tissue which will unfold onto the stroma so, so the cohesive viscoelastic is easier to remove and that is why we use helon here so i am not scratching the stroma i am just folding the dm and trying to peel off the tissue how do you avoid tags uh, your Oscar? initial desmetorexis margin should be good okay and if you see at the end of it you are seeing a tag you can go ahead and and peel it off 
so if you fold it and and kind of drag it across like a rexus you will be able to assess where your tag is mm -hmm. entry salain do you want salain come here you try to sir Uh, the tunnels are always 2.8 2.8 this goes into a uh, the goider engine how do you ensure there are no islands that's why is that you do it like a rexus you do it like a rexus rexus huh? so it will come in one piece it will come in one piece oh. okay. but sometimes in the scarred corneas when you're doing like a long standing bullous keratopathy you can still have small you can islands you have tags so yeah. in fugues generally it peels off more easily yeah. you might have some tags you might have to go ahead and remove it reverse dialer there's a small tag on the yeah temporal side which i'm going to be removing so uh, one of the thing is to see preoperatively where the previous cataract section was made i think vaskar isn't yeah. it so we try to avoid, avoid that same that. area uh, and or at least know that there could be a tag there Flash. You can go, but you have you have to be careful that you you do you are uh, your excess is slightly in front of your incision, so that uh, mm. that area is going to be scarred. Yeah. I. Last. Are you able to see it clearly, Meena? There. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, so okay. uh, of course those uh, tags we can't see yeah. what he's removing, okay. but uh, the okay. is. Can I is he maintain that? so i prefer to uh, have a, a controlled entry of my tissue so i use an ac maintainer during my insertion so i'm going to be using a 25 gauge ac maintainer i have to go ahead wash the helon from the uh, anterior chamber and then we will load the tissue wash i what's it varla pakkathu eduthan va pakkathu idanne put switch yes zoom pakkathu pannanum pa idu zoom a matting idu idu pinna idana zoom so one one minute basket let him zoom a little bit zoom mail se le So regular uh, vacuum parameters, Basker? No. Yeah, basically your I normal I A sitting is fine. Yes, and make sure that your uh, there's no blood anywhere. So there was a small blood which had trickled, and I'm going to be removing that. My P I uh, doesn't have any bleeder. The A C here actually seems to be a little bit deeper. So maybe a, a, a bit of a myopic component. So that's going to be uh, having an effect on your uh, unfolding of the tissue. So. when you're looking at dsec you want a deeper chamber when you're looking at a dmec patient you probably want a slightly shallower chamber so that your tissue unfolds uh, a lot easily okay. is there already an iridectomy near your side port uh, where the section is there no 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 no, no, no. no. okay we'll uh, now load the tissue we've already prepared the tissue yesterday so the basic uh, preparation involved using a a uh, uh, 10 mm initial uh, 9.5 to 10 mm initial uh, 100 micron guarded uh, trephine to get a partial thickness cut in the per in the periphery of your cornea and then we uh, use uh, a hook kind of a thing something like our chopper to initiate the plane of dis dissection between the cornea and the stroma the uh, between the desmus membrane and the stroma at least for about 6 uh, clock hours and then under saline and under gentle traction with uh, using the forceps you can peel off the tissue so uh, in india we still uh, prepare the tissues ourselves yes and uh, abroad uh, uh, site uh, countries like america where site life gives you already a pre cut pre stained tissues so where the surgeon just injects the tissue so in india we still have to learn there's a steep learning curve not only doing the dmec but also in preparing the tissue the basker has taken pains to already do the this is news uh, to me partial yeah, part I'll of the dmec so that uh, use what they we, your we people are using today. here 
So th that's what he meant. Even he the company people are saying the same thing. From the tissue, and now I think now you're going to actually punch it or just so going to load it. We have just punched Popolizer and going to be loading, uh, transferring it into the petri dish and loading it. Uh, that's so what we, I this thing, but uh, I, I've always the tissue, been using the. Then we make a small opening uh, in the axis of the stroma, patients, yeah. so that we can mark the tissue. For us to be sure about the orientation. Re panit lama. Anga mudi donor edu panit trikang. And once we load it, we need to look at uh, the scroll configuration. Oh, so that abdi, we are inserting yeah. it. We are at the Dr. correct. Dr. Shalini, just relax, okay? Other, otherwise, Vasco, how would you normally? Just follow my instructions. Pa, or kan chana kala, or kan chana kala, madam. Just before you block the patient, or do you Get block it, the patient ma. and then do the? I would the normally, uh, if it is a plain DMEC. I would prepare it as the patient is getting blocked. No, are we going to show? Are we going to show? I would probably finish the FACO and then. Okay. Then prepare the tissue. So just I have one question, yeah, Basco. Why do you stick but to eight millimeters? Because there are larger uh, grafts also in DMEC. You is can put put do a larger graft. Uh, the only thing is uh, the periphery Main sometimes might not open up if the space is lesser. Okay. But it doesn't yeah, make a huge them. difference. Thank and eight mm gives you a reasonable amount of counts. If you are doing some kind of glaucoma kind of a patient, then yes, you probably need a larger graft. And again, stripping and taking a nine millimeter tissue becomes more challenging. Okay. As compared to an eight millimeter. So he has stained the tissue so that visibility will be there. So it's very important. Uh, any uh, uh, tips mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. making sure that the stain stays deep the during the whole procedure? We normally use uh, stain it with uh, mm -hmm. tripe and blue for at least around a three minute period. Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. We tried both. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Put switch. Uh, the previous surgery is still not over, so we are not live. Micron tissue. Um, uh, I think this small, is one of the uh, small Actually, tear. Uh, it is actually, in fact, uh, yeah, when we punch the microscope central view. microscope view, please. Where is in the AR? Matto kaam chhere. No, microscope, uh, microscope uh, view. Glass prescription matto kaam chhere. Uh, microscope pick up. Pouring hai. Microscope view pouring hai. So there is always a tray, which a sterile tray, or next to the patient for uh, doing this. So. Yeah, we can see. So it's now. always placed in a petri dish. It's always advisable for a glass thing because otherwise it will damage the endothelial cells. So, yeah. so basically, uh, in fact, when we punched the central 8 mm, uh, it didn't get punched completely. So there's a small tag which is actually extra of tissue. So it's actually giving a little bit more than uh, uh, the 8 mm that uh, show the, this thing we I require. I can show this, but what? So I'm just loading it into the goiter uh, injector from the posterior surface. It tells you, uh, it allows you to <laughs> see how the orientation of the tissue is. Um, with a fairly normal cornea. Orientation, what you wanted, Baskar? I don't think a we have to mention on the open cell. But it is, yeah, you're going in, you're going the to. I'm just going to try to agitate and get a double scroll. It's not, this is also fine. So here the endothelium side is out and the stroma is inside, correct? Yes, yes. So, so it scrolls with so the endothelium out. So 90% of the DMEC is actually based on your correct uh, loading technique and that's what he's trying to do now, to have a double scroll here so that when it unfolds, it unfolds in the right way. And everything is done under the fluid so that no air gets into the scannula. So it's important to to know how your uh, tissue is. So it's more like a dosa kind of a thing. So if you can understand that the outer side is the endothelium. So when you are to go with the broader side of your triangle down and the apex towards you. And you need to check the orientation of the tissue with respect to your bevel. So you go in with the bevel down, you check the orientation. So here we can see that this is the orientation, so it's almost safe. You're going with the bevel down and you have to just go ahead and in inject the tissue. It's come as a single scroll. Uh, for a younger tissue, you might want to agitate it to get a double scroll. Are you able to hear Dr. Bhaskar Srinivasan? There's some, someone gave me a feedback. Yes, yes, he's okay. audible, uh, okay. Dr. Sujata. Okay, thank you. After removing the uh, decimage membrane, have you put in air or you just left the AC maintainer I left there? I left the AC maintainer on. So you again check your orientation as to how the tissue goes.
So, this is the male of Purmana. Are you switch off the AC maintainer now, uh, yeah. Bhaskar? Once, so, so that I, I go in without the AC collapsing. Okay. Once I inject, I will, I will discard, discard the AC maintainer. Okay. We have injected the tissue. Excellent. Just want a little bit of chamber to be formed. Very nice. Excellent. I'm scrolling beautifully. Huh? You can see the F mark is in the correct orientation. It's unrolling beautifully. Bhaskar has it under control now. <laughs> That's the trickiest part of the surgery. Very nice. I know, even we are holding our breath. <laughs> yes, I am also holding my breath. <laughs> very nice. And I, one important thing I noticed is that the, uh, the graft is very deeply stained. It's, that's very good because then your visualization is very good with that. I am just shifting it so that it is more centered. Okay. Bhaskar, you should have stained an S or an R. So, this is one tissue uh, where you should never touch the yes, tissue, that is why. For RF who actually yeah, wants yeah. instrumental in, uh, in a starting. Yeah, he has an F one. Summer uses, Summer basically uses S. Why I am nothing in front of these people. So, I later on you have the endo illuminator. So, it's more or less done. It's actually a larger uh, uh, area of uh, DM than what we uh, the uh, scraped for. Yeah. You can see the F mark here. Uh, you actually, we can't see. Do you have the endo illuminator there, Master? Endo Vaskar? illuminator is there, then I can. Light pipe, Pirka. So, once you have the. Uh, you can see the vertical line and the two horizontal lines. No. Are you able to see me now? Can, can uh, keep it a little. Uh, um, the microscope light off, Panedanga. Uh. The F mark, yeah, yeah. the two no, F marks and Actually, the vertical line. It's not really very visible, but uh, yeah, once you put yeah. air, because I think yeah, uh, once you put an air, I think it should yeah. be so yes, the idea yes, is once yes. it unfolds, just yeah, give do it that. some time so it that it maintains its uh, oh, okay. uh, it maintains its uh, configuration and then you you can inject a bit of air. air. Again, the trick is to how to inject air because you have to be extremely slow and do you s always start in the Kuchy, center Kuchy, or? Kuchy, Kuchy. So, Dr. Sujata, to answer no. the question why it is 8 millimeters, apparently it should be 3 millimeters from the limbus. So, you may yeah, have to have the graft. Yeah, but that is for the tissue. Even, even, even here, you, you have to actually be away from the limbus at least 2 to 0.5. Hmm. Because I read in uh, one paper, they have put very large tissue like 10 millimeters and 11 oh, millimeters. Those are very deep eyes like Caucasian eyes yeah, maybe. Caucasian yeah. eyes, yeah. I just relax the last two minutes. Munji poch, sir. You want microscope is switched on and switched on. Okay. So the AC is a little bit shallow, so I'm not able to go under the membranes. I'm just going to inject a little bit of saline to to kind of create the space for me to insert my uh, tissue. Would you would you want a longer cannula for the air injection? Not really. So you need a the cannula length is fine, you just need to go under the DM yeah. towards the center of the pupil and inject.
So, so Bhaskar, sometimes you use SF6 also, isn't it? Yeah, Here you're so using you can use SF6, if, especially if you feel that uh, the air is not going to stay for a longer period of time, like a trap eye and stuff. Uh, in your initial uh, cases, you want to use SF6. After that, air is sufficient. You need a good fill of air so and uh, that should be sufficient. I'll just suture the main port. So, you can okay. see the sister is constantly uh, removing the blood from the side port. I'm just port. going to be suturing the main port. Procedure-wise, it's done. I just have to increase the air fill. Excellent, excellent, uh, Bhaskar. I think uh, beautifully uh, demonstrated surgery. And we just wait. Uh, Dr. Shada, once more you can use the endo illuminator and show it to the audience. I could see the F. I'm not sure if yeah, the other is. Yes. Yeah, the once the air fill is there, I think he wants to show it. What is the size of the graft, Bhaskar? 8 mm, sir. 8 mm. In PDEC also, you can get uh, sizes or. Yes, PDEC, you can primarily go only till 8 with DMEC. If you can uh, dissect it further, you will be able to get uh, larger tissues also. But uh, the, the problem with the larger tissues is, uh, one, your incisions are going to be uh, very close to the edge. So, trying to go under the tissue to inject air uh, at the end of the procedure becomes a bit of a challenge. That's why I didn't go uh, through my right side port, which would have been easier for me to inject air, because the tissue was almost coming till my uh, incision side. This you could leave it uh, unsutured also, but just by habit taking a single suture, I feel more comfortable. You don't want any uh, hypotony in the early post-operative period, so better to be safe. Yes. So here also the one trick that RF did tell us was when you are injecting air, don't keep your hand, uh, finger on the plunger. Go in. And once you are inside, then you inject because that even that little bit of uh, of uh, you can see the F mark now. The microscope light. Uh, yeah. No, I'll leave it, sir. You can see the F. Uh, now can you see? Now you can see. Now yes, we can, now uh, can you see. see. Yeah. Yes, yes, you uh, can see. Thank you so much. Beautiful. And uh, I think it's a great surgery. I think Bhaskar uh, deserves an applause. This is the, indeed one of the most challenging surgeries as a corneal surgeon that you can do. And that too, to, to demonstrate it live really needs guts. Thanks, Bhaskar. Are you planning to put a BCL on the lens? No, no, on the I'll eye? You can do it tomorrow. I'll because do it tomorrow. Bit of chemosis. So I'll do it tomorrow, oh, Meena. Yes, okay. You can Do touch today. Dr. Baskar, unlike the way you talk, uh, you are very patiently doing the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fast speaker, but a slow, very methodical surgeon. <laughs> what will be the post operative follow up like? Generally, prep, prep for prednisolone or uh, betnasol kind of a thing, uh, every monthly taper, and then after about four months or six, uh, four to five months, you can shift over to low tape prep. Okay. Okay. Six times. Oh. Monthly, monthly taper, uh, if it's a high risk uh, thing, otherwise even weekly taper, I 6, 4, 3, 2, 1 and by about 3 months I shift to low taper. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Very, 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 very So you will see the patient you, uh, after 2 hours? Super, super, Bala. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Remove the mic first. Cut it, sir. Okay, am I audible? Uh, yes, Dr. Lalit. Yeah, so this is Dr. Lalit here again, uh, performing a femto LASIK here. So today is my femto day where I've done a femto cataract and followed by a femto LASIK. Patient so what we are going to demonstrate? Patient details. Uh, yeah, what I'm going to demonstrate is uh, doc, but the patient's name is Dr. Shalini, and she has around uh, minus six diopters of uh, uh, spherical error with a minus. Uh, one cylinder and the corneal thickness is around 540. So she is an ideal candidate for a femtolasic and we also did a, a scan, a corneal topography uh, using the topolyzer machine which comes with the Alcon uh, platform and we are going to perform a contura LASIK. So a contura femtolasic. So what is contura basically? The word contura, uh, what it does is it, it in very simple terms it corrects the corneal aberrations as well as it takes care of the cyclotorsion and angle kappa. 
so the the ultimately the treatment is perfectly centered on the visual axis so that is we that is what we want every time so that is what contoura does so i'm just going to start the surgery i'm just going to uh, the patient is focused here very well and she's a very cooperative patient i'm just going to calibrate the femto cone which i've just inserted inside the fs200 machine and we just wait for the calibration to happen so for each diopter of myopia we roughly ablate around 13 uh, microns of the cornea we can just consider the cylinder cylinder also as uh, one diopter like if it has one cylinder you can just add it to the sphere you need not take the sphere uh, sorry okay now the focusing is happening and uh, i'm just the fs200 machine has two components one is the suction ring so once we place the suction ring on the cornea and we just have to activate suction and we are inserting the patient interface so it's a two two step thing it's a two uh, step procedure and i'm just going to aplanate the cornea you can see that it is just going down and it's aplanating and the suction is achieved so once that happens we can the beauty about this machine is we can actually center the flap even after the docking happens so with the previous machines once the once we dock we could not move the flap but here we can actually center the flap around the pupil yeah it's perfect ma so i'm just going to activate the laser yes you can see that the femto flap is being cut nicely so the femto laser basically works on the principle of plasma wave which is generated which actually cuts the corneal tissue and i'm going i'm going with an 8.8 mm flap because the corneal diameter is slightly less so that is again based on the white to white of the cornea white to white diameter if the corneal diameter is slightly large you can actually go for a slightly larger flap maybe say around 9 mm otherwise if the corneal diameter is a little less you can just go for a 8.8 mm flap the optical zone which we have selected is 6 mm now the bed is actually getting shifted towards the excimer laser make sure the the patient's head is nice and straight uh, the patient won't be able to see anything now because of the air bubbles which are there in the stroma so i'm just going to beta shalini you'll be able to see a green light now okay very good you're very very cooperative so now you'll be able to see a green light are you able to see a green light so i just brush the cornea a little to remove the air bubbles as much as possible 65 ma konja saline podringla can you just put a little bit of saline on the cornea yes yeah yeah it's perfect can it has got a very iris? nice flap huh? yeah, nice excellent flap it's got a very flap. nice centered flap you can yeah. see this and uh, i'm i'm just going to uh, marker irka irunda kudunga can we go for the iris registration yeah. so when we do a contoura yes please when we do a contoura what we have to do is something called iris registration so the topolizer takes images outside the theater and that is actually superimposed here as you can see here can we switch off the lights yeah the audience has any questions they can ask me in between also should not be a problem I have seen Lalit doing the femto lasik so many times already. Thank you, thank you, madam. For those people who are wondering why government hasn't got lasik, we have been trying for the past fifteen years. The government doesn't buy it for us. <laughs> yeah. It should be given free, madam. Can you just open your mouth and take a deep breath? See, now the iris registration is happening. You can see here. Yes, it is. The image is going to get superimposed, and it is going to happen. Sometimes it takes a little time. Take a deep breath, Dr. Shalini. Please. Yes. Coincidentally, my wife's name is also Shalini. <laughs> yeah. Or I'll skip this. It's fine. So, so the, the registration patient gets uh, utmost care, Lalit. Which one, madam? That this patient gets utmost care. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have it as sixty-five? One minute. Yeah. Fine. So. once the registration has happened i'm can, can i can i have some saline on the cornea so there are two parts of the femto spatula one is slightly the shorter and the sharper part light mein dekhiye beta yes so i'm just going to demarcate the flap here once i get a small groove you can just turn around and go to the hinge 
and come out. So first I have dissected one third of the flap, then I again go to the hinge, come out from the other side, I have dissected two third of the flap and the third, this thing I just go and come out through and through. Perfect, so now the perfect. flap is perfectly dissected. Yeah, and with excellent. time you can actually go in one stroke also. And that's that thing I, I that procedure I call it as show off when you do it in one stroke. I do it. I do it all the time. <laughs> all the time. So Even I do it all the time, madam. <laughs> yeah. So with experience, it, it can happen. So now the the I'm just going to start the laser. You can see this is the fastest laser available on earth. It treats one diopter in 1.4 seconds. That's it. So that's. It, it's so fast, I have treated almost 7 diopters of refractive error and I am just going to put the flap back. Once it is done, I just go under the, under the flap, wash it nicely. This is a 3-way cannula, you can see. So it removes all the debris and whatever is there, mark is there under the flap and that's the end of the procedure. That's it. Excellent, 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 excellent. 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 You can see Wonderful. here that the flap almost goes and sits like a lock and key thing. It just goes and settles in few seconds, that's it. The cornea is a little dry because there was some, uh, you know, time left between the previous procedure and so, this. So, uh, Lalit has made pre uh, placed marks that's very useful because then you know exactly you have aligned the flap. The other important thing is when you look at the gutter around, it should be uh, even all around. If you get a larger gutter on one side, then there's a possibility that your graft is a little bit uh, shifted. So, normally I don't dry the graft so much like what he is doing, I don't touch the graft at all because I feel the flap should not be touched uh, so much. But anyway, I think he's also an expert surgeon. <laughs> I just leave it like that. I just uh, squeegee the, the extra shall, fluid once, shall. that's all. Yeah. I don't allow the flap to dry so much because that can cause actually small micro striae or wrinkles or these mud cracks because when you're touching the bowmans and uh, dealing with it so much that there can be mud cracks on the uh, flap. Can you show us the slit section please? Yeah, I will do show you the slit section also. So one more beauty about this machine is it also has a slit lamp. So you can actually see... Beautiful. Can you yeah. just uh, magnify please? That's a, a nice suggestion Sujata. That's the advantage of uh, attending all this uh, uh, live surgery sessions. Yes, you get opinion from different surgeons. Yeah. Definitely. But I have been used to, you know, stretching the flap nicely. So <laughs> everybody uh, has their own way of doing the same thing. Thank you, Lalit. That's it. So, that's so the end of the procedure. So, we can shift the, uh, uh, the camera to the uh, main OT and we'll uh, watch Dr. Mur Murli Ariga in action. Thank you, madam. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, so everybody. Thank you. Switch. <laughs> I request Professor Radha Krishnan to honor the panelists for the cornea session, please. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Ravi? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just a minute, sir. We are just honoring okay, the cornea panelists. Okay, we are going to the glaucoma after that. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, you finish up the, uh, the thing. Sh sure, sir. Sure. Professor Dr. K. Vasantha, please. Come forward. All right, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, thank you, sir. Dr. Kalpana Suresh, ma'am, please come from. Dr. Radha Krishnan, sir, Dr. Kalpana, Dr. Vasanta, ma'am, all our faculty, and we are having 100% results because of them. I think we should give a big round of applause. Kalpana, you able to hear me? Yeah, we are able to hear you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Dr. Meena Lakshmipati, please. Meena, thanks a lot, Meena. Meena. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. So, we go on to glaucoma, the trabeculectomy by uh, Dr. None other than the number one glaucomatologist in my opinion may the country. May Dr. Murli Ariga. Dr. Parivadini from Shankanetralia. Yeah. Dr. Archana Nivash, Rajanai Kher, and Dr. Neetu Mohan from Arvind uh, as panelists yes. for this wonderful glaucoma session. Ravi, we are 
are you able to hear me very much very much sir okay dr murli ariga doesn't require any introduction and here over to dr murli please thanks murli yeah, good for morning being here. and uh, sincere thanks to all of you for uh, and also it's very appropriate that murli is here because it's the world glaucoma week which starting today and we are doing lot of initiatives table up thanks to murli <laughs> table up a little ma so devan on the other side on the other table we have dr ram prakash who is a fantastic stethoscopist and pediatric ophthalmologist he is going to demonstrate uh, squint surgery for us but <coughs> yeah so murli ariga will uh, demonstrate trabeculectomy with the injectable mitomycin over to murli please yeah thank you dr mohan and uh, jyata for this uh, repeat invitation to operate i am not familiar with the theater and the uh, setup now so it almost feels like home so before i do anything further i think i'll give you a brief history of this patient i think is uh, injection ma i'll give the mitomycin are you able to hear me all yes sir we are able to hear you yes sir not able to hear me we are able to hear you sir clearly okay, okay. Yeah, basically what I have done is there are so so many methods of uh, exposing the uh, a field for surgery. So I have done the uh, superior rectus, which is the standard uh, teaching as far as uh, surgery is concerned. You can also do a corneal traction suture. You can also do uh, a special type of uh, speculum called the Ong speculum, that also actually gives uh, good exposure by pushing the eyeball down. It's a unique kind of speculum. So you have that also. You have a separate right and a left. So what I have now done is uh, raised up a bleb, and uh, this is uh, containing 20 sir, micrograms uh, of uh, mitomycin. Excuse me, sir. We are not able to and see the. And how I have prepared this is you take the 4 mg per ml, uh, 0.4 mg per ml solution. Excuse me, sir. We are not able to see out. the field where your. Uh, uh, so what I do is to know the width. Sir, good morning, sir. M sir, you need to zoom out a bit. Yeah, now yeah. Now we are able to see. Of injection of see. Now you are able to see that? This is the yeah, area now where we are I have injected. This is 0.1 ml of uh, uh, 0.4 mg per ml solution, which okay. I have diluted with uh, lignocaine. So by diluting it, what happens is uh, you get about uh, 20 micrograms of the uh, mitomycin. So this is a fixed dose. You know how much you have given. And you also know... How yeah, I am trying to focus it for you. Yeah, just a few seconds, just as you start to give the injection and then sort of flatten it out a bit okay. and then you can start right away and, and uh, wash it out is it? Wash, wash it out yes and uh, the best may suppose you have a caliper that's fine otherwise what I usually do is the width of the conjunctival flap should be somewhat the, the maximum width of your conjunctival scissor or it can be measured as 7, 6.5 or even up to 8 millimeters the idea is suppose you're making a, a 4 mm scleral flap mm -hmm. you will get about 1 millimeter on either side yeah. so that's the idea so you should have definitely an overlap of at least a millimeter or more on either side. And this uh, raising up the bleb actually makes things easier for the dissection. Yeah. So the site for the trabeculectomy actually so many uh, theories are there. So now what we have started doing is suppose you are doing surgery for the first time. I would probably prefer to operate almost at the uh, 12 o'clock position. Why? Because suppose you need to do something again you can go in nasally. And if you need to go in and do a cataract, you can do it temporarily. And if you want to put in a tube or something, you can do it super temporarily. So you leave yourself that space, uh, so sphere system, and uh, cautery. <laughs> this is phonic space, sir. Huh? Sir, would you like to share something regarding the pre-op preparation for this patient? Looks like uh, congested eye, con considerable congenital hyperemia and all that. Ma'am, I would like Angle to uh, just elaborate that on that. This yeah. patient uh, actually had uh, allergies to multiple medications. Well, she had uh, allergy to brimonidin and uh, even to brinzolamide. So she had developed follicles in the conjunctiva. So uh, that was also one of the indications why uh, we went in for a trap for her. The cautery has to be definitely uh, gentle, don't over cauterize. I am trying to do less and maybe you could try to put down the cautery power a little bit. You don't try to evacuate all the mitomycin that you inject? No, because the dose of mitomycin is extremely small which you apply, it's only 20. No, so if, if you are really uncomfortable, the pupil is somewhat large or something, you can actually put a little pilo if you want. The pilo actually I believe uh, in increases the inflammation. In fact, I do very minimal pre-op except for like uh, Archana was pointing out, suppose you have 
preoperative say ocular surface problems and you are having uh, follicles and your patient is intolerant to drops for some time and patient has been using medication for a long time, the ocular surface becomes an issue. So therefore, you need to put in a little steroid a few days or maybe a little while before the surgery. And if a patient has been using a lot of prostaglandin, maybe you can stop the prostaglandin uh, just a few days or uh, prior to the surgery. Sometimes I don't even stop that. I just keep going ahead with the uh, procedure. Do you think patients who have been on uh, uh, the Brimonidin, chances of uh, failure is very high in these patients? Yes, any kind of ocular, uh, this uh, glaucoma, top, topical glaucoma medication, which has been used for a long time, will definitely change the ocular surface. So this is a flap I'm trying to make. So you can see the, uh, yeah, it's about 3.5 to 4. So this is, it's a, you should have some overlap on either side. So make sure you have a good exposure, either you have the corneal traction suture or you have this kind of a rectus stitch, whatever you are comfortable with. And don't make, make sure that the intraocular pressure is well controlled before you are operating. Don't have a very tense eyeball as you are operating. So make sure the IOP is under control. Suppose you have stopped the uh, glaucoma medication before the surgery, you can probably give a little diamox so that the eye becomes a little softer to handle. I have initially made the mark with the uh, 15 uh, Bart Parker blade and then I try to get the apex free and uh, again there are so many methods of getting the flap free. You can use this uh, lovely crescent which you are all familiar with as cataract surgeons. I, I prefer a non-tooth uh, forceps to hold the flap. So, in case somebody gives you a tooth also make sure you don't use the tooth forceps. You can, you can easily get saline Are you able to see what I am doing? Yeah, very clear. Yes, so sir, the, we can uh, see. Thickness, the thickness of the flap should be say one third at the most half. So, initially if you are a beginning surgeon, we have been taught that you can even use the uh, depth knife to sort of 300 micron or 500 micron uh, blades to get the depth uh, mark so you know where exactly you are going and how much you are going. Don't go too far like uh, initially we were taught to go completely clear cornea. So I would probably avoid that nowadays so because you use mitomycin and I also uh, try to get the flow of the uh, bleb to form a little posteriorly what we would uh, small mops. So you can see the white meets blue that's what we say as you come to the surgical limbus here. The white meets blue is the Schwalbe weights for you. So this is the Schwalbe's line here. So what it is, you go up to that point and don't go too much into the cornea. So now the next step is to make a paracentesis into the eye. So that the eye is somewhat soft and uh, not too tense as you are uh, doing the trap. And maybe you can even assist us uh, relaxing. You can slightly relax the superior rectus in the, uh, the uh, suture. And the paracentesis need not be a large one. This is just for us to decompress the eye a little bit at the same time rectus stitch. Any specific reason you are using the blade uh, downwards instead of the sides? You mean for the uh, side yeah, port? Side port yeah. No particular reason. So, okay, the, uh, the idea is to probably remain completely clear cornea rather than uh, going into the limbus. So sometimes for cataract incisions you make a uh, limbal or near limbal incision. This has to be clear cornea. The only reason for having the pyrus one is to decompress of course. The second is to give you a room to inject air or put in something into the eye later when you are... Uh, so without a paracentesis, don't attempt to mop stuff. So that's an excellent flap sir, very uniform. Yes, I didn't want it to go... Com the reason is if, if you go completely clear cornea, what will happen is you are going to get more changes and cystic changes in the uh, limbal area. So with this kind of uh, flow which is going to go more posterior, you will probably have the encysted blebs and the limbal uh, problems much less with this kind of flap. Mop stuff. So, do you always prefer a triangular flap? Do you do rectangular also? Any yes. advantage of one over the other? No, in your hands? no particular advantage. I think it's where you train and where you've been taught or where you're what you're comfortable with. I think a triangle is the easiest in the sense it's very easy to make and easy to handle and uh, easy to suture as well. The only problem going so posterior is that sometimes you can catch the ciliary body. Absolutely. So you Correct. should make sure that you see the blue line Correct. And, uh, before you uh, do the punch. <coughs> That's so quite a risk because yeah. of that. So I am using a 0.75 mm punch. So as you can see allow the iris to pop into the incision. Don't uh, go and dig into it as far as possible. 
once you get the iris there again you can use the same kind of a have somebody to help if you like if you have the luxury of a good assistant you can have somebody hold the flap for you the idea of the aridectomy is to absolutely yeah so you should get the aridectomy and make sure the pupil comes back to a near round position hydro system and uh, the important thing is once you have made this punch opening and you also have the iris back in place you need to wash out the posterior pigment. I can almost see through the uh, flap and I see the iridectomy there. So we can even see that quite clearly. So if you can see underneath. And make sure it is flushed out. This pigment should not block. The iris should not block. And because this patient particular patient, as you can see the pupil is also becoming round. Just to ensure that the iris stays back and the iridectomy and the iris doesn't plug the incision. So what I usually do is I just put in about say a 50% or a 30% bubble that pushes the iris back and does not allow the iris to plug. So now you have a clear area for the ostomy. So a 30%, 50% bubble is what I have been doing most, of, most often. And uh, since my flap is not too big, so I am going to place only one single suture. That has been my habit for many years now. And this is going to be a single apex releasable suture. I start from clear cornea, come up to the point where I want to take the limbal bite. This is the uh, clear cornea incision, the suture. This is 10-0, I think Aurolab uh, suture. I think Aurolab makes excellent sutures and uh, each suture which they make, actually if you look at their catalog and the uh, website of their uh, sutures, every needle which they have made is meant for a particular application. So this particular one, 10-0 uh, Aurolab is, is meant for the, uh, in, uh, the uh, suturing. Unlike our Ethylon, somehow Ethylon is not my favorite. I prefer the Aurolab. And you can see the loop there, which can be released later. And with regards to the... Uh, make sure you have good uh, hemostasis, otherwise it's very uncomfortable. Conjure a track panel, sort of rectus right stitch, slightly red. Rectus stitch, conjure a track panel, push, pull a little bit. Yeah, so I can show you the uh, bite at the apex. So how long are uh, patients on uh, steroids uh, post-operatively on an average? The uh, most important part of the glaucoma surgery is the uh, meticulous suturing, uh, having a great intelligent assistant. I think uh, Dr. Sujata has uh, been operating uh, obviously quite regularly and does excellent uh, glaucoma surgery. So the assistant exactly understands what is the next step. So I don't even have to ask any instrument or any kind of uh, assistance. So that makes life really easy when you're doing a very meticulous surgery. Uh, even though it's very simple, it has to be meticulous. And uh, make sure you have a clear focus. And this is the suture I was talking about. Clear cornea, the, uh, limp, the apex bite, and you have this loop here. And uh, you can either tie this directly to the loop with four throws or three throws and the knot has to be single, it cannot be a double knot obviously because if you put a double knot it's not going to release. So there you have the uh, apex and uh, relatively on the tighter side because I'm going to make only, uh, have only one in one suture and also I have used mitomycin. So in case I need something more in, in terms of IOP reduction you can either release the suture or you can do a little massage and so on. Mop system. Sir, when would you first review this patient since, the, since there is only one releasable suture? Uh, given a choice, yes. Given a choice, yes. I think it's ideal to do uh, glaucoma is basically some kind of a surgical disease is what I believe. But the patient somehow, when they have clear vision like this particular patient also has 6-6 vision. And even though she has advanced cupping, she is not likely to be willing to undergo a surgery. So that is why most often the primary therapy has been... Uh, medication most of the time but invariably you will find the patients default they don't comply with your uh, instructions 
at the same time the medication may not work and you don't really look for the progression so much feel so often as we had many people not coming back at all and progressing so like you rightly pointed out i think the primary surgery is the ideal but again we don't live in an ideal world so i think we have the best compromise is to keep watching the mild and moderate glaucomas maybe you have many options many options like medication slt you have now the newer mix coming in and even the angle closures with the mild cataract you can simply remove the lens and you have the option of redu reducing the intraocular pressure but for the advanced i think you have no choice but to go for surgery and the priority would be the intraocular pressure and uh, not the cataract suppose you have mild cataract and very bad advanced glaucoma you of course have the option of doing a combined surgery but prioritize on the uh, iop control more than the cataract because cataract can be done at uh, any particular stage in the patient's uh, life so the handling the conjunctiva is of course the key sir can you hear us sir anything more to say murli or any questions for dr murli arigat sir uh, ma'am can you hear us ma'am surgery but i feel that the most important part of any trabeculectomy surgery is the conjunctiva because that's where anything can go absolutely wrong. so handle with care yeah. and you need a uh, lot of patience yeah. and need lot of uh, care the conjunctiva you respect the conjunctiva you are a successful glaucoma surgeon very well ma'am can you hear us ma'am as usual very carefully handled the issue handling is uh, fabulous and uh, that's uh, one thing that i everything you do it's very delicately and i think the uh, one one last key message is that make sure you are very measured in your approach measuring approach literally in glaucoma surgery everything is measured you measure a conjunctival flap you measure the position of where you wanted you measure the flap size you measure the number of them you count the number of sutures number of knots and everything everything is measured if you have a protocol based basic surgery like this i think anybody can do glaucoma surgery i do find that people keep referring out for the traps i would encourage general ophthalmologists to get into doing traps because the reason for not doing traps the delays the uh, glaucoma uh, treatment and uh, invariably progresses so don't hesitate to do trap trap is quite a simple procedure i would encourage all general ophthalmologists also to get into doing routine traps aa jayega fir the dr murli sir uh, the panelists would like to discuss the case and talk to you are you able to hear us yes yes please go yeah loud and clear yeah, yeah. Uh, just wanted to ask how long will this patient be on steroids sir post operatively post operatively post operatively i think a minimum of 4 to 6 weeks tapered start off with about 4 times a day add a lubricant because this particular patient has some ocular surface issue as well so use the lubricant in addition to the steroid antibiotic for some time maybe the second week i would probably switch to steroid alone like pred predfort or plain steroid keep using that for about another 6 weeks sometimes when you find the ocular surface or the blep is sort of becoming vascular and uh, angry looking you can keep the steroid going in a low dose like lotiprid fl fluoromethylone for even 3 months so don't hesitate and uh, cataract surgery is quite a different ball game as far as the uh, follow up is concerned you can have a cataract operation and not follow up the patient after the first week or second week but glaucoma surgery needs very close follow up to see the blep to watch the uh, iop and of course look for the fibrosis look for changes keep modifying the treatment so a close follow up in the first few weeks is extremely important but two to three visits post op is very very important Sir, okay uh, murli thanks a lot murli thank we'll you go on to the, thank you mohan yeah we'll to the next one squint before that uh, we are just going to honor the uh, faculty yeah uh, i request okay. dr kalpana suresh to just come forward and honor the panelists for the glaucoma uh, session Uh, Ravi Shankar. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. Ravi. I will hear you. I am able to hear yes, you. Yes, sir. Ravi, we are going to honor uh, the uh, the surgeons here. Yes, sir. Dr. Pastor yes, Shin Vasan. I request Dr. Sujata to do the honors. What a wonderful surgery! Come to the side, Paska. Sale. Able to see. We are able to hear, see, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Baskar. Bye. Okay. Khani awa. Where is Lalit? Lalit Kumar. Artery exercise in that class. Okay, Lalit Kumar is there. And then uh, Murli is finished. Remember the touches a little too much. Okay. How do we clean artery? Okay. Lalit is not there. Okay, over to squint surgery. Lead Anna Gora, I keep doing. Thank you, sir. I, we are honoring the panelists for the glaucoma session. Dr. Kalpana Suresh will be doing the honors. Dr. Neetu Mohan, please. 
ஒன்னுமிட்டாஜிஸ்ட்ரேட்ரி and what what exactly is that dr ram atrupika dr archana nivas ravi uh, we are able to see sir yeah, uh, yeah, yeah i am just calling the ram? panelists uh, yeah, please, i think please, you are not able to hear that, me uh, uh, the uh, the honoring the panelists now yes sir yes sir i understand please dr please suraj that. nayak and dr manjula jayakumar please come forward for the pediatric ophthalmology squint session thank yes. you over to ram Office please all yours hello ma no problem illa nalla mudinjirukku hello ram yeah valiya da iruka am i audible yeah here yeah yeah you audible ram yeah uh, can really you like tell us something old. about the case yeah 16 year old boy with right ectotropia probably congenital xp of 16 prism so i am just doing one muscle right lateral rectus recession i have already taken the sutures to the insertion now i am going to disinsert earlier the fdt was negative ma video so now i have disinserted the muscle i have used 60 white ray <laughs> okay can you explain how did you do the three point fixation how exactly you have taken the bites on the muscle for the yeah, benefit of, of the audience that has already been done i usually take a partial thickness bite and yes. then full thickness at the end okay do you lock bite. the bites yeah it is locked you're just doing one muscle is it only one muscle oh, it's only 16 prism 16 prism okay so one muscle will do ella recession ella recession uh, ram wouldn't it uh, produce in comitant side gaze diplopia eight prism is fine madam we can do up to though textbooks say only up to eight okay we can even do up to 10 Yeah. Any suggestions from uh, Suraj? Suraj uh, is our squint surgeon in uh, in Rajanayakar. Suraj? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am hearing you. Uh, Ram Prakash, sir. Uh, I only wanted to ask, uh, like you suspected superior oblique also in this uh, in both eyes. Inferior. Uh, no, ma'am. Inferior oblique overaction. Superior oblique. Okay. Yeah. Parasis. Okay. Parasis in both eyes. then why not uh, you go ahead with the inferior oblique asymmetrical recession in both eyes one second i take the scleral bite and ah better better yes the important step so what ram is doing is a partial uh, uh, thickness scleral bite so you have to visualize the needle underneath the sclera so that you don't perforate the sclera so this is uh, important Uh, Ram Prakash as, uh, as you yes. can see the sclera is very thin and you can actually see the underlying uh, choroid the bluish hue is seen there so when you take the scleral bites you need to be uh, very very careful the sclera uh, the needle has to be seen underneath the sclera so direct visualization of the needle is important what do you do if it perforates manjula sir we can cryo sir at yeah. that uh, site but uh, i think it's not uh, it's not uh, good on a squint surgeon's uh, this thing to perforate no no i'm just asking you yeah we need to cryo it sir we, had, we need to cryo it or we can laser it in the op yeah, we have a few months uh, back one we need to immediately cryo and rd because of the perforation after squint surgery ma'am we need to immediately cryo or we can proceed with the procedure and then later we can yeah, do yeah you can proceed like no it's uh, it, it the site will be there so it will be easy for you to before attach the muscle cryo it or otherwise you have to see internally and uh, do a indirect laser uh, so coming procedure. to the correct question yeah. why not handle the infiopic couple of reasons the infiopic always we need to correlate with the fundus torsion 
there was very little torsion on the fundus. Usually expect an extortion of the macula on fundus examination, which was not there. Second, there was no pattern. Usually when you have an intuopic overaction, you expect a V pattern, which was not there. The measurement in up gaze and down gaze was That is very there. important, yes. So that's why you have not done an intuopic in this case. They have taken the bite through the sclera and anchoring it to the sclera at 9 mm behind the original insertion. And that's it. Next is only to close the cunning table. The sclera appears very thin actually. Mm. No, Sir, you took two bites, no? Or only one? Two bites. Two bites, no? Okay. Sir, how much recession was done, sir? 9 mm. 9. 9 mm recession was done. 9 mm, huh? 9 mm. Okay. Is there a limit? Uh, how much you can do back? Tetris usually say 8 mm, sir. But 8 uh, mm. practically, uh. we can do up to 10 to 11 also. Okay. Sometimes where we do only one night. Ambulance PK we have done, I have done personally 10 to 11 also. Okay. So ideally we can approach to a limbal incision what SAR is doing uh, for greater recessions, more so than 6 to 7 millimeters. Uh, Fornix incisions are very nice cosmetically, but uh, beginners need to go uh, through the limbal incision because that is much easier, exposure is much better. But Fornix uh, incision are much smaller and uh, scarring and other things are much less and there is no uh, limbal edema because sometimes you can get uh, limbal edema in a limbal flap and that can cause a delin like uh, issue so all that is negated in a fornix flap so routinely i mostly prefer a fornix uh, but limbal is also is okay for the beginners when for larger recessions how larger you recessions it? when you do muscle transplant yes, you sir. need to go for uh, uh, limbal, limbal incision because your exposure is definitely much better so, so he's closing the conjunctiva yeah he's closing the conjunctiva so he will be just putting one one suture at each end of the flap and that think. should be done i was using i had used uh, eight, eight zero, zero. Mm. this is eight zero by uh, eight zero for the conjunctiva yes So this is a this is a phonic incision, no? no this is a limbal, limbal, limbal flap, limbal, sir. Limbal. This is limbal. a limbal incision. Phonics will be in the infrotemporal phonics, yeah, sir. Yeah, correct. That's called the Parks incision, no? Cul-de-sac incision or Parks incision? Parks incision. Yes. Okay. Cosmetically, it's really good, actually. Yeah, yeah cosmetically, it's good. And uh, we can uh, see when patients uh, tend to use, uh, they are interested to use a uh, contact lenses, then we can go for a fornix incision rather than a limbal incision. And when you combine inferior oblique, you should always take a fornix incision. Because through the same incision, you can ab approach both the inferior oblique and the lateral rectus. For oblique, always fornix is better. It's very difficult to approach through the limbal approach. Okay. Sir, if uh, lateral rectus, you, we intend to do a very large incision, uh, recession, along with the inferior oblique muscle surgery, then how you approach, whether fornix first and uh, inferior oblique and then uh, limbal and go to lateral rectus or with the fornix only, we can manage both. So if you are handling both muscles, it's only fornix, we can handle both. Uh, even, even 9 to 10, uh, more yes, than yes, 10 yes, millimeters. It will be easy yeah, yeah. only, Suraj. It will be not easy only. It's it not an done. issue. Yeah. Maybe in the I think next uh, surgical uh, session, we can uh, show. Uh, yeah. Thank yes. you, ma'am. All Two. simple Two. learning. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, is that over, uh, Ram? Yeah, my side is only conjunctive will close. Conjunctive I think we should give a big round of applause to Ram Prakash. Thank Wonderful you. surgery. Lovely demonstration of uh, uh, recession and... Uh, and a single muscle, uh, first time I'm seeing only a single muscle, is really fantastic. Thank you, sir. Very thank nice you, job, uh, Ram. Uh, thank you very much for being here and also thank the panelists. Now we go on to the ptosis. Uh, 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 Sendhil will show you the markings about this patient and then we go on to the vitrectomy. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, Sendhil, we are able to hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, just, just give me a minute to honor the... Uh, panelists, uh, 
I request Professor Dr. Vasantha to come forward and honor the panelists of the periodic ophthalmology session. Dr. Manjula Jayakumar and Dr. Suraj Naik, please come forward. Thank you, thank you, Manjula. Dr. Suraj Naik, please. Thank you, Suraj. Meanwhile, it is my pleasure to invite the panelists for the oculoplasty session, Professor Dr. Radha Krishnan, once again, Dr. Preeti Udai and Dr. Pratibha Nivian. Thank you for honoring us by being the panelists for the day. Thank you. Over to Dr. Sendil Nadan. Sendil, please. Uh, good afternoon, Ravi. Uh, today we have a patient with a right eye aponeurotic ptosis. This patient is around 53 years old. And can you see the patient's eyes on the uh, screen there? Yes, yes, yeah. we can see. So this Sandil. patient has got a ptosis uh, of the right eye. You can see when she looks down, the ptosis increases. You know, uh, you can see the hallmark of aponeuric ptosis is when they look down, the ptosis will worsen. And you can see she's got very good LPS action. Left parunga, right parunga, parunga, straight up parunga. Yeah, You can see she's got around 1 to 1.5 1 mm ptosis. The other eye is looking almost normal. Uh, so she's got a mild to moderate ptosis with excellent LPS action. So the plan is most likely she might have a aponeurotic dehiscence. So we're going to open up and identify the detached edge of the LPS aponeurosis and do LPS reattachment. That's going to be the plan. So now we're going to give a local anesthetic and start off. Thank you. Uh, Sendil, uh, what is the marking that you have done there? Can you explain? Uh, so I just made two marks. Uh, one mark is Kira Parangama. So one mark is the lid crease incision. Yes, we can see that. You can see the lid crease incision there. You can see when she looks straight, the incision almost disappears. So that's what you want it to be because when you make the incision there, you want the incision to be hidden by the lid crease. So you can see the marking that which I made right on the uh, desired crease which has to be matched with the left eye. So she's got a lip crease of around 8 to 9 millimeters in the left eye. So I measured it and marked it on the right eye. Nera Parma. You can see when she looks straight, the, your incision goes into the lip fold there. So the, uh, cosmetically she'll have a very good outcome. You'll not see the incision at all. And the other marking is where I want the apex of the lid to be. You know the lid is uh, arched and at one particular point you have a peak of the lid. So the peak is usually just medial to the pupillary light reflex. So you ask the patient to look straight, you identify the uh, pupillary reflex and you make your mark just medial to the pupillary reflex. Uh, uh, yeah. So you can see uh, the light parana. So you can see you, when you, the patient looks straight, uh, the, the marking is just medial to the pupillary right reflex. So that's where the central point on the tarsal plate is going to be. That's the most important uh, point. Because if you get it wrong, you'll have a, a peaking of the lid either laterally or medially. So you want to get the pleasing arch. So that is what uh, you're going to do. So we'll shift to the next setter, uh, during which time I will block the patient and get things ready. from Shankar Netralia, profound, prolific vitreoretinal surgeon. Over to Manoj Katri to introduce him. Good afternoon, one and all again. <coughs> we have here a prolific uh, vitreoretinal surgeon and a dear friend, uh, Dr. Anirudh Maiti from Calcutta. He will be uh, showing a case of, uh, operating on a case who has a diabetic vitreous hemorrhage along with tractional retinal detachment and also <coughs> the foveal traction is there. Uh, Dr. Anirudh is going to use constellation vitrectomy system with a, on a 25 gauge platform uh, with a recite biome and uh, <coughs> uh, we have made already the uh, uh, incisions, the three uh, vitrectomy incisions. The trocars and cannula is already in place. So over to Anirudh for the case 
and uh, we look forward for a great discussion ahead thank you dr manoj uh, first of all i would like to thank dr mohan rajan and madam for the kind invitation and uh, also dr supriya well uh, we will proceed with the case uh, this is the diabetic vitreous hemorrhage with trd i have already made the incision so we will start the vitrectomy now am i audible is anirudh audible there in the hall yeah you are audible okay, okay. Uh, the retina panelist ravi can we have the retina panelist i i i am yeah. just calling them dr yeah, preeti and uh, may I have the privilege to invite uh, dr supriya dabir gautam to just go and sit in the dais for the panelists and uh, i think we are expecting dr kasi and dr atul dhawan to join us So by the time Dr. Anirudh is setting up the, uh, uh, the you know, getting focused, uh, I think the main thing here is uh, we are moving towards smaller gauge vitrectomy is more so on 25 and 27 gauge platforms. Uh, there are two advantages. One is you get a much more controlled environment and uh, <coughs> the operating time is also quite fast and also the post of yeah, yeah, 25, entire thing is 25 gauge. Anirudh, over to you please. Yeah, we have started the vit uh, vitrectomy, you can see the hemorrhage is there, not a very dense one, but we can see the tractional retinal detachment, it is on the nasal side and if you see the OCT, it has involved the fovea as well, that is the indication we are doing the operation because it has involved the central part. Yeah, so main indication for this patient was uh, definitely a non-clearing vitreous hemorrhage and also the peripapillary tractional retinal detachment was pulling the fovea, causing a tractional diabetic macular edema. What so, are trying to do for that? Yeah, so we are going to remove the, uh, <coughs> the traction there sir and also trying to remove the epiretinal membrane over that. Dr. Anirudh, do you uh, usually use tricot? Of course, in this yeah, case, it's a uh, heme-lined vitreous. Yeah, I will be using tricot. Okay. In a diabetic case, tricot is mandatory sometimes. We feel that we have done the vitrectomy, but you put triamcillin and see that there is a lot of remnants of vitreous still left. Luckily, it's a laser dye. PRP has been done. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, PRP has been done uh, already in this patient. Uh, a few scattered there is, lasers. Uh, there is some scattered laser, definitely, but we need to do further laser augmentation in this case. Yes. Yeah. Sister, can you give me time for yeah. So, point here to notice is a faster vitrectomy time, you know, <coughs> and also. Uh, much more controlled environment. The 25 gauge gives you a much more controlled environment so that uh, there is no much of intraoperative bleeding, though we have given Avastin injection for this patient two days back. Asking a question to the panelists as well as Anirudh and Manoj, when will you prefer a 23 gauge to a 25 gauge? I, I think uh, nowadays uh, we can do all cases in 25. There is no particular case I would say uh, that can be cannot be done with 25. We need to do it with 23. That's my opinion, Manoj. I think uh, nucleus drop is one area uh, where we have nucleus uh, drop. In any case, we have to convert it to no, 20 gauge. No, we use a uh, apasami uh, okay, what you call okay, the okay, system okay, so okay, that okay, we okay. can manage with 23. That's yeah. Yeah. The fragmentome is also 23. Yeah, fragmentome, fragmentome. Is, sir, we use the upper fake itself. But the alcone is still with the 20 gauge. Fragmentome. Yeah, alcone is only 20 gauge. So that's uh, one indication. I will say <coughs> another thing where you have, uh, you know, where you want surgery to be a little faster, but I still feel 23 is slightly faster than 25. That is true, that is true. Uh, there is another logistic issue also. The cost yeah. of the surgery comes down with the 23. Can I add a point, sir? Scenario. Yes, sir, please. 
Can sir? Sir, so if you want to reuse the instruments often, yeah, then I you mean. go for 23 gauge. Right. Yes, sir. Right. 25 gauge will not last for more than uh, yeah, maximum so three to four cases. Uh, no, what, what, what did you say? So, if you Kasi, want to yeah? reuse the instruments. Kasi. Yes, sir. Good morning, Kasi. Uh, sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, first. Huh. Sorry. Uh, no, no. The, wh what did you say, Kasi? I didn't uh, hear. So, if you have to reuse the instruments, yes, yes, Kasi. then 23 gauge is much better because Absolutely. 25 gauge will last only for 3 to 4 case maximum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a 23 can use at least. What for about the surgical time uh, generally for a 23 and a 25? Is it comparable or it's way off? It's almost the same, sir. Okay. But uh, I'd like to add that nowadays, I don't know if it's because of the 10,000 cutters or the change in the um, uh, dynamics, even the 23 gauge uh, set doesn't last you more than three or four cases, frankly, you know. Um, I'm sure Alcon guys are not here. <laughs> I've used at least for 10 cases. Hmm? Oh, really? Okay, maybe uh, single use and uh, uh, single use. Well, it depends on. If you're doing for a vitreous, see, nowadays we don't get bad cases. You know? if, you can't, if you're using for a nucleus drop, yes, the cutter may not last. For a vitreous hemorrhage, macular hole surgeries, clear vitreous, I'm sure the cutter will last at least for 10 cases. I think, sir, we'll send our staff to your hospital to see how they're uh, <laughs> managing to use it for 10 cases. That's a tractional attachment. Yeah. Teasing the membrane so that it comes off from the desk. So you used tri tricot, no? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, with the uh, beautiful, it's coming up very nicely. Only thing we need to take care it should not have any iatrogenic breaks while picking out the membrane. Do you do this usually with a cutter or would you switch to a forcep? I am holding forcep. Uh, nowadays, with this in better instrumentation, the smaller gauge vitrectomy system, most of the dissection we can actually do it with the cutter. Yes, sometimes when the membranes are very extensive, we have to use the bimanual dissection. What we used to do previously a lot more. I was wondering whether there is a nice edge there. Yeah. So, whether we can just use the forceps and yeah, that, that, that I will do. And yeah, okay. Lifting up the membrane. Okay. So, so the then I will tease with the... So the oh, advantage with these the cutters are, they are multitasking instruments. Okay. Like before, we don't use force of that much. We use the cutter itself to finish the entire job of uh, uh, pulling the membrane and then even cutting the membrane like scissors. So, the yeah. cutters are multitasking instruments. The patient was given pre-op uh, Avastin, so that reduces the and risk of uh, intraoperative bleeding also. The CRTs are uh, very bad actually, compared to the temporal ones. They are very <laughs> adrenally stuck to the desk and... Yeah, yeah that's right, I could see that very In nicely. Kasi sir, I am doing, at this time I am doing all my cases by manual because cutting is less traumatic than the peeling the membrane with the cutter. So, all of the cases, all diabetic cases, I am doing only by manual. What do you think? No, by manual is if there is a lot of membrane dissection and you don't, you want to be less traumatic to the retina, yes, by manual is the way to go. In this case, if you see, there is a peripapillary uh, attachment of the prolif and PVD is not that much. So, pulling, even though you are given a pre-op anti vegf to reduce the vascularity, Pulling all these membranes sometimes becomes difficult and it may cause bleeding. So here you have to see whether you have, if there is a PVD in the periphery, you can go from center to periphery rather than from center, from the center to the periphery rather than periphery to center. Because if you are going to pull from the center, there is going to be a lot of bleeding. So you can start from the periphery and go towards the center so that the pull on the oh. prolif is not going to be that much. Oh. Anirudh? What yeah. about you? You will go from center to periphery or periphery to center? No, periphery to center and I have actually disengaged from the uh, desk. As you can see, it has been disengaged from the desk. Yeah. See, the PVD is there nasally, so he is nicely trimming the PVD edges there. 
So if you pull from the center, there is going to be a lot of bleeding. Actually, if you see very closely, because it's seen very nicely here, I'm not sure whether it's seen there, but then the entire nasal retina is lifted up. No? So, no, nasal retina is on, sir. The PVD. No, no, no. nasal retina is a little lifted up. Yeah, this is elevated. Okay. Elevated. Can you see that? I'll, I'll do staining one more time in this type of case, because still some vitreous is left over the na nasal side. Now we are through with the so the membrane is gone, so it's almost beautifully done. Would you consider increasing intraocular pressure to control the bleeding, Anirudh? Uh, Be a little louder, like Supriya. Uh, yeah. Can you make it for me? Would you consider increasing the intraocular pressure yeah, at this point? Yeah, if it is profusely bleeding, we will do it. Till now the bleeding is under control. So when, uh, Manoj, when will you use the cautery to cauterize the bleeder immediately or you leave it for later? No, it is always better if you <laughs> locate the oozer immediately, cauterizing is better. Kasi sir, I found that uh, if you will just press the bleeder with the silicon tip cannula for 30 seconds, it will stop bleeding. You yeah. don't need any type of cautery or any type of laser yeah, over the even the even the cutter tip also helps at times yeah yeah see i am a lazy surgeon once i go inside i would finish everything and then come out i don't like pulling the instruments uh, in and out uh, repeatedly because that itself will cause some bleeding Cause unless unless the bleeding is going to be continuous so these bleeders you can leave it it is not profusely bleeding and these themselves will form a clot and stop further bleeding and if it's going so to go bleed to profusely, LB, yes, no? it needs to be cauterized uh, immediately. I'll flush up this bleed yeah, and yeah. find out if there is any active oozer. Uh, so I have to take care of the bleeder and then do a good uh, laser. Laser, okay. What is the normal uh, IOP that you keep these um, diabetic vitrectomies? 30-35 if it is not bleeding, if it is bleeding I will increase, just now we have made it 40. Yeah. Okay. Now I will just I think, uh, flush out the... Manoj, go on to the arthroplasty. Yeah. Give me the active Kasi sir, at what IOP you are doing the surgery? Minus uh, 30 to 35. 30, I have increased to 40 now. Uh. Come back. Kasi sir, previously I was doing the surgery at 25, but no. nowadays I am doing the surgery at 15 IOP. 15? Yeah, 1-5, 15. Okay. And but I have found the post of surgical result, the disc status is much, much better if you will do low IOP surgery. But low IOP, other factors have to be considered, whether you are doing a diabetic surgery yeah. or yeah. a macular Yeah, in yeah. the diabetic surgery also I am doing mainly 15 to 20, not more than that. And what is the vacuum you keep? Vacuum, usually I keep 200. Ah, so I do it at 400, 500 vacuum. Okay. See, all these things are interplayable ch hmm. factors. But with 20... Atul, Atul, welcome Atul. Thank you, sir. So, he is using... Okay, we will uh, do one thing while he's. Uh, I think his most of the surgery is over, no? Yeah, I have uh, dissected the membranes, I have the residual vitreous we will be cutting and then we will do the laser. Laser, okay. Then we will go to the oculoplasty and come back here. That was a really a wonder, wonderful surgery by Anuruddha. Give him a very big hand please, coming all the way from West Bengal. Fantastic surgery, he will, show, he will demonstrate the uh, endo laser as well. Endo and then we will go on to the oculoplasty now. Endo laser, endo laser, uh, We are still seeing the vitrectomy screen. Are we going to switch on to the uh, TOSA surgery?
Yeah. Okay. I think it's a great honor to uh, take care of the or uh, what do you call uh, acknowledge the faculty's contribution for this wonderful success of the surgical strikes. We have none other than Dr. Lalit Kumar who demonstrated a beautiful cataract surgery with the OptiFlex and then followed by a femtolasic as well. And yes, yes. Yeah, book for you. Thank you, sir. Congratulations on this. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations, sir. Uh, yeah, come. And of course, uh, we have uh, Dr. Murli Arika who demonstrated a beautiful private lecture with mitomycin. And uh, Murli? Fantastic surgeon. We want to be very happy to. Yes. Already I sent a book, but this is for Radha Lakshmi. Thank you, thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to be here. You would have for the summer. Bhaskar Srinivasan, we have given already. Yeah, we have for Anand Parsadi, who has been a great pillar of support for uh, Rajanai Kaya. And uh, Anand Parsadi and uh, one shawl for him. And, and also a big fan of uh, Mo the Mohan and Sujata. Thank you, thank you. Give a big hand for Anand, uh, very prolific uh, cornea refractive surgeon. A wonderful surgery by Ram Prakash. Ram Prakash, come here. Why did you call? Come, man. Hey, all of you come, man. Bhaskar, Susan, Dalit. Please come. Ravi, you are able to see? Yes, yeah, we are able to see, sir. Thanks for honoring all the surgeons. Thanks a lot. We go on to the oculoplasty now. Sindhil. Yes. I think the panelists as well as the delegates are waiting for it. Sindhil. No, zoom up. Can you, yeah, can you? Sindhil will be demonstrating this up now. Zoom. Mela zoom. Ah. You know, yeah. you know, you know, right. Focus. Yeah. Focus. Uh, sir, you used cautery or uh, you used uh, blade for the incision, sir? Okay, yeah, can you hear me now? Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, so now what we have done is we made a lid incision and uh, you, I think you are having the um, almost the surgeon's view. We made a lid crease incision and I have dissected over the tassel plate. So this is the lid muzzle flap, the skin orbicularis flap and what you can see here, this is the tarsal plate. Can you see this whitish structure here? Yes, we can see Sandil. Sandil, Pratibha wanted to know whether you have made the incision with radio frequency or with a uh, blade. I have made it with a uh, blade. <coughs> so this what whitish structure here is the tarsal plate. Yes sir, the tarsus is very Yeah, and you can already see, I can see the mullers under the, the tarsal plate. Normally you are not supposed to see the mullers. You are supposed to see the attachment of the levator aponeurosis. But I can see in this patient since it's aponeurotic ptosis and the levator is most likely to be uh, uh, detached. I can see this, the vertical fibers of the molars. You can see from some blood vessels also here. That means there's already a levator aponeurotic dehiscence. Oh, dehiscence is And there. yeah, you can see uh, th th all these. This is the molars which is yeah. attached to the tarsal plate. So this is the tarsal plate. This is the skin orbital flap and demarma. Yeah, excellent and anatomy demonstrated, Dr. Yeah, Santhi. and when you, when we have dissected a little bit on top as well, we got a skin muzzle flap there. <laughs> and you can see this is the intact septum. Yes. So what you are seeing here is the orbital uh, fat, the pre-aponeurotic pad of fat, but you can see that it is not prolapsing uh, freely because it is held back by the orbital septum, intact septum. So the layers will be the skin, orbicularis, mm -hmm. then you have the orbital septum which is holding back the orbital fat, the pre-aponeurotic pad of fat. So what I am going to do, the next step is open this intact septum and once I open the septum, I will see all the fat which will prolapse out and the structure underneath the fat is going to be the levator aponeurosis. So we are going to open up and how to identify the, upon, uh, the septum is you just uh, press the lower eyelid, you can, you can see the fat pad become prominent. Can you see it? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. So yeah. now the septum is intact, so now I am going to open it. 
you have a very good homeostasis uh, hemostasis sir uh, there is pretty very less bleeding what um, yeah, what I did give, you do yeah i give a little bit of xylokin uh, premix with adrenaline to aid the hemostasis and um, we do standard bipolar cautery so now i'm going to open the orbital septum following which i will see the orbital fat prolapse out okay. i give a small nick here and then open the septum now i think that was a very good point that he gave you so you follow the, the vertical fat. vessels yeah. to uh, identify the miller's muscle the yellowish stuff is the fat exactly so what you can see here once i this is a septum i go underneath the septum and make a and you can see now the fat is freely prolapsing out so yes. what you can see here this is the fat you can you see the fat here Yes, yes, sir. Yes, very we well. can see very, very clearly. But you can very see nicely there are a few more strands of septum here, which is not allowing it to come out freely. So once that is good, now you can see the fat is now flowing freely. So what structure lies underneath the fat will be the levator aponeurosis. So you can just go underneath, and you can see this structure is the detached edge. You can see it very clearly. Can you see? Yes, yes, yes sir. So ah. this is the detached edge of the aponeurosis. The uh, levator aponeurosis. So that is how you identify the detached edge. You go layer by layer, so you can easily identify. So this is the free flowing fat now. How it gets detached? In this patient is a long term contact lens user. Sir. Ah, okay. Contact lens users can have um, levator <coughs> aponeurotic diazins because it rubs on the uh, conjunctival surface of the lid. Okay. Other common causes is can be due to uh, age related reasons mm. or even following sometimes cataract surgery or LASIK mm. surgery when you put a yeah. speculum and open the lid very wide, mm. they already have a lax lid. Following the surgery, you will find many patients actually yeah, complain yes. of a small Absolute, droop. Absolutely. Which, uh, so, th this is the layer. So, what the structure which I am holding now is the detached So, you can Sir put the beautifully dimmer under the orbital fat, the pudding over. So, once you can do this, you can see the edge of the aponeurosis, this whitish structure here. This is the edge and this is the Wittnell's ligament which you can see on top. So the dissection sir is doing is nicely, I mean sir is very beautifully demonstrating it with the bud so that the bleeding is less and postoperative edema and uh, hematoma will also be yeah. less. Think in the whitish structure. Yeah, we can that. see that now. Welcome yeah. Preeti, Pratiba. Yeah. Welcome. I got out. Thank you. Can you see this band of Wittnell's? This whitish band? Yes, yes, yes. Very nicely seen. This band, this one, sir. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's the Wittnell's ligament. Wittnell's ligament, yes. That's the Wittnell's ligament, okay. So that is where the, the, the aponeurosis actually becomes the muzzle, levator muzzle. So this is the uh, line which uh, uh, separates both. So now what you have to do is once you, uh, you have identified the... I become very good in arthroplasty after attending all the webinars now. Yes, sir. Month. <laughs> your, uh, your, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are the regular feature of a <laughs> chloroplasty meeting. <laughs> so, and what you are going to do is now yes. reattach it to the tarsal plate. And one thing what I would do in this surgery is uh, to reconfirm whether it is levator, I will take off that uh, retract I mean, traction suture and ask the patient to look up and down. Yeah. So, we feel the tightness in the levator. Yeah, correct. That is how we can confirm that, that we are holding the right muscle. Correct. So you can notice that he is unrolling that rolled edge. Usually when there is a dehiscence, the edge will be rolled and if you just reattach the rolled edge, you will get an overcorrection. So he is unrolling it, if you can see that. Yeah, I am also separating the strands of septum which are attached to the overlying thing, so that you don't get any septal fibers uh, into your wound. Yes. So now we can, yeah, like what Preeti was saying, you can see I have unrolled it and you yeah. can beautifully see the edge of the levator. So you go to So all we need to do is reattach it, it to the tarsal plate. Pull it up and yeah. yeah. So this is the healthy uh, levator. Yes. So you can yes. see this is the healthy muzzle here. So all you need to do is put it back to the tarsal plate like that. Yeah. So that's oh. what I'm going to take a bite now. So what we do now is take vital suture. Is it so it's vital not to include the septal fibers because otherwise yeah. you will get a very severe lag of thalamus. Lag of thalamus, correct. What you, what you held now was the levator, levator muscle. Levator aponeurosis. 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 Okay. aponeurosis. So this is the fat here. So, uh, what no. lies under the, this? The muscle no, no, no. will Show be the muscle again. This is I'm the sorry, aponeurosis. Yeah. aponeurosis this, this is white, yeah. Uh, this one, this is the detached edge. This is the detached Normally, you're not supposed to, it's supposed to be attached to the tarsal plate like that. Oh, yes. You have to, <laughs> you have to dissect <laughs> it out from the tarsal uh, plate. Absolutely, yes. So, because it's detached. And I'm Mohan. Yes, sir. Are you going to do next to Tosi's case? <laughs> sir, I'm not going to do it. Okay, okay. So, we can beautifully <laughs> see the edge here, the whitish yes, thing. 
so what, now what we need to do is take a bite from the tassel plate and reattach it <laughs> so i mainly use uh, double arm vicryl and um, like i said the most important thing is for you to get the peak of the lid right so the central bite is the most important step of the surgery so i've already marked the center i can see the and the, at the point of the center i've taken a traction silk also so i know where to place my uh, tassel bite central you always use absorbable or many yeah. of <laughs> us use non absorbable i always yeah, i always use uh, vicryl absorbable okay i don't use proline so now i'm going to take the tassel bite so you just gently hold the tassel plate like that check where you want to take it and then you have to go partial thickness not full thickness take a partial thickness bite and then you have to check if it has gone on to the under surface just make sure you're not gone through and through yeah, yeah. i'm quite happy yeah. if you go through and through it'll abrade the cornea and you can have corneal problems so you just check before you pull this thing out so this is my apical suture I've taken a um, double arm vehicle. So now what you have to do is reattach it to the... Normally you put three, no? I put this, the central one is yeah, the most important. Yes. So that's the first one I'm going to take, sir. So now we put a DMR <coughs> just underneath the fat. Yeah. So the important thing is in these um, dehized uh, cases, you don't actually need to go too much uh, above onto the levator upon your rostral because the moment you just reattach it, they will lift very well. But if it's a congenital ptosis and where you're planning a LPS resection, you need to actually cut muscle off and uh, resect it. But since this is only a aponeurotic ptosis, we just need to reattach it. You don't need to resect too much. So what we're going to do is now um, take the vicryl suture and reattach the muzzle. Yeah, so these aponeurotic ptosis are very prone to overcorrection. Yeah. So yeah. on table, do you check the lid yeah, height? Yeah, I'm going to do it very much. Yeah, yeah, very uh, much. Without that, you can't close up. You have to always uh, check. So I'm just going to take a bite here. And then take the other end. More <coughs> So you are taken a first bite of first the tarsus, bite. Tarsus, and then the liver liver detach edge. Okay. And then the second bite also, I am going to take it just next to that. And then we will <laughs> tighten and see the lift. Okay. Is it ready there, ma? Ready there, we can go there and come back here. So this step is important, so yeah, I will just show important. them this How one. This? This? Uh, <laughs> so now we have taken uh, two bites. And this is the most important yes, step sir. of the surgery where we are going to check the um, contour and the height and um, um, compare it to the other eye. So you can see now the levator aponeurus is uh, going onto the tassel plate. Yes. This is the lama. So, no, no problem. So I am going to tighten it. And leave it. Uh, temporary knot. And temporary knot. Can it Yeah. Okay. And then ask the patient to open the eye. And I am going to compare it with the other eye. I think it's a little more, no? So you have to come and ideally it's better. Yeah, you can see it's already overcorrected. Can mm. you see? Yes, yes. Yeah. So like I was telling you, <coughs> all these aponeurotic cases, it's very easy to overcorrect. So you can see the there's an overcorrection. So I'll have to drop the suture a little bit down the aponeurosis. Yes. So this step is very important. Do you also adjust the height on the tarsus, the tarsus bite on plate, the tarsus? You take it at the junction of uh, upper one third and low, I mean uh, the lower one third and upper two thirds yeah. or maybe 50% down the tarsal plate. Okay. So, so you have to take the bite again. Again. Huh? Yeah, uh, I don't have to take the tarsal no, bite, yeah. mm. I just need to uh, readjust the height of, of the, the aponeurosis. aponeurosis, correct. So what was the levator function in this patient? The levator function was excellent. So it's more than 15 millimeters. More than 15. So, so you will undercorrect a little bit on table. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Or leave it just at uh, where you want it. Yeah. So you can see I've uh, deliberately taken it uh, slightly above. Mm -hmm. So now what we need to do is uh, take the suture off. Don't take both um, uh, sutures off at the same time. You keep one suture on the initial uh, bite so that you know where, how much you have to come down. Yeah. And... Um, 
Do I you can always take three bites, or you sometimes adjust according to the patient? <coughs> yeah, I just uh, see on table. On table, if the contour is very good, uh, you don't really need to take three. Two is uh, enough. So you can see the first bite. I've taken it uh, slightly up on the levator, up on your roses. So what I'm going to lose out on this too. So what I'm going to do is this time go a little bit little. low. So maybe I will just go here. Yeah, sometimes it's uh, difficult to get the contour in epineurotic when you have a very flaccid uh, tarsal plate also, especially in very old people. Yeah. In those cases, I think we need to adjust uh, the number of sutures. Sometimes you don't need all three. Correct. Exactly. Because you, you check the contour, because sometimes if you take three, yeah. um, the contour uh, uh, gets altered. You I don't I get I that. I've seen some people doing only just the center one. Yeah, uh, yes. center yeah. one also. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some people do a very small incision. Small incision process, you can do. But yeah. I find if you put only one suture, uh, post-op sometimes you get uh, contour uh, problems because mm. the lateral edge uh, droops definitely. So I uh, usually always place two at least. Two I feel is... Uh, because the lid actually is a, it's a, a lengthy structure and uh, one only sometimes uh, if you have a contour problem it's uh, difficult. Yeah, usually the medial one can be left alone. Yeah, uh, medial, you can exactly, do the yeah. lateral and the medial. Uh, yeah, middle. medial one you can leave it. So now I again uh, come a little bit low. I'm going to check again. So now again you're taking a bite. Kannu tarangama. You can see now she's got a very good outcome. Now looks good, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So you can oh. see she's got perfect, a very pleasing um, contour. The contour is very good. Yeah. yeah. Regarding the marking which sir made initially, it is not always medial one third and lateral two thirds is the highest point. Sometimes the patient can also have a medial droop in the other eye. So for better <coughs> symmetry, I think we should see the other eye and also decide the uh, uh, highest yeah, so point. Yeah. So I'm very happy with this. So contour yeah. is good. This is a good uh, uh, lid is good speaking at the right thing. point. It's symmetrical and um, uh, like sir said, actually I would also just leave it with one suture, it looks yeah, very good. Exactly. But I will place just one uh, on the lateral side just to um, make sure there's no lateral droop post off. No, no. yeah, I was wondering whether uh, we should place one or three. Not three, sir. three no, I will two. not place. I'm happy with just placing one more laterally. Two. Laterally. Because immediately yeah. I'm quite happy with the uh, lift and the contour. Yeah. Just one on the side will do. Okay. Do you ever do adjustable sutures? Uh, no, adjustable, no, I've not cases. done adjustable. Okay. Adjustable I don't do. I okay. do all this checking on table. This is the most important uh, step. Leave the yes, other sir. eye open mm -hmm. and always compare it. And um, if you have an adjustable table, you can also uh, put it onto the upright position and check. Okay. So this one I'm quite happy with the um, result and I'll... Um, um, and if yeah. you get an overcorrection uh, post-op, what do you do? <laughs> if I get an overcorrection post-op, uh, depends on how much the overcorrection is. If it's a very mild overcorrection, you can do a lid massage, downward traction, all that might work. Mm -hmm. If the overcorrection is very gross, you can just uh, go the next day, um, open up the skin suture one or two bites and cut your central um, um, uh, tarsal bite which you have taken on to the levator upon your mm -hmm. You don't need to pull the suture, you just cut it and then you continue the uh, downward traction and the lid massage. Usually they do very well. So this you do the next day itself? Yeah, if it's a very gross overcorrection, I do it the next day because very okay. easy to open the skin wound. The mm -hmm. skin doesn't, yeah. um, it's not healed. So you just cut the suture, you can open up the um, uh, skin and orbiculars very easily. Mm. And the central bite, just cut it, that's it. Yeah, okay. that's what I, I take up usually three to four days after the steroid course that I give. And yeah. uh, I don't give local anesthesia or topical. Okay. And uh, generally the patients don't get pain. You can adjust it uh, quite easily. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll come back here. We'll come back here, Priti. Hello? Hello? Able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll come back here to Theatre Ward. We are, uh, we are going for the final surgery now. Dr. Manoj Katri is doing a vitrectomy. We'll come back to Sendal. So just to finish off um, Dr. Anirudh's case, uh, Dr. Anirudh, did you put in oil or uh, um, air, did you leave air at the end of surgery? Uh, uh, no, Supriya, we didn't give any oil or gas, uh, we have put it in on, on air. We have done a good laser and then fluid air exchange. Okay. Oil okay. or gas was not required. Okay, okay. A uh, few bleeders were there, so we have taken care of the bleeders. 
So just a fluid air was uh, done. Right, right, right. Okay. And did you suture your pots or you don't usually uh, suture? No, 25 gauge generally we don't and especially if we are giving oil, sometimes we need to give the port through which we are giving the oil. But most of the cases actually they do not require any sutures. Dr. Nanud, uh, when you are putting the air inside the cavity at the end of the surgery? Right. No, when? Means in which cases you are putting the air, in which cases you are putting, leave it as in BSS? See, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you may decide which case air and which case BSS. I generally do an air exchange or maximum we can do an partial fluid air exchange. Uh, I generally don't keep it on BSS totally. Okay, we go on to the final surgery that is none other than Dr. Manoj Katri. We always keep the best to the last and Manoj Katri, in my opinion, is the fastest VR surgeon I ever seen and you know, he's really fantastic and he's going to show us a dioptic TRD vitreous hemorrhage and he's already made the ports. It's a 23 gauge? 25. 25 gauge. 25 gauge ports he has already made and uh, over to Manoj, please. Uh, thank you so very much, sir, and good afternoon once again, everyone. <laughs> this patient has a high risk proliferative diabetic retinopathy along with a traction retinal detachment and epiretinal membrane over the phobia. So, what we are demonstrating here is a Alcon constellation system uh, with a maximum possible cut rate of 10,000 and a suction of about 450, what I am using right now, on a 25, uh, 25 gauge platform. Patient is a pseudophatic patient and has a rim of phimosis of anterior capsule. So the view is little limited with a non-dilating pupil. The pupil is about 4 to 4.5 millimeter. So first what we are going to demonstrate here is a <coughs> stain in the center and taking care of the anterior to the central core of the vitreous. Is it clear there? In the, in the yeah, Manoj. Okay. Clear. Yeah. So just zoom up a little bit. Make sure that you clear the central core of the vitreous here. Now two ways to go about the uh, detaching the posterior halide. Either we can go from periphery to center or the center to periphery. Here the vitreous hemorrhage is going to act like a like a stain for us. So I'm just going to make a small central opening here, somewhere around the equator. Manoj, would you like to alter your cut rate and vacuum based on the duration of the vitreous hemorrhage so that yes, the yes sir yes sir it's, hmm. a, it's a linear control on the foot panel absolutely right so i am using the maximum possible cut rate right now slight modification what we have done here is uh, did this patient also receive pre-op uh, anti for yes, its yes two yes. days before we had given anti no? manoj is this appa swami or is this constellation no, 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 only no constellation. Constellation. today constellation oh. okay and normally how many days before you give anti wedge uh, Less than three days sir. Any time between one to three days you need to operate. And get a fitness first. So this patient, both yeah. the patients will get a got a fitness first. I am trying to hold catchal of the posterior vitreous here. Now because there is a traction retinal detachment sitting there, what we will do is a uh, detachment of the posterior halide in bits and pieces. Careful here not to take care of the posterior halide in one go. You can detach the retina which is attached here. So you can make attached retina detach sometimes. Yeah, unlike the epiretinal membrane where you uh, detach PV, you do the PVD induction from the center to periphery. Yes, sir. Here so you have to do it in bits and pieces because of a lot of attachments. So as the conventional teaching goes, we have a vitroscisis membrane here. So it acts like a stain for you. Is it visible, sir? Vitroscisis? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Try to use the tricot, no? No sir, vitreous case is there, no? so they, they call it as a second membrane. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So this itself acts like a stain. We need to be little careful here, there are focal attachments uh, everywhere. For the laser, not previous. Yeah, previous laser. So always try to take care of the fovea and the macular area first. Once you have done that, I think a part of the surgery goes already, you know, it's done. So we are, we are using cutter as a multifunctional instrument. So this is the beauty of Alcon cutter which gives you a lot of uh, advantages over any other cutter or level with different other systems. Where you can play away with vacuum and also the cut rate. 
Manoj, uh, do we use this bimanual dissection nowadays? Or I have dissected almost entirely almost to bimanual all cases. This patient, because of uh, uh, there was just a focal attachment, so we have not been using bimanual. But most of us are not entirely accepted to bimanual technique. I feel it is much more safer and gives you a lot many advantages. Dr. Anirudh, do you feel the ILM in your uh, diabetic uh, patients? Uh, yeah, sometimes we uh, actually I do ILM peeling, hmm. uh, and and sometimes we actually there is recalcitrant DME along with the uh, TRD. So in those cases, obviously that is the last resort we do because when it is not. Uh, responding to the convention on anti as well. And uh, what do you leave at the end of surgery? Tricot or uh, you Tricot, uh, actually on all diabetic cases I use tricot and try to leave a little bit of remnant if possible. Okay, so not ozodex at the end of surgery? Uh, not really ozodex but uh, many a times where it's a very florid case end of the surgery sometimes anti if we need uh, i actually give so, at the end of the surgery so manoj has nicely done the truncation of the cone what we call yes, first sir, truncation of the cone correct yeah first what we do is it dissect the connection between the anterior and posterior hyoid so we have so only the superior or inferior part is left otherwise 360 degrees he has truncated the cone that's the first step in diabetic vitrectomy what we call Absolutely agree with you sir. So never forget the principles. The basic principles remain the same. Go step by step. And what I told again here, because of the vitreous cases, there will be atta multiple attachments. So you need to go layer by layer. Now I am doing a, something called as a periphery to center approach. Yeah. Initially we did center to periphery. So this is a hybrid technique where we use best of both the world. So of both the techniques. So first step is truncation. Now he is doing segmentation where he creates small, small islands of attachments so that yes. it can be dealt with easily. Yes. Okay. We'll come to the nasal part later on. I'm just going to stain and take off the epiretinal membrane which is sitting there. Okay, blue. So we are using okay blue uh, undiluted in the saline cavity itself. Some people prefer to use under air, but we do it under saline itself. The thing here is you have to be still patient and keep the occupable for about 10-15 seconds there to you know to get a good stain. Yeah. Okay, blue is brilliant blue, right? Yes, Manoj. Sir, blue, brilliant blue by Aurora. Hmm. So for brilliant blue, you don't need to do an air exchange. You can do it directly with the saline. In case you are using a trifan blue, yes, you need to do an air exchange. Yes, sir. Blue. Blue. I just changed the lens to the macular lens. We are using a reset system. Manoj, you are peeling the ILM or what are you peeling now? Huh. ERM, yeah. ERM, okay. So, I tend to get an ERM with an ILM itself. Kasi sir, have you ever used Brilliant Blue to stain the vitreous? No. So, I never use even tricot for training the staining the vitreous. Because only when you can't see the vitreous, you need to stain. When you can see and know what you are doing, I don't think so, you need to use a stain, but nothing wrong in it. I am just going to take off a little bit of excessive stain. And the beauty of PVD induction is if you have induced the PVD in one quadrant, the rest of the quadrants comes out on its itself. Yes, sir. What about younger people, Kasi? Yes sir, tricot staining is always better to begin with, so that yeah, you yeah. see the vitreous. Absolutely, that's what. So, in younger people, it's um, a little more uh, difficult to do a PVD, no? When the PVD induction, it differs from patient to patient. The condition to con in an ERM, you do N mass PVD induction. Okay. Whereas in a diabetic, you have to go uh, quadrant wise, because a okay. lot of attachments will be there. You can create inadvertent tears and bleedings. Right. <coughs> is the focus clear sir there? Yeah, yeah, Manoj. Yes, sir. Manoj, you don't remove the blue with the flute at the end? I have removed, but I keep little bit of blue so that you need good amount of stain there, you know, visualization. So, pinch and peel technique, you normally you have a, what you call, a, the finished look itself. 
I have removed very little of glue from the vitreous cavity. Manu, this is an ERM or a taut posterior highlight? Combination of both. Oh. This is this is a highlight. Actually, in patients who've had either focal laser, grid laser, the ILM tends to get uh, very sticky this in those areas. This is a problem with vitreous cases, patients. I think this is a posterior highlight, taut highlight. This is a posterior highlight, absolutely correct. I think again you have to stain Manoj. No, so that's what Rasul Bhai I do. Uh, what I do is I do little bit first, yeah, kind of a this thing removal. I'm going to stay at least stain at least three times. First you take out little bit, get an edge, get a plane, and then again go little bit of stain more. Macular removal. Yes, sir. That's what we are feeling. Uh, Otherwise, you would have left it like this. Mm -hmm. So, just take out a little bit of stain. Again, this is a vitreous case here. Now you can see this is the edge of the eye. Uh -huh. Posted the highlight again here. And just remove the rest of the highlight there. I think we are sitting with the king of the peelers, Atul Dhawan. <laughs> he would not have left any ILM to be peeled in Chennai. Manoj bhai, this is not good. <laughs> Pulling <laughs> my leg. You are a great puller of macular holes, Atul. <laughs> So this is a pinch and peel here. Be a little careful that you should not derub the phobia. The pre-op OCT is there, Atul? Yes, uh, sir. Uh, I, I can show it, sir. We have a pre-op OCT. Chronic macular hole. Mm. Uh, sorry, chronic macular edema. Manoj bhai, in this case, phobia is sparing ILM peel. What do you think about it? Absolutely agree with you. Oh, we are spending macular island pain should be a better option. The problem with this, all these patients who had a vitreous case, you know, the island comes only in bits and pieces. So, we are not mm. left with much of choices. Yeah. So that is known in a diabetic because previous lasers and all would yes, cause a lot of adhesions. So, the piece... Now you can see here, this is a vitreous again here. Yeah. Attached there. And if the moment you are peeling, the fovea is displacing, uh, like the macula is displacing. There is no point in putting it. So just frame it and cut it. Cut clean. it off. Huh? So that's what we call piecemeal ILM cleaning in uh, diabetic macular edema. Absolutely. It shift to that side. The what? advantage of ILM peeling in macular edema is it improves the better oxygenation of the retinal tissues. Yes, sir. <coughs> this kind of tiny bleeders, they will, you don't need to cauterize that. Anything else you can do? Any other comments, Kasi sir? No. You want to give? Yeah, we go on to the uh, uh, the final procedure, which is the Pagenax in Theatre 1. Anything you want to uh, comment here, Kasi, Atul, or Supriya? The oh, main no, problem I, the main, Manoj bhai, the main problem I feel after this surgery, at the end of the surgery, when I put the tricot at the end of the surgery, and still I feel the crystals are not moving properly, and still one layer is there. So, yeah. What do you think? You will try to remove that last layer or you will just leave it like this? Remove it as much as possible. In a diabetic vitrectomy, what I still remember Dr. Tarun Sharma's words, it doesn't mean that you need to peel all the membranes. All the yeah. Only thing is you need to dissect, first foremost thing is dissect the truncation of the cone. The anterior and posterior has to be dissected and you can leave island, islands of the fibrovascular prolif well cauterized. And nasal prolifs can be ignored. What you need to is relieve the traction on the disc and the macula. That's more than suffice for a more diabetic vitrectomy. Totally agree with you. More than suffice. Very good, very good. I think we've got some clear messages here. And then we'll go on to the final procedure, injection Pagenax by Dr. Anirudha Mehti in Theatre 1. Thank you, Manoj. Give a big hand for Dr. Manoj for the wonderful surgery. Thank you.
lovely surgery, lovely, beautifully uh, demonstrated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so the final thing, ma? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ah, Chandil. Very nice. Very nice, very nice. Just ask him to look down completely and compare both the eyes. Both the eyes compare. So I am very happy with the lid contour. The contour is good, the height is good. Can you Mm. There will be a mild uh, degree of uh, like. lag of thermos because we have uh, tightened the um, uh, LPS, okay. but that uh, falls by one tiger. day. So, <laughs> it's important when you close, you need to take a lid crease forming bite. That is, you take a um, skin muzzle and then take a small bite of the levator aponeurosis and then back to the skin so that you get that pleasing dip. Like I said, when the patient looks straight, you can't even see the incision, it is hidden into the lid crease. So that's very important. Kira paranga. You can see the the incision has gone into the lid crease. Mela paranga. And so that's important because um, cosmetically, you can, cosmetically and you can see the peak of the lid also is just medial to the pupil. It's symmetrical. Both uh, that's why you don't have a peaking of the eyelid. You don't have a overcorrection. So these are basically the points which you need to look uh, before when you uh, finalize and close up. Sendil, have you removed any skin? A skin I have not taken, sir. She is a reasonably young lady. She is 53 okay. years old. Okay. And uh, she has no excess skin, there's not much of dermatochelesis. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I've not taken skin. If it's an yeah. elderly patient, 78 years old, lot of oh. excess skin, you okay. can combine it with a mild blepharoplasty. Pre yeah. we can mark a small blepharoplasty. Okay. If you want, you can do it in the other eye also so that she gets a symmetrical outcome. Okay, okay. Thank okay. you very much. That was a wonderful you. surgery. Mm. Give a big mm. hand mm. for Sindhil. What a lovely surgeon he is, a lovely teacher. And it's a great boon. He's a great boon for Rajanaika. Thank you, Sindhil. Thank you, sir. Over Thank to you. Dr. Aniruddha Methi. For injection, Prajanax, Rolizizi Balm has become the, uh, what do you call that, it's a new kit on the block. Aniruddha, indication. In the cases and it is, we are getting a wonderful results in most of them. In fact, the horizon of indication is also increasing. Right from uh, other than PCV and CNVM, we are giving in a DME as well. So this is the case of CNVM. We will, we are going to give Brolizumab. Uh, okay. And the compact. Ah. Ah, right. Yeah. yeah. You give it in the lower nasal, is it? Yeah. Anirudh, how has your experience with uh, Peginax been? It's actually very good. So you have a publication also yeah, with that, no? Yeah, we are the first to First in India to publish, I think. Yeah, we saw that. It's a very good paper. Uh, and uh, yes. it, uh, it, uh, what is the advantage of Peginax when compared to the uh, ILEA? I feel this… Is it deeper penetration? Uh, smaller molecule, deeper penetration. And the most important is, it has a very good drying ability and, and, and a very faster one. Like. We have seen patients responding in 2-3 days, uh, the PCV case responding pretty well. Yeah. Uh, so totally come, Manoj, up. Manoj. Oh, oh. So in treatment knife cases, do you do 3 injections as a loading dose? Yeah, initially when we started, we were actually giving monthly dose for 3, uh, uh, based on the Hawk and Harrier trial. But now that we know that this medicine stays for a longer time, we are still giving lo uh, loading dose, but the interval between the uh, injections we have increased from 4 weeks to 8 weeks, 6 to 8 weeks. So you are definitely doing 3, that means? Yeah, <laughs> in, the, in the treatment knife cases. But in refractory cases, yes, uh, we give it for uh, once in 3 months. Uh, at least we monitor monthly, but mm -hmm. generally we give as a PRN message. So okay. I do it PRN from the day one. Day one, yes. That is there is a difference of opinion definitely many many surgeons actually give uh, prn from the very beginning but one thing is the yeah. 
the drying effect, all the fluids in the retina, subretinal, intraretinal, and, and sub RPE. RPE as well. All the fluids dries up with this molecule. Do you see the Okay, we come to the close of the surgical strike, seventh edition. <laughs> A big round of applause to all the surgeons and all the panelists and all the delegates and all the staff of Rajanaikar. Sir, what? Sir, or chinna objection, sir. All the retina people, ning ellarku retina atlas, you are giving a retina atlas to and creating lot of competitors to us. So all the retina people are objecting you giving a retina atlas to everyone, sir. <laughs> May I have the privilege to call upon Dr. Sujata Mohan to come forward and uh, honor the panelists, uh, uh, both uh, retina panelists as well as oculoplasty over here. Professor Dr. Radha Krishnan, please. Yeah, Ravi. So just a minute, sir. We are just haunting the panelists here. Give us two minutes, or rather one minute. Okay. Thank you. We are only there. Thank you. Dr. Atul Dhawan, please. Come, ma. Anirudh, come, ma. Yeah, remove that, remove that first. Sets, come. Ravi, you finished that? Just uh, 60 seconds from now, sir. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm able to hear you 60 seconds. 60 seconds, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. 10 seconds over. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Supriya Dabir Gautam. 40 over. <laughs> So, Dr. Kasi wants to tell you that Dr. SM Madam is honoring, so you need to wait. Dr. Pratiba. Okay. Right. Dr. Preeti Udai. We are all okay there? <laughs> so, 50 seconds over, 10 more seconds. No, no, no. 5 more seconds. And Dr. Kasinadan. Yes, sir. Nickel, nickel. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Over to you, sir. And yeah. after that, we adjourn for lunch. No, no. And yeah, we are no. waiting for all of you to come here. Okay. The final uh, faculty, uh, uh, what do you call, we are giving the mementos to the final faculty here. And we have Aniruddha Mehti, who come all the way from West Bengal. Fantastic vitrectomy demonstrated. Great guy. And thank you very much, Aniruddha. And uh, Dr. Sindhil, lovely demonstration, really copybook style it was. Sindhil is always a great teacher. Do the honors for Sindhil. Yeah. Go through the atlas and by the next year I want to do a live retinal surgery. Yeah, I will. Satanathan, Satanathan, my classmate. The chief anesthesiologist of uh, Rajanaikar along with Jinenda is celebrating his birthday today. Give a big hand for Dr. Satanathan. Happy birthday, Dr. Satanathan from the Accord. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And of course, Dr. Manoj Katri, who is part of our family everywhere. Anytime, and uh, he's our DNB student, and very proud of Manoj. What a great surgery he did today. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We request all the surgeons as well as Team Rajanaika to. 
come with Dr. Mohan Rajan to the accord here and join us for lunch. Thanks a lot. A uh, big thanks to every delegate who participated here, every surgeon and uh, each and every one of you have made the surgical strike a grand success, including the uh, pharmaceutical and the surgical companies who have supported us for this meet, the audiovisual team and Hotel Accord totally. Thanks a lot. Kindly join us for lunch. Lunch is there in the Sapphire Hall, which uh, once you go outside, is on the right side of you. Thank you. Thanks you once again. Big round of applause to uh, Murli and team. Big round of applause to Elasami Murli and team. I think we should have a hear a bigger noise for him. B bigger applause. Thank you, sir. Definitely. Three chairs to Elasami Murli and team. Hip-hip. Hip 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 Three chairs to Rajanaika team. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hip hip.